Please do support me. Your little donation will be very helpful. Villain hides his true colors. Chapter 16. Rasta's huge body rose from the ground. Crack. Crack. Broken branches fell off his body. Even on second look, he was still as huge as ever. Maybe around 50 m? Compared to the radio towers found throughout the city, Rastus appears to be much bigger. Cool, I'm going to kill you, human. He was surprisingly fine after what I thought was a considerable hit just now. What kind of ability did he use? His current strength was quite unbelievable even if it was his trump card. A purple haze was rising like smoke around his body. While looking at it, I recalled the mysterious dark energy I felt from the demons in the past. Is it related to them? I don't think so. Looking back on the previous round, there was still about 20 years left before the demon army will show up. There was no reason for the sudden change of such a large-scale update. Well, who cares? More than that right now, it was more important to appreciate his strength and enjoy this moment to the fullest. Grayer. The ground shook as Rastus charged at me. A clumsy posture like a bookworm who is fighting for the first time. But given his size, it wasn't something I could take lightly. The nearby mansion shook with each step he took. I faced such a guy head-on. And he, who is like a living disaster, was stopped by me in an instant. Boom. One of his huge legs was blocked by my body. A long line on the ground was dug out as every muscle in my body contracted. Cool. Good. It was very refreshing to be able to use my strength after a long time. H how the hell. I could hear Rasta's shocked voice. But this was far from what I was aiming for. The gravity that acts on the body is always anchored on the human body's center of gravity. And the law of kinematics is equal to all, even for this huge bastard. Rasta's center of gravity was located high above me. Which means. It's just as easy to break his balance. Asterisk wrestling lower tackle. Frankly speaking, our size difference was like that of a hamster and a human. But that hamster was now lifting the foot of the human. Creak. His huge body slowly tilted backwards. Then while floundering his arms in the air, he fell onto his mansion. Boom. Another cloud of dust rose. One side of the mansion was completely destroyed beyond recognition. I smiled while looking at such a sight. Passable. Supreme martial arts, which I used to enjoy in the past, was a skill that dealt with all kinds of modern martial arts. It incorporated the whole science of modern martial arts. With the exception of skills that use mana, there were no better martial arts than supreme martial arts. In other words, as long as my physical strength can support it, there is no skill more powerful than this. Qwake. How dare you, human? Rastus let out a horrible shriek. Countless tree trunks began to erupt from his body. His appearance looked similar to when hundreds of cluster bombs are fired. Bullet hell games are fun too. Asterisk acrobatic. I flipped between the gaps of the spear-like branches that were inserted into the ground. His attacks couldn't even leave a scratch on me. You little rat. Climbing along the slope of his body, at the end, I was met with a face that was the size of a house. His eyes shook non-stop when it made contact with mine. I reached out toward his huge eyeballs. W what are you trying to do? Punching bags don't need eyes. Asterisk Kyokushin Karate Horn Reach. Pack. Both eyes were cleanly pulled out along with their optic nerves. Although he looks like a tree through and through, strangely enough, his eyes were like those of humans. Queek. Rastus grabbed his empty eye sockets as he screamed in pain. Because of his floundering, other parts of the mansion that were intact began to turn into ruins. In the meantime, I opened my status window to check the remaining time. 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Nearly half of it has already been spent in this short time. There's not much time left until I have to give it back, so I'll have to make the most of it. I charged at Rastus. Kick, poke, twist, throw, press, break. All sorts of modern martial arts poured out in the brief moment. I it hurts. Stop. P please stop. Rastus screamed like a child. He cried and begged me to spare him. But I didn't stop. It was a rare moment for me to enjoy myself after a long time, so why should I? I stripped the bark that covered his body like armor little by little. Then, underneath it, thick flesh that pulsated like human blood vessels came into my view. It looked similar to what I had seen in the garden. The gardener called it a failure, right? Rastus seemed to have turned into one of his failed creations. It's a shame, but I think it's time to wrap it up. As soon as I thought so. Suddenly, under Rastus' pores, something thin and long stuck out like tiny threads. At first, I even thought it was his hair, but on closer look, it looked similar to the roots of a sapling. Then, those roots dug into the ground without any time for me to grasp the situation and began to suck in the nutrients around them. As if it had become a desert, the fertile land and trees in the mountain began to quickly dry up. On the other hand, Rastus' body began to grow exponentially. 50m, 60m, 70m. When it finally reached about 200m in size, Rastus slowly raised his gigantic body. Boom. He simply raised his body, 
but the entire mountain shook loudly as if there was a landslide. Just a human, how dare you oppose Mother Nature? A flat echo like a boat horn rang in my ears. However, when I raised my head, I couldn't even see the face of the bastard who was talking. All I could see was a foot that was as high as the surrounding trees. In just a few seconds, Rastus had become a giant from myths. The very same giant spoke to me in a relaxed voice. Thanks to you, I was able to become one with nature. So I'll allow you a comfortable death as my last mercy. His huge palm began to slowly descend as it covered the sky. Was this how Wukong felt when he was trapped in the palm of Buddha? Anywhere I looked, all I could see was Rasta's hand. The whole world seemed to have shifted to night. Even though it wasn't very fast, clouds of dust swirled from all sides due to the overwhelming air pressure from his palm. A violent sound of a gust dug into my ears. And then, facing the palm, I smiled. It's the finale so this much is expected. My stance widened by the span of my shoulders and the tip of my toes bent 45 degrees. After taking a deep breath, I lowered my body with a short exhale. Asterisk Wushu Fajin. Boom! A heavy wave spread out and shook the whole mountain. Then the land, which had been barely holding out, split like a spider web. From the tip of my feet, the kinetic energy contracted and amplified every muscle in my body. And what lies at the end of the force was a single point. Finally, the giant's palm made contact with mine. At that moment. Boom! A huge shock wave strong enough to burst a person eardrums exploded. The dirt on the ground spread out like a ripple and the surrounding trees swayed as their pollen scattered. Soon. Crack. The sound of a tree splitting was heard and the giant's body began to crack like dry firewood. Gra! Rastus screamed in pain. However, the crack that had started didn't stop and began to spread faster and faster. His huge body had lacked the durability to withstand it. Eventually, he crashed to the ground along with numerous debris. Just in time, a message window popped up in front of my eyes. The effect has expired. All skills and stats borrowed will be returned. Has been sealed for the time being. Body. 2.15. Dexterity, 1.35. Mana, 1.08. Spirit, 1.12. Asterisk 2 fragments of growth. As soon as I saw the message, I felt a deep sense of quagmire. Like when I first started the second round, my whole body felt heavy just from standing. How did I ever survive with such a normal body? Hugh, I felt terrible after my senses returned to normal. I was already missing the feeling from a moment ago. Perhaps that's why I felt disappointed even though I had fun. It was like having fun with a game only for it to be turned off after one round. But there will come another chance. I'll just have to be satisfied with this for today. I smacked my lips and headed in the direction where Rastus fell. The bastard, who had returned to his original size, was wriggling on a pile of debris, piled high like a hill. Cook, cook, he was barely alive. He'll soon die even if I just left him alone. I can't believe I dealt with the elf king like this. If it was the first round, I would have still been rolling around the streets of Pyongyang with only a pistol. It was naturally possible because he hasn't gained the power of the world tree at this point, but it could still be said to be a major development compared to the past. But, what should I do with this guy now? I checked my status window once again. Challenge, Flower of Shadow, Chain Quest, Dot. Condition, Save Elizabeth. Period, 3 months. Reward, 1x random box, medium. The question that constantly bothered me while doing this challenge. How the hell do I clear the condition of saving Elizabeth? Saving means getting someone out of danger. Wasn't it enough to kill Rastus, the source of her problem? In most RPG games I've played, the word save worked in the same sense as defeating the villain. But, is that not enough this time? Just like a while ago. Not only did she not thank me, but she even stopped me. So the problem can only be solved if Rastus dies, but Rastus can't die? It was contradictory. I felt a headache because I never thought I would have to think very hard about this challenge. Should I just kill everyone and loot the cash? The moment I felt annoyed, Elizabeth, who sat like she was out of her mind, caught my eyes. I looked at her briefly and soon realized the answer to this problem. I see. This wasn't my problem in the first place. As I dragged the dying Rastus, I began to approach Elizabeth. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Elizabeth stared at the ground with a blank look. Scenes she saw a moment ago were constantly replaying in her head. Her uncle who had suddenly turned into a huge monster, and the little boy who had played with him like a toy. It was hard to believe even when she saw it with her own eyes. As she raised her head, she could see the collapsed mansion and what was left of the surroundings. At such an unrealistic scenery, she could only blink her eyes. Maybe, I'm still dreaming? However, the cold air from the ground that touched her but told her that all of this was definitely reality. She shook her head. It doesn't matter if it's a dream or not. For her, dreams are realities that'll happen. At that moment, she could see the boy walking toward her. And behind the boy was her uncle being dragged like a piece of trash. Her uncle's appearance was gruesome. 
Sharp branches were embedded all over his body, and his broken legs were fluttering like a carpet as it was dragged across the ground. The boy threw her uncle over. You uncle? Ku. Judging by his feeble breathing, it seems that he was on his last breath. H. How did this? Even though he was someone who had just tried to kill her, she began to worry about his condition when she saw his terrible figure. She wanted to approach him, so she unknowingly lifted herself up. At that moment, the boy spoke. Nuna, what should we do? H. Ha? Huh? W. What do you mean? She answered while avoiding the boy's gaze. And her voice cracked because she was tense. We still can't kill him? The boy's words dug into her chest like a dagger. In fact, she knew well that everything would only end with her uncle's death, and that he was already too far gone to turn back. Nevertheless, however, her heart ached when the boy tried to kill her uncle. So she stopped the boy without realizing it. As a result, she almost died, and the boy, on the other hand, threw himself to protect her. Therefore, it was natural for her to hate her uncle. I'm really the worst. If she had been in the boy's shoes, maybe she would have already been fed up. She couldn't lift her head because she felt remorseful. Well, the decision is up to you, Nuna. I won't force you at all. MMM. And even in this situation, she hated herself for not being able to answer. As she remained silent for a while, the boy opened his mouth again. Nuna. Elizabeth slowly looked up at the voice calling her. The boy was still smiling as brightly as when she first met him. Then, he threw something in front of her. It was a glossy, pitch-black pistol. Are you giving this to me? As she looked at it with curiosity, the boy smiled brightly and spoke. Life is meant to be enjoyed. And whether to enjoy it or not, Nuna needs to decide. The boy said and went somewhere without looking back. The words left by the boy kept replaying in her head. I, have to decide? Maybe the boy's words were right. She already knew. Her uncle will continue to go down the wrong path in the future. The first time uncle brought in a child to be used as an experiment, if I had stopped him then. If she had been a little more courageous back then. Maybe everyone would be living happily and well now. Was this the only outcome? Even though she could see the future through her dreams, she thought she didn't have the power to change it anyway. The more she struggled the more pain it caused instead. So at some point, she gave up on making her own decisions. Just like how a shadow cannot resist being drawn to the sun, she had accepted the fact that fate was absolute. Even when children died because of the experiments, even when her body was modified with the knowledge that her uncle had obtained. She had turned a blind eye to it all, hoping that someone would change her fate. Maybe that boy saw through me. The mysterious child who had suddenly appeared in her room. He burned and destroyed everything, just like the beast from her dream. It was enough to be called cruel. Perhaps the boy who had appeared before her isn't an angel but the devil. But, he did her a favor. He gave his own life. As a result, even her fate, which likely never would have changed, has changed. The powders that her uncle was going to make her spread over the city have now disappeared without a trace. She was no longer a tool to be used by her uncle. Why did I? The boy was able to do it, so why did she give up without even trying? She felt so grateful and pathetic that she couldn't stop crying. For a long time, she cried. Then, when tears no longer flowed down, she grabbed the pistol with a determined look. This, was a problem that I should have solved from the beginning. The boy had shown her that fact. If the boy had killed her uncle instead, she might have had to live in the shadows for the rest of her life. In fact, even now she wasn't confident. But, if I can't change the sun, then I'll at least decide what kind of shadow I'll be. Elizabeth stood up. And then she slowly approached her uncle. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Hmm, what will the result be? I thought while looking at the burnt garden that had already turned black. To be honest, I still don't know what to do to save someone. Well, if it wasn't for this challenge, it wasn't a problem that I had to think about, and in the first place, I wasn't interested in such a thing. But as a veteran gamer, I can say one thing for certain. You shouldn't play games in other people's stead. It's like getting stuck on a cramped bus ride. In the end, everyone is bound to get off. So whether you're good at games or not, it's only meaningful when you play it yourself. In that sense, it may have been impossible for me to save her from the beginning. This challenge was in fact for Elizabeth, not me. I'll have to filter out this kind of task from now on. It'll only be me who will suffer a loss if something goes wrong, and I might not even get a reward at the end. As soon as I thought that, a faint shot came from afar. Bang! I guess she finally made her choice. And as a result. Completed challenge flower of shadow. Gained 1x random box, medium, dot. Jackpot. My gamble paid off. I don't know what kind of problem she had, or why she made such a decision, but. In any case, I got the reward, so it didn't matter. I've never read the dialogues in games and have always spam clicked past it when I played MMORPGs. Ding. At that moment, a welcome notification came. Level has risen. Level has risen. You've reached level 19. Gained a fragment of growth. 
Level 15 skill selection will not be given due to the special selection previously. Gained achievement title, Giant Hunter. Giant Hunter. Tendency, Feet. Description, I can't believe you won against a giant by yourself. I can't help but admire it. Ooh. I defeated Rastus and rose five levels at once. As expected, he's a villain who will become an S-class in the future, so the experience he gave didn't disappoint. But one more level and I would have been level 20. That part felt a little disappointing. The messages didn't end there. You've eliminated an existence that meets the standard of evil. You've saved those who were in despair. Warrior's journey grade has increased. A new effect has been added. It's already my second time seeing this message today. The skill had just leveled up, so it was unbelievable that it would level up so soon. Was the opponent that strong? Or is it supposed to be an easy skill to level up? I didn't know the answer and could only open my status window to check the new effect. Classification, General. Grade, D, Grade E-D. -D. Description, A warrior grows through hardships. Grade effect. Grade F, Favorability increases easily. Grade E, Awaken at the moment of crisis. Grade D, You become stronger when you are with your colleagues. Asterisk new asterisk. Mark, Destiny, and then, Friendship. It looks like the typical warrior cliches found in RPGs are appearing one after another. Anyway, I couldn't see whether it was a good or bad skill even after I read the description. First of all, the effect seems to be intended for combat, but the skill description was a little more abstract than the last one. Well, the grade is higher than the last one, so the effect should be better. As soon as I was organizing my thoughts, I noticed Elizabeth walking towards me. Come to think of it. How should I deal with this woman now? Although her fate has changed due to this incident, there is no guarantee that she'll not grow into a villain. If I fight against the demon army, something very annoying may happen if the witch is on their side. Hmm, should I just kill her and reduce the number of variables? Thinking back, it was a shame that we never got to fight properly in the past before she suddenly disappeared. I don't know how much fun it'll be to kill her this time. Considering the times the witch bothered me in the first round, and then the trouble I went through with today's challenge, I think it would be better to kill her. While having such thoughts, Elizabeth, who had appeared in front of me at some point, bowed to me. In many ways, thank you. In the meantime, I thought about how I should kill her. I wanted to do something suitable when I thought of all the trouble I had gone through. But nothing good came to mind. You saved my life, and you also gave me a reason to live. If you hadn't enlightened me, I might still have given up everything. HM, rather than a gun, I think it would be better to use a knife. I reached behind my back and pulled out a military knife from my inventory. I don't know who was managing this knife before, but the blade was very well taken care of. You are my precious savior who taught me the meaning of life. I approached Elizabeth step by step. She was still looking at me, but fortunately, she didn't notice anything strange. Our distance was getting closer and closer. About 1M apart. Enough to even see the small facial movements. She looked me in the eyes and spoke. So, the life that you saved, you can take it if you want. Elizabeth said with a big smile. And then, I stared at her face for a while. For some reason, my excitement suddenly cooled. I didn't feel like it would be much fun to kill this woman anymore. I secretly put my knife back into my inventory and reached out my hand. Don't say something weird, just return my gun. H huh? Elizabeth gave a puzzled look. Then I snatched the gun from her and turned around. Looking up at the sky, the sun was slowly setting. There won't be any pork cutlets left if I don't head back quickly. W wait. I heard a voice from behind me, but I just ignored it. Nevertheless, she persistently said what she wanted to say. Why you said it a while ago, didn't you? It's up to me whether I want to enjoy my life or not, as so I've decided. I'm going to pay you back for your grace. F for a child as great as you, there still must be something else you need. Maybe you don't need anything from me, B but I'll try every day to be a person who can be of help to you. I turned around. I wondered what nonsense she was talking about, but her expression showed that she was very serious. I've always known that the witch wasn't normal, but it seems there's been a problem since she was young. It was such a ridiculous proposal that I laughed in vain. What kind of thinking process does one have to have to say something like that? Nuna, do you even know me? No, I don't. Then, what do you think I'm going to do? Whatever it is. I don't care. What if I become a villain worse than your uncle? I'm sure that won't happen, but, if it does, I'll help you from the side. My decision to be of help to you is my own choice. So, just let me be your shadow. I looked her in the eyes. It's not the expression that existed a while ago. Naturally, there was still a childish side to her, but nonetheless, maybe because she has killed a person since then, but she feels more useful now. Hmm, never mind. I can't risk not knowing when she'll betray me. At that moment, in front of my eyes a new message came to mind. The effect has activated. Elizabeth's favorability has risen. The level of favorability has reached a certain level. 
you've met the requirement to recruit Elizabeth as a companion, companions cannot betray you once they've joined your party, I was wondering what was wrong with her, was it the effect of? Then everything would make sense. Recruiting teammates. I thought while slowly observing her again. Either way, it was too much to deal with the demons alone. So I thought I would try to collect heroes who will become promising stars in the future whenever I have the chance. And to be honest, in terms of talent, there is none like the witch. Also, there was that. Companions cannot betray you once they've joined your party. Her biggest flaw will have disappeared if this is the case. And there would be nothing more reliable than if the insidious witch, whose thoughts are impossible to read, becomes an absolute ally. D did I say something weird? That, W what I meant by shadow, it's a figurative expression I just thought of. Elizabeth's face turned red as she rambled to herself. When I saw that, I had a thought. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. This will be a stepping stone towards the final content. And so, today I got a witch who will grow into an SS class in the future as a companion. Chapter 17. A pink interior filled with cute dolls. In the middle of the room and in front of a table sat a girl wearing a large cone hat. Her name was Lady Fortune. And unlike her youthful appearance which resembles a middle school student, she was actually an active A-class hero, who went by the hero named Kid Witch. Erm? Lady Fortune spat out a small grumble as her smooth forehead wrinkled. Her expression was like that of an adolescent girl who was worried about her career path. Shortly after, jumping up from her seat, she began to pace around the room as she muttered to herself. Ominous, ominous. She was currently suffering from an unknown ominous feeling. In her 150 years of life, the amount of times she has felt an ominous feeling can be counted on one hand. Having predicted countless misfortunes throughout her life, none had ever felt as bad as today. Like I thought, should I check this time? She was extremely reluctant to read her own fortune, but she couldn't hold back. Eventually, she took out a tarot deck and placed it on the table. Mysterious Wayfarer Traveling the Nebula. Show me the secret of the stars. The cards on the table floated in the air and began to shuffle at a high speed. Soon, one face-down card stuck out. She looked at the card for a while before grabbing it with a trembling hand. P please. Swish. The card flipped over. Then she saw the picture on the card. A skeleton knight riding a white horse. Under the ominous picture, an even more ominous word was written. Death. She sucked in cold air after seeing the card. T this, what's this? She was certain that she was predicting her fate, so why did this card come out? Did she make a mistake because it's been a while? T that, maybe it's because my condition isn't good today. She shook her head and shuffled the cards again. But the results were. Death. 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 An endless banquet of death. As if every constellation in the universe wanted her death, only the death card appeared. Impossible. This can't happen, she thought. She had never thought that death would come for her out of the blue like this. W what the hell, when and how am I going to die? Two cards were pulled out from the deck. What appeared before her eyes was. The devil. It was another ominous card. Her expression gradually turned solemn. Fortunately or unfortunately, she felt relieved that the other card hadn't turned over. It meant her time of death wasn't absolute. The fate wasn't fixed. With a desperate feeling, she looked at the deck of cards again. I is there any way I can avoid this fate? The dowsing she was wearing around her neck shone brightly and pointed in a direction outside the window. At the same time, a card slowly stuck out from the deck. The Fool. Among the numerous major arcana cards, the zero card represented the beginning and end. It also had the meaning of play and fun. For a while, she silently alternated between looking at the card and out the window. I don't know what this card is supposed to mean. But she was certain of one thing, in order to change her fate, she had to go to the place where the dowsing was pointing. Probably, it seems I have to go out after a long time. She sat back down the table and began searching for maps using the two fingers method. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. I left Elizabeth back there and returned to the nursery by myself. It would have been difficult to move with her since I was waiting for the sponsorship event right now. She looked very disappointed at my decision, but when I gave her some assignments, she replied with an excited look. What a simple woman. Luckily when I came back to the nursery there were still pork cutlets left. Normally, the children would compete to eat first, but perhaps because of what Bay Dalsu had said, they were all working hard and role-playing as good children. Thanks to that, I was able to enjoy the pork cutlets leisurely before heading up to my room. Since I finished everything I had to do, I should check my progress now. I opened my status window and checked my stats. Body, 2.15. Dexterity, 1.35. Mana, 1.08. Spirit, 1.12. Asterisk 7 Fragments of Growth. This, it was good. If I had killed Elizabeth this time, I would have hit a clean level 20. Well, if I consider the distant future, I'm sure she'll be much more valuable. 
I evenly distributed my stats with the fragments of growth. Body, 2.15. Dexterity, 1.35-2.01, plus 0.75. Mana, 1.08-1.67, plus 0.59. Spirit, 1.12-2.08, plus 0.96. Asterisk zero fragment of growth. Ooh, I had gained more points than I expected. In particular, only two fragments were added to dexterity but it exceeded two points. At this rate, all my stats might reach two points after I hit level 20. It's been about two months since the second round began. Considering that it's still a low-level hunting ground, my growth has been really rapid. Around this time in the past, I would have still been on the streets without being able to eat properly, but now I can't believe I'm already nearing level 20. How strong am I now? It was a long time ago that I had experienced this low-level hunting ground, so I have no idea what to base it off of. I spread out the skills I've gained so far and objectively measured my strength. First, the two skills that I'm using as my main power. Classification, Ability. Grade, D. Description, Changes the body's state of matter. Asterisk Elementary, Liquid. Classification, Magic. Grade, E. Description, Absorbs the energy of the object in contact. Asterisk Elementary, Absorbs energy to restore stamina. Asterisk The larger the area of contact with the object, the more energy is absorbed. In the case of these two skills, their synergy was much better than I had thought, and when I use them together, as long as the target is vulnerable to magic, then regardless of their grade, I'll have the absolute advantage. Next. Classification, Special. Grade, A. Description, Awaken the Dormant Genes. Dormant Genes. 1. Human, 88.6%. 2. Elf, 5.1%. Active. 3. Beast, 2.5%, inactive. 4. Dwarf, 2%, inactive. 5. Unknown, 1.7%, inactive. 6. Unknown, 0.1%, inactive. Asterisk This skill cannot be strengthened or used in synthesis. Asterisk Value will increase if you consume the same gene. However, please be careful because the vitality of the absorbed object will permanently be reduced. Gene Awakening. An A-grade special skill. Hmm. However, except for the ability to hear the voice of plants this has been useless so far. To be honest, I thought it didn't matter if I had this skill or not. Well, it'll be useful someday. Unfortunately, it meant that it was a good skill in the latter part, so I'll still need to pay attention to it. And the last. Classification, General. Grade, D, Grade E-D. Description, A warrior grows through hardships. Grade Effect. Grade F, Favorability increases easily. Grade E, Awaken at the moment of crisis. Grade D, you become stronger when you are with your colleagues. Asterisk punish evil to grow the skill. Asterisk save others to grow the skill. Asterisk this skill cannot be strengthened by yourself. In fact, when I first got this skill, I had noticed that my favorability was increasing, and I only thought it would be a non-fighting skill. However, the effect I had experienced while fighting against Rastus this time showed such a great performance that I could now call it a kind of cheat key. It was really fun. Unfortunately, however, there was a cooldown time and it couldn't be used in its sealed state. Hmm. After roughly organizing everything, I think I know what I need right now. I don't have enough easy-to-use skills. And it just so happens that I had a very useful solution to this problem. At last, the time for gotcha has come. I fiddled with the status window and summoned the random box. A glowing silver box beautifully rose in front of my eyes. To have gained a medium-grade box at this point. Although it wasn't comparable to the high-grade box, it could be said that the medium-grade box was what I was most familiar with in my life. It's easy to acquire and it's a box that sometimes gives out high-quality items. I don't think today could get any better if I can get one decent combat skill above D-grade. Since I got good stats earlier, my luck should be good, so let's go. After taking a deep breath, I opened the box without hesitation. Used 1x random box, medium, dot. The box spun in the air as it shot out beams of light, then soon after, the result appeared in front of my eyes. Gained 3x strength and skill, low, dot. Hmm. I felt uncertain about the item that had come out. In fact, to be able to strengthen a skill isn't a bad thing. Rather, it belonged to goods that were important enough to be said to be essential to grow strong. However, all I can use this on now is and. Hugh, it's not bad, but it's a bummer. It would have been perfect if I had obtained a combat skill. Thinking so, the moment I sighed inside. The opened box closed on its own and it started rotating again. Sometimes there were cases like this. When more than one opportunity is given in one box. And. Usually, in such cases, it was often the case that the second reward was the true reward. And maybe. I watched the box with anticipation. 
An intense blue light bursts out of the box. It meant that at the very least it's degrade. Then finally, the box opened, and I couldn't hide my smile the moment I saw the result. This is it. As expected, this world is a game of luck. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. A week quickly passed. Because Bay Dalso suddenly disappeared ahead of the event, the nursery teachers were restless for a while. However, it had often happened where he couldn't be contacted, so soon after everyone carried on like normal. Then came the day of the sponsorship event. I stuck the good job sticker on my chest and got on the nursery bus. Other than me, most of the children were from the flower group. The few others were children with pretty looks that seemed to have been put in just to fill out the race quota. At the chance to change their fate, none of them could hide their excited faces. It was finally the day. I was also looking forward to it. With this, I'll be able to obtain a proper identity and background to become a hero. In terms of games, it could be said that it was time to leave the beginner village. Come to think of it, this will be my first time to officially gain an identity. In the last round I didn't even register my birth and had lived without any ID card. I'll be able to use banks and have medical insurance now. Actually, I was used to carrying cash in my inventory, so I didn't really want to use the bank, but somehow I felt bad thinking that I was the only one who wasn't enjoying such benefits. Because of that, I had to set fire to the banks and was chased for a long time. Such memories were now all pleasant memories. While reminiscing on past memories, the nursery teacher sitting in the front seat spoke. We're almost there, so if anyone is sleeping next to you, wake them up. I looked out the window. There was a huge artificial lake, and past the thicket of trees were buildings in the distance that seemed to reach the sky. Neo Pyongyang's third inner city, Lake Town. Since there were primarily guests visiting Pyongyang, it was an area where hotels and tourist facilities were concentrated. The bus stopped in front of a large hotel sandwiched between other tall buildings. Okay since we've arrived, please line up in ascending order and follow me from now on. In particular, there are many other people here, so everyone should act in an orderly manner and not make too much noise. Got it? Yes. We entered the hotel according to the guidance of the nursery teacher. What greeted me was the splendid interior decoration and the hotel's unique neat smell. Today's event will be held in the Grand Hall located inside this hotel. It was a large auditorium mainly used for seminars by large companies and weddings. The children who followed together looked at the splendid scenery with their mouths open. However, what caught my eyes was the placard for the venue. Out of all the sponsors on the list, one name proudly stood at the forefront. Chengchen Group. As soon as I read the name, I immediately understood why this event could be so grand. Sure enough, is the Namgung clan behind this? The types of migrants from the different dimensions were really diverse, but if you were to divide them into two categories, then it was the following. Fantasy and Murum. Naturally, even if they were in the same category, that didn't mean they came from the same dimension. In general, those who belonged to the same category tended to show similar characteristics. Murum was a dimension where those who revered martial arts flocked together. It was a world of qi and swords that is often mentioned in Chinese materials. And the Namgung clan who are the host of today's event, could be said to be a group that held the greatest position in the Murum. After moving to the earth, they grew rapidly using the assets and martial arts they had brought from Murum. Today, not only in Neo Pyongyang but also around the world, it was gaining recognition worldwide and was transforming into a giant company. Was there a need for them to be interested in an event where only nursery children gathered? Of course, it may be a charity event for their corporate image, but there was no need for them to go all out like this. It looks like there's something going on at this event, if something happens, it may be difficult to find a good sponsor. If this event was held by the Namgung clan, scouts from various other forces competing with them are likely to find it difficult to attend the event. Though, even if I get adopted by normal parents with a normal citizenship, it didn't interfere with my plan much. Still, in many ways, it was advantageous to take this opportunity to climb high in society. The story is twisting in an unexpected place. At that moment, I heard a short notification in my ears. Your companion Elizabeth has requested to talk with you. Looking at one side of my vision, an icon resembling her face was shining brightly. What's going on with her all of a sudden? Just like the party system found in games, I was able to have a conversation with her even when we were far apart after I had designated her as a companion. After I showed Elizabeth this function, she contacted me whenever she had time and I began to listen to her trivial matters. And because I couldn't overcome the annoyance, I had instructed her not to contact me unless it was necessary. The fact that she's contacting me now. She knows that I'm participating in the sponsorship event, so she must have found something about this place. It seems I need to check this out. I approached the teacher leading the nursery students and said with an urgent look. Teacher, can I go to the bathroom now? What? The event will start soon, hold it in. Ah, I can't. What if I pee then? Ha, huh, I see, then you have to go as soon as possible. Teacher has something to do here, so you can go by yourself, right? Yes. 
fortunately, the nursery teacher readily gave me permission, as if she didn't think I was very important. I went straight out of the hotel and entered a quiet alley nearby. Before I accepted the conversation, I saw her icon muttering to itself with its ears drooped. It's really important this time, I guess he's not listening to me again, w what should I do? He always ignores me, this is really important. What's going on? H huh? Noah, w were you listening? No, I didn't say anything just now. I was in a hurry so I cut her off and asked. I don't have much time right now, so please cut to the chase. Yes, Noah. I read an article a while ago that said Namgung Taisu will come to the venue you're attending today. Namgung Taisu? Yeah, you know, the Chengchen Group president. He's famous for never attending such events, but articles are pouring out because he suddenly said he would attend. Listening to her, I became convinced of my guess from a moment ago. Okay, Nuna, thank you for letting me know. Yes, then, good luck with the event and let me know when it's over. I want to say hello to your future parents. I ended the conversation before she started talking nonsense. I thought while looking at the hotel where the event was held. What on earth is happening? Although I wasn't sure if this would be a good or bad thing for me, I was certain of one thing about this strange situation. It seems it's best to watch the situation for now. As soon as I thought that, a large man entered the alley lighting a cigarette. The man was dressed in a tailored suit and on his waist was a long sword. He seems to be related to Chengchen Group and was sent by them for today's event. Looking at me, the man hid the cigarette behind his back and asked. Kid, are you from a nursery school? Yes, yes. I'm from House of Flowers. Hmm? But the event is going to start soon. Is it okay to stay here like this? Ah, uh, I wanted to pee, so I was looking for the bathroom, but I couldn't find it. Haha, <laughs> is that so? In fact, I couldn't find the smoking area because the hotel is so spacious. Then, if you're done with your business, hurry up and go in before the event starts. The man smiled kindly and said. Fortunately, he didn't seem to have any doubts. Yes, thank you. After bowing to the man, I hurried to the hotel. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Phew, kids these days. The man smoked his cigarette while looking at the child running far away. His son was also of the same age, so for no particular reason the child's back caught his eyes. Even so, I hope he meets good parents today and lives a happy life. The man thought as such before flicking his cigarette and crushing it. At that moment, a woman in colorful leopard leggings entered the alley dragging a carrier. Fluffy ears that resembled a hyena and a tail that gently shook along with her hips. She seemed to be a mixed race with the blood of beast men. The man observed the woman for a while. What is she doing in this alley? The man, who felt something amiss, spoke to the woman in a polite manner. Excuse me, there's nothing to see here, and it's blocked if you go further inside. If you're looking for the station, I think you came the wrong way. However, the woman continued to approach the man as if she hadn't heard him. Sensing that she was suspicious, the man slowly lowered his hand to the handle of his sword and asked the woman. Can you stop for a moment? The moment the man spoke. Swish. Something flashed in front of him. Slowly, his view began to rotate. And soon, thud, the man fell to the ground head first. He could see the cigarette but he had just thrown away. I it's an attack. Before he knew it, there was a sharp flexible sword in the woman's hand. The man wanted to shout, but no voice came out. The woman slowly walked towards the fallen man. Then, she lifted her slender leg before slowly lowering it. Looking at the sharp high heel descending, he had one final thought. The children are in danger. Pack. The man's head was shattered, and red stains formed in the quiet alley. The woman giggled as if she was satisfied with what she had seen, then she took out an instrument resembling a camera and looked at the ground. Hmm, is it here? Soon after, she opened her carrier and took something out. It was a thick stake with many yellow amulets attached to it. The woman put the stake on the ground and placed one hand on it before giving strength. Hup. Crack. The stake penetrated the solid asphalt and went in without a trace. After seeing that, the woman spoke to a walkie-talkie that was plugged into one of her ears. I just took care of it. The voice of a man full of irritation came from the earplug. Vera, you're the last one. What took you so long? Hee <laughs> hee, I'm sorry, Andes. There was a bug here, so I was late because I had to deal with it. While the two bickered, another heavy low-pitched voice intervened through the earplug. Stop. Everyone, focus. It's starting now. At the man's word, Vera swallowed her saliva. And although no one was watching, she nodded and spoke. Okay, I'm ready. Ha <laughs> ha, good. I've been waiting for this moment. Let's do it now. Then, we'll start in five seconds. Following the man's instruction, Vera counted five seconds inside her head and then began to inject mana into the stake that she had just placed. At that moment, Wuang, a wave emitting a low pitch sound that was hard to hear spread out. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. And soon, a transparent intangible tent slowly began to cover the hotel. Hugh, I need to move quickly. 
Staring at the dead body on the ground, she kicked it one last time, before heading to the hotel. Chapter 18 The Lounge on the Top Floor of the Hotel On a large screen occupying one side of the wall, the view from the sponsorship venue was currently being broadcasted. Now, the next child I'm going to introduce is a cute little lady from Samong Nursery. Everyone, let's give her a round of applause. Ah, hello. I'm a host who introduced the children to the guests and the children who clumsily introduced themselves. The way the children desperately tried to present themselves as in need of love looked pitiful enough for others to be sympathetic. But despite that, an old man sitting in front of a screen only frowned, then he spoke. It's not this one either. Namgung Taisu sighed while leaning against his wheelchair. A secretary who was beside him bowed her head deeply. I I am sorry. I should have prepared someone properly. No. There's nothing to be sorry about. You're the one who had prepared the event according to the whims of this old man, Cook. After finishing his words, Namgung Taisa suddenly coughed. As if he was having a fit, his cough lasted for dozens of seconds. President. The doctor next to him hurriedly attached a respirator to his mouth. But in the next second he grabbed the respiratory and threw it away. Hugh, this is for an elderly person who'll die soon. I don't need it yet. B but you can't overdo it, President. Ho ho, Cho Wen Jiang is the only one who cares about my body. But thank you for worrying about me. Namgung Taisu showed a very exhausted expression as he spoke. Liver spots blooming all over the face, and a skinny body that reveals only skin and bones. It looked like an old man who had drank the heavenly water and was waiting for his death. But despite that, his eyes were still and clear. I can't afford to die yet. Several generations have already passed since he moved here to earth. And in that time, he has devoted his whole life to raising the fallen Namgung clan. He endured harsh humiliation and lived a servile life, and sometimes even abandoned his pride as the righteous faction by touching dirty work. It was only after decades of effort that it was possible to rebuild the name Namgung on this land. But it's still not enough. From the perspective of Namgung Taisu, he couldn't be satisfied with the current state. He created the group called Changchen, but he knew well that it was insignificant compared to the power he enjoyed in the Murum. There was something essential to recreate that past glory. It was the power that made the Namgung clan who they are today. The boundless firmament righteous sword method. In particular, the monarch sword art. Unfortunately, however, the monarch sword art currently held by the Namgung clan was only half. The manual was lost at the time when the survivors of the Namgung clan fled to earth. But even if it wasn't, it was a martial art that was notorious for its convoluted steps and learning curve. There also wasn't any explanation to solve it. As a result, it has reached a point where none of the immediate blood relatives of the Namgung clan can use the monarch sword art. Therefore, Namgung Taisu was here in search of clues to restore it. Heavenly body, it'll definitely be possible if it comes into such a person's hands. A legendary constitution blessed by God to train in martial arts. If it is the talent to understand and learn all the martial arts of the world, then the monarch sword art of the Namgung clan could also be restored. And, if the divination done by the Namgung clan was correct, then the heavenly body will appear at the venue today. I must, have it in my hands. Namgung Taisu looked at the screen and his eyes shone coldly. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The sponsorship event had already begun when I returned to the hotel. In front of the entrance to the venue, a childcare teacher was seen wandering around with an anxious look. As soon as she saw me, she suddenly screamed. Why are you so late? I'm sorry, the hotel is so spacious that I got lost. Hugh, I'm going to lose my mind. Anyway, we don't have time, so quickly change your clothes and get your makeup done. Hurry up. I followed the person in charge of the event to the waiting room located behind the stage. There were already children gathered from various nursery schools standing like a market stall. Hyuk, wa. Hello. I'm 11 years old. Ah, uh, no. W.Y. isn't my ability working all of a sudden. From those who were preparing their speech while looking in the mirror, to even those who were checking their abilities again. The children, who were once abandoned by society, were trying hard so as to not miss this opportunity. It was noisy. I watched the scene from afar after I quickly changed my clothes in the narrow space. Soon after, a woman with colorful hair approached me. Oh my, look at you. What's wrong with your hair? Rather than makeup, we should do something about your hair first. Saying so, she sat me in front of a mirror. On one side of the mirror, the scene of the venue was being broadcasted. What kind of style do you want? No, I'll just take care of it, so wait a minute. Then she began to trim my hair with a pair of flashy scissors. She was a chaotic woman perfect for this chaotic landscape. As I waited for her, a child suddenly sat down next to me soon after. White skin and silver hair with a tint of blue. And an expressionless face like a doll. He was a handsome boy with a very cold impression. Hmm, who was this? Somehow, he looked familiar. But I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I stared at him for a while, 
Then he suddenly looked at me and asked in a sweet voice, What are you looking at? He seemed annoyed judging by his expression. He was as feisty as he looks. Nothing, I just glanced at you because you're handsome. You're a very rude rascal. I'm not used to being looked at by lowly people like you, so don't look at me anymore. The guy said and frowned. Then, after staring at me for a moment, he turned his head back to the mirror in front of him. I complimented him for being handsome, but he's acting like that. Perhaps because of the absence of a father and mother figure, his personality was very bad. Because of that, I think my young heart is going to be scarred. Okay. Let's write down his address and kill him later. As soon as I thought so, an event official appeared at the entrance and shouted, Next in line, please get ready in advance. Then the unfortunate guy sitting next to me got up and headed to the stage. But really, I think I've seen him somewhere. On second thought, it's definitely a face I've seen before. Is it one of the heroes that I killed in the last round? While I was lost in thought, the boy's face was reflected on the monitor in the mirror. The child to be introduced this time is a person of noble lineage. The prince of a deceased royal family who came from another world. Let me introduce Eugene. Along with the enthusiastic explanation from the host, the boy climbed onto the stage. Twelve years old. Eugene. Then, without saying a word, he picked up a wooden sword lying as a prop on the side of the stage and began swinging it in the air. Oh. A perfect trajectory of the sword without an inch of imperfection. At the boy's exceptional swordsmanship, exclamations burst from all over the venue. The boy, who had been swinging the wooden sword for a while, soon put the sword back on the display stand and left the stage. The moment I saw it, I thought I knew who he was. It was him. Namgung Eugene. A genius among geniuses who became a C-class hero at the ripe age of 13. In the past, when I was wandering the streets, I remember reading it in a newspaper article. Then, that guy will be adopted by the Namgung clan today. If I didn't remember his last name wrong, it's probably likely to flow that way. Come to think of it, if he's 12 years old now, wouldn't he die next year? In the last round, Namgung Eugene received a lot of attention when he became a C-class hero at the age of 13. However, not long after that, he died in an attack by a terrorist group with a grudge against the Namgung clan. And because of that, the Namgung clan went into an uproar. At that time, it was such a big event that even the back alley where I was mainly active had an impact, so the fact that he had died is still vivid. Well, people without manners should die early. While I was recalling past memories, the woman who was trimming my hair behind me suddenly shouted. Oh, my God. She looked at me with a very surprised look when she looked in the mirror. She soon slapped my shoulder and spoke. It's really amazing. It's totally amazing. You had this face, but why did you dress like a beggar? Because she was making a fuss, other makeup artists around her began to flock around me. Oh, my. What's this? Why is the boy so pretty? I know, honestly, I feel slightly defeated. Slightly? I think it's a complete defeat. What? You're so mean. Thanks to them, this place that was otherwise noisy felt twice as hectic. I wanted to get out of here quickly. At that moment, the official who visited the waiting room a while ago called me at the entrance. I'll prepare for the next segment in advance. Thanks to that, I was able to get out of this hectic space. In a hidden space next to the auditorium that led to the stage, I thought to myself while waiting for my turn. With the new skill I had gained this time, I'll be able to get adopted to a good place. I don't want anything like becoming an honorary noble or gaining special citizenship. What I'm aiming for is at least a second-class family. With that much, I'm sure they'll be able to support my hero activities after I become a hero. The next friend I'm going to introduce is Choi Noah from House of Flowers. Please give him a round of applause. I can hear the host calling my name. I checked my outfit one last time before heading onto the stage. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The guests all looked at the pamphlets in their hands when the host called out the next child's name. Let's see, Choi Noah, 12 years old. Specialty is, playing games? Oh, my. I've never seen such a case before. There wasn't anything else to write? Well, I'm sure he's a gloomy boy. I don't think he'll be suitable for a classy family like mine. The guests inside the venue let go of their expectations and began chatting with one another. At that moment, a young boy appeared on the stage. Uh, huh? Is that him? Didn't it say he was a boy? Unlike the mood a while ago, those who saw the boy had no choice but to burst into admiration. A beautiful face like an angel and a cute, playful expression and, the mysterious purple eyes that shone. Every eye at the venue became, focused on one place. As if someone had cast a spell, the moment they saw the boy's appearance, strangely, they started to like him. It was a subtle change that they themselves wouldn't be able to notice. Ho ho, I can't believe playing games can be a speciality these days. Isn't it a healthy leisure activity? Hmm, he's the perfect boy for a noble family like mine. Finally, the child standing in the center of the stage, grabbed the microphone. Ah, hello. My name is Choi Noah, and I'm 12 years old. 
The boy simply introduced himself, but there were noises of laughter everywhere. This is a talent show, so I'll show what I'm most proud of. Then surprisingly, the child took a wooden sword out from the display stand next to him, just as Eugene had done a moment ago. Everyone at the venue watched the child's behavior. But at that moment, boom, with a loud roar, one of the walls of the venue suddenly burst. Then the sound of someone laughing was heard. Ha ha, I'm first. What stood there was an iron giant wearing a steel suit. Following him, dozens of masked people began to invade the venue. Ah, V villains. Everyone, run away. Most of the people who are currently gathered here were just from ordinary families. Officials from famous hero families and scouts from various famous organizations were watching from a separate place. As a result, they were helpless in the face of the villain's ambush. Haha, <laughs> it's going to be fun chopping people up. The steel giant, holding a photon blade in his hand, began to playfully chop up the people around him. Not only that, the masked villains swung their swords at the people trying to escape. Everywhere became filled with blood and screams as the venue quickly turned into a mess. Then one step later, a woman with fluffy ears entered the venue. Huh, Andes? How are you already here enjoying it alone? Breaking someone's head with one hand, the steel giant spoke. You're late, Vera. I was certainly on time. Are you really going to bullshit like this? Ha ha. Didn't I tell everyone the time? Please show up on time next time. While the two were bickering, the inside of the venue was reduced at a rapid speed. The people who had tried to escape died, and the remaining guests knelt on the floor with their heads lowered. Vera stared at the bodies and spoke. Well, by the way, will Gaman be okay by himself? Why are you worried about him? He's probably enjoying it more than we are by now anyway. Yeah, everything will be fine, right? Humph. If you're going to talk about that ominous feeling or whatever, just go home. At Andy's words, Vera quickly changed her expression and spoke. No, it's just a passing thought. Let's quickly clean this up and move on to the next step. Okay, then I'll head up first and suppress everyone, so wrap up the few kids. There are only ordinary people here anyway. Okay, leave it to me. Vera nodded, pulling out a long sword from her waist. Then Andes and a few subordinates left the venue. Soon after, she stepped toward the stage where the children were. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Screams came from all directions. Cut bodies were littered everywhere, and even the ivory carpets were stained with blood. I stood on the stage and watched. Villains. I was certainly expecting something to happen today, but I didn't think villains would brazenly invade like this. Maybe because of the effect of a while ago, but I was really attracting people's attention the opportunity that came after a long time was wasted. Anyway, should I be thankful for my misfortune? As soon as the villains attacked, a message appeared in front of my eyes. Challenge, wipe out the terrorist, chain quest, dot. Condition, clean up the terrorist who has invaded the hotel. Period. One week. Reward, 3x random box, low. A challenge that rewarded as many as three low-grade boxes. The reward is good. And most of all, what I like is, there's nothing ambiguous like saving someone. It's a problem that can be solved by killing everyone here. Nice and simple. The moment I was smiling happily, I saw a masked villain approaching me. Hey, kid. If you don't want to die, go over there right now and kneel down. Blood was dripping from the sword in his hand. Seeing that a light was swaying finely on the blade of the sword, it seems that he is at a level capable of imbuing mana onto weapons. In other words, transforming my body using won't be very helpful. But I don't have to run away anymore. I lifted the wooden sword that I still held in my hand. The masked villain burst into laughter and spoke. Crazy bastard. Die. As if he was trying to split my head at once, he swung the sword down without mercy. However, I coiled my wooden sword around the falling sword and hit his wrist. Cook. The sudden pain caused the guy to drop his sword. And at that moment? P-U-K? Cook. Cook. I caught the falling sword and put the blade into his neck in one motion. Perhaps because of the momentum of the blade, but it was neatly embedded even though mana wasn't used. As expected, it's good. I gave a satisfied smile and checked my new skill. Classification, magic. Grade, C, unsealed, S. Effect, the ability to understand and reproduce martial arts increases. Asterisk correction apply to C-grade martial arts and below. Asterisk you can imitate C-grade martial arts skills and below. Asterisk you can see the sword. Asterisk the skill cannot be strengthened with skill strengthening items. Asterisk current effectiveness is sealed. The skill will be unsealed once certain conditions are met. I can't believe this came out of the medium grade box. It was simply a reward only obtainable by breaking through the lowest probability possible. In addition, I'm not sure what conditions I need to meet, but the skill can grow into S grade simply by unsealing it. Well, it was enough for now. I wanted to immediately swing my sword, so I was very grateful to these guys who were so nice to appear just in time. As soon as I thought that, whoosh, 
A silver light flashed in front of my eyes and passed by my cheek with a sharp sound. I touched my cheek and realized it was dripping with blood. Who are you? Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. A woman with fluffy ears appeared in front of me and was looking at me with a dumbfounded expression. Great. Just like that, I looked at her and lifted my sword without saying a word. Chapter 19. The Hero Association was currently turned upside down due to the large-scale barrier that had appeared in the middle of the city. It could have been a barrier intentionally installed by the hotel, but unfortunately, no contact could be made to the relevant authorities' division, so the possibility was increasingly leaning toward terrorism. Make way! Make way! At an alleyway crowded with investigators. A muscular woman with a magnificent physique pushed through the crowd. Her name was Kim Tae-hee. She was a former B-class hero who was now serving as the senior investigator on counterterrorism at the Hero Association's Neo Pyongyang branch. As she crossed the yellow police line, the body of a man with a shattered head came into view. She looked at the deputy who had arrived earlier and asked, Identity? Have you found out who it is? Yes. He's an employee of Changchun Group. Cause of death? From the shape of the blood on the floor, the man's neck was cut by a sharp sword, and the body seemed to have been damaged by being stepped on by a woman's high heel. TSK, there's nothing more to look at, so just cover it up for now. After instructing to have the bloody scene covered with a cloth, she turned to the barrier. I was roughly briefed on my way here. So, Changchun Group's president is trapped inside, correct? Yes. Including Namgung Taisu, more than 5,000 people are believed to be trapped inside. Ha, huh, I'm going crazy. This is a fucking terrorist attack. In broad daylight no less. So what about the catalyst? Did you find it? We're not sure, but we believe it's that stake over there. Beyond the transparent barrier, she saw a black stake emitting an ominous energy. From the looks of it, could it be a totem? In order to make a totem of this level, at least hundreds of people's blood and grudge was needed. It was absolutely not something that would be used on an ordinary hotel. There's nothing more to see. This is undoubtedly a terrorist attack. Since it was a terrorist attack, every second and every minute was urgent. It was a waste of time to contact the association and wait for them to update the case. She approached the boundary with a stiff expression. Chief Kim, what are you doing? She ignored the deputy's words and activated her ability. Black graphite covered her fist like a shell. Then, she punched as hard as she could toward the barrier. Boom! A deafening roar reverberated as if a bomb had exploded. The power that made her a B-class hero in the past was displayed in full force. However, despite such a shock, the barrier only shook for a moment and there was no significant change. It's damn hard. On top of that, she felt a strong rebound the moment she hit it. It seems like it'll be difficult to break with force. In the end, they'll most likely have to wait until the specialists arrive. However, unfortunately, all the specialists working at the Pyongyang branch were on business trips. They'll need at least an hour to return. It's going to be too late by then. Her eyes, which had been firm, fluctuated. She broke out in a cold sweat and her lips became dry. She anxiously approached the deputy next to her. It's been so long since the incident broke out, so why can't we figure out the situation inside? Did you really ask for support? We heard a superhero with a hacking ability will arrive soon. If you wait a little more. And let the people inside die in the meantime? Can you say that if your family was trapped inside? Huh? T that. While the deputy was thinking of an excuse, a man arrived at the scene just in time. It was a D-class hero with an ability related to hacking. Hello, I'm the support. Hyuk. Before the man could say hello, Kim Tae-hee lifted his collar. There's no time for greetings. Show me the CCTV from inside right now. Oh okay. The man grabbed his tablet and began to use his ability. Even at this moment, it was an unbearable wait for her. She kept thinking about the worst case possible. Hurry up and do it. Didn't you hear that we don't have much time? I it's connected. She snatched the tablet before the man could even finish his sentence. Then, switching between cameras at a high speed, she searched the hotel. And soon, she found the place she was looking for. The grand hall where the sponsorship event was held. There, unknown people wearing masks were indiscriminately swinging their swords. Hundreds of guests were lying on the floor and trembling, and next to them were dismembered bodies. Damn. Contact the association and tell them to mobilize the heroes. Fuck. I told them it was a terrorist attack right from the start, but they didn't listen. She verbally cursed upper management of the association. At that moment, on the tablet, a child was seen standing on a stage. And, a terrorist could be seen approaching the child with a sword. These fuckers. The moment she saw the scene, she lost her reasons and ran in front of the barrier. Then, she hardened her fists and struck the barrier over and over. Boom! 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 An endless barrage of explosions sounded in the narrow alley. The investigators watched on nervously. This time too, I can't be late. 
sweat flowed down her back, and due to the rebound from the barrier, her internal organs constantly shook. However, she continued punching. Please, don't be late. She kept thinking about the face of her daughter. The daughter who eventually left first because she couldn't protect her. Amidst the sound of her continuous punching, the deputy's flustered voice was heard. Ah, uh, see Chief Kim. She pretended not to hear him and continued to punch the barrier. See Chief Kim. Shut up. T that's not it, he's dead. Only then did she stop hitting the barrier. The hardened skin peeled off in tatters, and blood dripped from the corner of her mouth. She stared at the deputy and shouted. Shut up. I told you to shut up, didn't I? Don't just watch and do something you punk. There was a limit to what one person could do. So in order to save more people, she quit being a hero and became a counter-terrorism investigator working for the association. To wipe out the terrorists who took away her daughter. However, whenever she couldn't protect the citizens like now, she would feel a sense of shame and anger each time. Hyok. The investigators knew her story to some extent, so everyone turned their heads and avoided her gaze. Everyone except the deputy. See Chief Kim, why you have to see it for yourself. I feel like shit right now, so don't touch me. And no take a look and see. She nervously snatched the tablet. And the moment she saw the screen, her eyes widened as if they were about to pop out. W what's this? On the screen, the young child was seen killing the masked man. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. I raised my sword and extended it diagonally. It wasn't really a martial art technique or stance. I just felt that this posture was the most natural for my current body. And more than ever, I felt this sword will move according to my will. Who are you? The beast girl gracefully climbed onto the stage where I was standing. Her entrance was like the appearance of a new actor coming onto a theater stage. I observed her without saying a word. With long arms and legs like that of a model, she was likely around 180 centimeters. In addition, the weapon she was carrying was a soft sword that can extend 2m long. Approaching her won't be easy. In general, the two most important things in close combat fights were weight class and reach. In order for me to approach her, I'll be forced to take unilateral damage. Also, the skill I saw from her a moment ago was at least at its peak. In terms of hero grading, she was around C class. On the other hand, my current growth is between E and D class. There wouldn't even be a fight to speak of if I didn't have my current skills and stats. I can't take too long. I have to break through at once. While I was quickly organizing my thoughts, I heard her voice. So have you thought of a plan? Can Nuna play with you now? The soft sword in her hand slowly rises like a snake. I kicked off the floor instead of answering. Swish. At that moment, her soft sword coiled around me as if it had been waiting. Mana faintly covered the soft sword. She had no intention of letting me get close right from the start. But I could feel clearly where the sword would fly. Level of understanding has increased. Abstract information about her martial art flowed into my head. It seems that she had remodeled an existing martial art to suit her weapons in her own way. By understanding its path, I was able to avoid the flying blade that came in waves. One, two, three times. As I avoided the attacks, the distance that seemed out of reach became so close that I could see the wrinkles around her eyes. And at that moment, her eyes bent like a half moon. Caught you. Cling. There was a loud sound of metal behind my back. The tip of the sword, which had already passed by me, began to turn sharply like a snake wrapping up its prey. Level of understanding has increased. There's nothing I can do about this. I quickly imbued mana onto my sword. A faint mana overlaid above the blade of the sword. The mana consumption was incredibly high because I was using it without the chi that came from martial arts. Boom. Even though it collided with the soft sword, the sound of solid steel hitting each other reverberated. After striking the sword that was trying to surround me, I backed out of her range. Wow, seriously, what did you do? How did you avoid it? Perhaps genuinely surprised, she spat out a small exclamation. From her tone, it was as if she was still holding back. At that moment, a message appeared in front of me again. Level of understanding has increased. You've reached a certain level of understanding. While the battle continues, you can imitate the skill based on your understanding. I see. I roughly understood the gist of it. Like a person who has trained their martial arts for a long time, muscle memory will allow me to move accordingly. I lifted my sword again. However, it wasn't diagonal like a while ago this time. Instead, it stood upright like a sword piercing the sky. It was the gentle wind sword art that she has been using. After seeing my posture, the woman's eyes wavered. H how can you, are you from Namgung? I rushed at her without waiting for her to finish. The soft sword that had been limp on the ground belatedly rose. Ting. I imbued my sword with mana and swung down heavily on the soft sword. Then, the soft sword began to fluctuate like a captured snake, and the repulsion quickly returned to her like a shockwave. Cook. The moment she faltered, my feet that had stopped moved again. Damn. Whoosh. Her blade was coming towards me from behind. 
If this continues, even if I kill her, the tip of her sword will pierce my back. She was forcing me to choose. Whether to die together or back down. I gave a third answer to her choice. Asterisk gas. The new effect I had unlocked after I strengthened the skill. At that moment, my body turned into a red blood-colored fog and scattered in all directions. My sword and clothes fell to the floor. W what? After passing through her in my current state, I picked up my sword that had fallen to the floor and slashed it at her back. Kayak! She screamed and faltered forward. Her half-broken sword fell to the floor. Damn, it was shallow. There was no sensation of cutting bones. Due to my lack of mana, I failed to break through the mana surrounding her body. Cook, I'm going to kill you. She staggered and picked up the soft sword again. Then she raised it and pointed it at me. This is troublesome. I've used up all my trump cards. There was no means to break that attack right now. As soon as I made that judgment, I ran to the back of the stage without looking back. A are you running away? You coward. I can hear her angered voice. As a result, she began to chase after me from behind. I have to replenish my mana first. So I ran at full speed and opened the door to the waiting room. The strong smell of blood stimulated the tip of the nose. There were dismembered bodies scattered on the floor. They were the sisters who had gathered around me and screamed a little while ago. I quickly looked around inside. In one corner, I could see the survivors confronting two masked people. The older sister who trimmed my hair wielding a pair of scissors, and next to her was Eugene gasping with a wooden sword. I'm going to stab you if you come. I'm going to stab you. Hack, hack. And behind them, children from the nurseries huddled together and hid themselves. Fortunately, no one seemed to notice that I had come in. Good, that's perfect. I ran straight at them and put a knife in each one. P-U-K. P-U-K. Cook. H ha, cook. They collapsed without even knowing what happened. The hairdresser Nuna and Eugene gave me a surprised look. Ignoring them, I put my hand on the bodies and used my newly strengthened skill. Asterisk mana drain. Ku, cook, ku, ku. My mana. My whole body became filled with mana. To be honest, the efficiency wasn't very good because it consumed mana to use it. Still, after absorbing the two on the floor, I felt quite full. What are you? Hmm? Eugene's eyebrows furled with a shocked expression. Looking at it reminded me of the heartache I received in the waiting room. So for a while I thought about killing him, but I decided to just give up because of the CCTV on the ceiling. I'm in a hurry, so later. Oh okay, got it. I packed all the swords that had fallen on the floor into my inventory and left the waiting room again. When I ran around and found the woman, this time she was haphazardly swinging her soft sword in a loosened state. I don't know if she was running out of mana, but she was moving like an earthworm. I I am going to kill you, ku. Erm? Somehow, I felt like my actions had been futile. If I knew this would happen, I would have just run away. It feels like I'm using a potion boost in front of a monster I had in my grasp. Still, it's good to be certain. I rushed toward her, avoiding the soft sword. P-U-K. Cook. My sharp sword penetrated her abdomen. And unable to overcome the shock that she couldn't beat me, she fell to her knees and staggered away. The place where she stopped was the center of the stage under the spotlight. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Meanwhile, in front of an elevator located on the top floor of the hotel. Currently, Namgung Tice's security team were preparing to welcome the terrorists. They were all martial artists at their peak, and they can be said to be as talented as C-class heroes. Understand? As soon as the door opens, whoever it is, attack. Don't hesitate. Yes. The elevator was rising at a high speed. Everyone looked at the number shown on the elevator. They desperately hoped it would stop, but unfortunately, the sound of the elevator moving became louder and louder. Ding. And finally the door opened. Inside was a lone masked man. However, the head of the security team had instructed them to shoot right away without letting their guard down. Shoot. Do 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 do. Hundreds of bullets flew in unison toward the narrow elevator. At that moment, the bullet bounced back from the elevator and unexpectedly hit them. Because of this, several people who couldn't defend themselves in time were hit. Cook. Did you really try to deal with me with just this much? The masked man's hoarse voice was heard. He walked out leisurely before the elevator closed. A sword was already in the hands of such a man. The security team leader didn't panic and gave the next instruction. The opponent is at least a peak martial artist. Everyone, draw your sword. Yes. Along with a voice that echoed, the security team abandoned their guns and pulled out their swords. The team leader gave the next instruction without delay. Spread out and surround him. Into formation. Yes. The security team quickly surrounded the masked man. The tip of their swords pointed from all sides, restricting the movements of the person inside. Against most strong people, it could be said to be the best method. However, the masked man watched it leisurely and did nothing. Meanwhile, the security team began to move. Attack. Yes. Like a mythical giant who has countless arms, 
blades rush from all sides. Avoiding such attacks very easily, the masked man spoke. It's been a while. His movements seemed to be predicting everything that was happening. As such, after some time, the masked man slowly raised his sword and spoke. I'm getting bored of avoiding it, so I'll have to end it now. Ting. Quiet. A blow that accurately pierced the formation's weakness. The team leader's arm, which was at the center of the formation, was cut off. As a result, the formation quickly began to entangle, and the blades of the team members stabbed each other's bodies. Ah. And my legs. I I am sorry. It wasn't intentional. D don't panic and fix the formation. But the masked man who was aiming for that moment didn't give the security team time to recover. Like a wolf jumping into a flock of sheep, he killed them one by one. The neat corridor of the hotel turned into a sea of blood. And soon, the lone team leader asked the masked man. H how, our formation. He could understand it if the masked man had destroyed the formation with force. Because there were so many strong people in the world. However, the way the man broke it wasn't by force, but an attack that accurately used the principle of the formation. Small loopholes that only people who have trained in Namgung their whole life would know. The masked man answered leisurely. I used to be a Namgung, it would be weird not to know. Cook. What does that mean? Swish. Not wanting to listen any longer, the masked man split the team leader's throat. His head rolled across the blood-stained floor. And the expression on his face was of shock as if he couldn't believe the reality. Humph frogs living in a well. The masked man shook off the blood from his sword and walked along the hallway. At the end of the hallway was the secretary and doctor running away with the wheelchair-bound Namgung Taisu. The man happily approached them with his arms open. Haha, where are you going in such a hurry? D don't come any closer, cook. The moment the secretary pulled out her word, suddenly, her head rolled to the ground. The doctor next to her who saw the scene knelt down on the spot and begged. I I am just a doctor, please spare me. I'm very grateful to you. Because you've kept the president alive so far. T then please spare me. That and this are separate. Swish. The doctor's neck also rolled to the floor. Finally, there was only Namgung Taisu and the masked man left. Namgung Taisu, who had been watching everything without saying a word, opened his mouth in a relaxed voice. Do you know who I am? The masked man chuckled and laughed through the mask. Ha ha, do you think I came here without knowing that? Aren't you the president of the Changchun group and the head of the Namgung clan? You know me well but I don't know you, so don't you think this is unfair? Cuckoo, I guess you're right. Then to make it fair, I'll show you my face too. The masked man said and took off his mask. The face that was revealed wasn't an ordinary human appearance. Emerald skin with bizarre black spots, and a sharp nose that protruded like an arrow. Then there were the two tusks that stuck out on both sides of his mouth. It looked like a mix between a monster and a human. What do you think? Do you recognize me now? Father? However, despite the man's shocking appearance, Namgung Taisu's answer was extremely calm. Hmm, my memory isn't so good, maybe because I'm old, however, there's no way that an abomination like you can be my son, so I think you may have been mistaken. The man let out an eerie shriek and grabbed Namgung Taisu's neck. Namgung Taisu, look at this face clearly. My name is Gaman. It's the result of the terrible experiment you did 20 years ago. Ho ho. I remember now. Come to think of it, there was something like that. Hybrid race made by mixing disgusting and ugly things. In the past, Namgung Taisu had conducted an experiment to mix all kinds of monsters and humans as part of obtaining the heavenly body. The method was to combine the eggs of monsters and his own sperm and then have a surrogate mother give birth. Because of that, countless participants died in the process, and several individuals who succeeded in giving birth soon died due to genetic defects. But the project was hopeless, so I would have discarded it all, but it turns out there was a guy who was still alive. I only survived to exact my revenge against you. Revenge? Will killing an old man like me change anything? The fact that you're a monster won't change anyway. Still, I accept your sincerity for coming all the way here, so take it if you want. Queek. What I want isn't your death. Oh? Then what do you want? Truth. That's all I want. Publicize your atrocities from twenty years ago to the media and apologize to all of us. At Gaman's words, Namgung Tice's face hardened. How dare you? How dare a vulgar hybrid kid like you say such a ridiculous thing to me? Even if I die, I'll never do it. Gaman looked surprisingly calm when he heard it. Soon, he went around Namgung Taisu and grabbed the handle of the wheelchair. I had already expected you to say that. I was worried that it would be useless to prepare this, so that's a relief. You, what are you up to? Heavenly body. Haha, <laughs> I heard this information from somewhere. The reason why you held the event here today is all because of the prophecy that the heavenly body will appear here, right? W what nonsense are you saying? It's no use trying to come up with an excuse. Because I know well that you would only make a move when it's something related to the heavenly body. Ha <laughs> ha. Slowly pushing the wheelchair, Gaman arrived at the lounge. There was a large screen connected to the venue. 
now, I will tell my partners waiting downstairs to kill the children over there one by one. T they have nothing to do with this. Why you can do whatever you want to me. Cuckoo, let's see how long you can last. Gaman turned on the screen. The view from the venue could be seen. Broken bodies were scattered here and there, and those who were suppressed were lying on the floor crying. It seemed that his partners had already finished their work. Namgung Taisu couldn't help but spat when he saw this. Cook. So, do you understand the situation now? Let's see who caves first. Gaman touched his ear and spoke into the walkie-talkie that was plugged into his ear. Vera, just catch one or two of the babies there and put them on the stage. He waited for a while, but there was no answer. Was the connection bad? He called her again. Vera, answer me. Can you hear me? There was still no answer. He looked at the screen with doubt. Only an empty stage was visible. I guess the communication is bad here. The moment he clicked his tongue, thud, boom. Something rolled onto the stage and stopped in the spotlight. Unable to understand what he was seeing, he stared blankly at the screen. Ka ha ha, as expected, the righteous will of the strong will never die. Namgung Taisu was smiling next to him. But why was he smiling? Even though Gaman was seeing it with his own eyes, he was slow to process it in his head. He looked at the screen again. Fluffy ears, and outstretched long arms and legs. There was a stuffy expression on the woman's face, no, she was in tears more than anything else. And, there was a sword in the middle of her abdomen. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. This. Viveraea. After finally understanding the whole situation, he had no choice but to scream. Chapter 20. Vera, whose appearance was similar to that of a hyena, was a crossbreed between a gnoll found in the other world and a human. Thus, she had developed various characteristics similar to female hyenas, and as a result, she was born with a cursed body that was neither man nor woman. So Vera hated her body. Not only did she hate the look of disgust people showed when they looked at her, she was also afraid of the genetic diseases that she might develop one day. She even thought it would be nice to end it all when she saw other children teasing her. But she never gave up on her life. No, to be exact, she couldn't give up. Because the three friends beside her didn't wish for such a thing to happen. Ha ha, Vera. I'm full, so you can eat this. There was the reliable Chow who was as brave as an orc. Vera. When you hold a sword, it's better to relax your hand a little more. The trustworthy Gaman who was as quiet as a troll. Why are you so late? You have longer legs than me. Hurry up and follow me. Do I have to pick you up like this every time? And even the feisty as a goblin, Andes, who was warmer than anyone else. As such, she loved her friends. Thanks to them, she was able to endure the harsh martial arts training and overcome the fear of death each night. She thought that this kind of life wasn't so bad when she was with her friends. One day, when she was struggling day by day, Chow, the oldest of the group, spoke. We have to run away from here. What's up with you all of a sudden, Chow? If we stay here, we're all going to die. The information from Chow's mouth shocked them. The rumor was that the research project will soon be suspended and they'll all be discarded. They had no options. So they decided to run away. Late at night. Along with the sound of sirens, searchlights were lit. And Vera, who was crossing a field, had the lights on her. Hack, hack. Vera, run faster. Hey, you idiot. Hurry up and run. She did her best, but she couldn't keep up with the speed of her friends. Since her feet were naturally bent like high heels, she was bound to be slow. The distance between her and her friends gradually widened. Her friends were already putting their feet on the fence. She gasped and called out to her friends. H hold on, let me join you. Stop right there, you monsters. Behind her, laboratory workers could be seen right on their trail. A distance close enough for them to reach Vera if they held out their arms. I got you. Kayak. I'll let go of me. Let go. Like that, she was caught by the laboratory workers. Seeing that, Chow jumped off the fence. This won't do. Looks like I'll have to go. W wait a minute, Chow. Gaman, please take good care of our younger siblings. Chow charged at the laboratory workers. Because of that, Vera was able to escape safely and cross the fence, but Chow eventually failed to return to them. From then on, the friends were no longer the same. Gaman swung the sword like crazy. Andes began to create something with his ingenuity. And with their newly gained strength, they began their revenge toward the world. They kidnapped officials who had forgotten about the past while living peaceful lives, and then tortured them horribly before killing them. Men and women of all ages were brutally murdered if they looked at them with disgust. Then at some point, other people who also hated the world began to gather next to them one by one. The power they had grew stronger and stronger, and as it happened, their time for revenge drew closer and closer. Then finally, the long-awaited opportunity for revenge came. Based on information they had obtained from someone, they planned their revenge against the Namgung clan. Everyone won't regret it, right? It's fine by me, if I can take revenge for Chow. Cuckoo, why are you asking us that? 
we can't live long anyway. There were many elements necessary for their plan to succeed, but if there was something that could be said to be the most important, then it would be the barrier. They needed a way to stall for time and broadcast Namgung Tice's confession to the world. In order to install such a strong barrier, they had used their own lives as collateral to cast it. And twelve hours after triggering the barrier, they were destined to die regardless of the success of the plan. Yeah, everything is for Chow. Right. For Chow. Okay, let's have fun. Kohaha. They bumped fists one last time and began their revenge. The barrier was triggered after confirming that Namgung Taisa was inside the hotel. Gaman went straight to the top floor where he was located, while Vera and Andes took control of the hotel. The operation went smoothly. The most important thing was to overpower Namgung Taisu. And fortunately, he hadn't brought many bodyguards today. If it was only this much, Gaman could deal with it alone. It was as if heaven was on their side. So, all that remained was to find the heavenly body at this venue. With that as the final piece, they'll be able to complete their revenge. It was definitely supposed to be like that. The bleeding Vera held onto her fading consciousness and moved. Shik. She could hear the sound of a sword being lifted somewhere. Turning her head, she saw the boy slowly approaching her. You shouldn't let your guard down until the experience comes in. There was a shadow over the boy's face. She looked at the figure and thought. I've always been late, but now I'll be the first to die. So she felt relieved. Because she's not the last again. And her friends will be able to live longer than her. Although she couldn't watch the end to their revenge, she believed that her friends would do well on their own. I'll go on first and wait with Chow. There was a faint smile on her face. At that moment. Vera she heard Andy's voice in her ears. Hey Andy's? Why was Andy's here? He definitely said he would go up first and clean up the hotel. Did he come down again for her? Why year? Along with the harsh sound of an engine, Andy's rushed at the boy. A photon blade that had easily cut down the people here a while ago was produced. Just as how he had jokingly said it was fun to dismember people, it was a destructive weapon that could split everything it touches. At the sudden intrusion of Andy's, the boy stepped back with a surprised look. Andy's began to push fiercely. Even avoiding the attacks seemed to be too much for the boy. The thick walls were cut like tofu, and deep marks were engraved all over the venue. After some time passed, the boy who was frantically running away suddenly stopped moving. Hmm? After observing Andy's, the boy grinned and laughed. What? It's a miscellaneous mob that can't even use mana. I was scared for no reason. At that moment, the boy's body turned into a red fog and disappeared. Then, the fog began to dig between Andy's steel suit. Quiwak. Kuh. K Cook. Andy's painful screams were heard. And soon, the suit was released, revealing Andy's. Short height like a child and ugly green skin full of wrinkles. The boy appeared in front of Andy's again. He held Andy's of a similar size with one hand and lifted him up. Let go of me. Let go of me you bastard. It wasn't a modified sound made by a machine, but a whiny voice like an elementary school student. Die. 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 Tuck. Tuck. Andy's hit and scratched the boy hard with his short limbs. But just like a young child playing a joke, there seemed to be no damage to him. He could see the boy's expression. He was smiling brightly. At that moment, he knew what he was thinking. Squeezing out his remaining energy, he shouted. And no, pee please. Swish. Andy's voice disappeared. And. Thud. His head rolled in front of Vera. She could see his visibly angry face in his last moment. And. Duh. And then there was a shadow above her. The boy with blood on his face slowly lifted his sword. When she saw it, rather than thinking of her own death, she recalled her friend who was in danger. And, the thought that once they die, the barrier will disappear. Go, Min, please. Vera prayed that her voice would reach him. And so, the blade of a sword fell over her. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Level has risen. Level has risen. Level has risen. You've reached level 22. Gained a fragment of growth. Synthesis function unlocked. Gained a skill selection, low, for reaching level 20. I'm finally over level 20. I smiled as I looked at the messages in front of me. I didn't gain a skill selection for reaching level 15, but I was able to get one by reaching level 20 in just a few days. What's more important than anything else is that I can use synthesis from now on. In other words, useless skills and items can be recycled. This was more like it. The moment I was reveling in the new function, a deafening cheer came from somewhere. Weya. W we're alive. We're alive. With the death of the terrorists, those lying on the floor stood up and shouted. Then they went wild as they ran onto the stage where I was standing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll never forget this grace. Thank you so much. Choi Noah. Choi Noah. Choi Noah. I felt like I was a rock star being cheered like this while naked. Come to think of it, it's similar to how people would go wild for heroes. At this moment, for the first time in the second round, I realized that I was in a hero-like situation. 
What do they usually say in these kinds of situations? After fumbling through my memory for a while, I was able to remember what those guys used to say often. I approached one of the corpses and held up a head with both hands. As blood dripped down, I spoke. Everyone, you can stop worrying now. I've cleaned up all the dangerous villains. W. Uh, hmm? What's this? Was it just my feeling that their voices somehow sounded less enthusiastic than before? It was a little far from what I expected, but it wasn't that important, so I decided to move on. I have to head up and catch the other terrorists now. And I'll likely be using my skills again soon, so I thought it would be easier to just keep my clothes off and head up. I packed my clothes that fell on the floor into my inventory and headed to the stairway. At that moment, someone's voice came from behind my back. Wait, where are you going now? When I turned my head, I saw Eugene looking at me. Why is he pretending to be close all of a sudden? I gave the punk an indifferent answer. There are still terrorists left. The rowdy crowd immediately turned silent. Was it because they thought their nightmare wasn't over yet? Eugene looked at me with a stiff expression. Don't tell me you're going to deal with them alone? Yes. T that's reckless. We're still young children who need to be protected by adults. Why are you trying to overdo it? Understand the situation. He suddenly got mad at me. And as if agreeing with him, some older people below began to dissuade me. T that's right, Noah. Do you really need to overdo it? T that's right. Why don't you just stay here and protect us? Why do you want to take risks? Now I understand. In the end, they wanted me to protect them because they were worried about themselves. I became annoyed for the first time in a long time. My expression hardened without me even realizing it. It's something I naturally have to do. Only then can I get the reward. In that sense, the people around me lowered their heads and it fell into a solemn atmosphere. Eugene, who stood in front of me, looked at me with a shocked expression. I left them alone and went down the stage. Then, Eugene belatedly began to chase after me. W wait. T then, I'll come too. I'm capable of protecting myself. What's up with this punk? I should have killed him earlier. He was now thinking of sticking to me and stealing my experience. I firmly told him. I don't need it. On the contrary, it's annoying, so don't ever follow me. B but, I. Eugene was about to say something, but soon stopped. Then after a moment, he began to unbutton his top shirt as if he had decided something. The white nape of his neck was revealed. And around it was an old-fashioned pendant with a wolf motif engraved on a red background. He took off the pendant and handed it over to me. I glanced at the pendant he had given me. What's this? It's a precious artifact left by my mother. It'll be able to save your life at least once. Why was he giving this to me? But since he's giving to me, I decided not to refuse. Classification, Accessories. Grade, A. Description, Proof of Successor to the Crowheart Empire. Asterisk Significantly Increase Physical Strength and Mana Recovery. Asterisk, Accelerates Thinking and Improves Dexterity, May 5th. 12 hours recharge cycle. Asterisk, nullify any attack once, January 1st, 3 days recharge cycle. Ooh, what the punk had handed over was an A-grade item. My eyes became glued to the dazzling options attached to it. Up till this point I hadn't liked this punk. I'll have to add him to my friend list in my heart from now on. Thank you, I'll cherish it. I'm not giving it to you. I'm just lending it to you. Hmm, really? It's no use even if you give me that sad look. So, you, must, you have an obligation to come back alive and return it to me. Well, okay. And once you come back, I want to ask you one thing. What is it? Why you don't need to know now? After, I'll tell you. I hung the pendant he handed to me around my neck. I still didn't like his tone, but I could fully forgive him because he was a precious friend who had given me an A-grade item. B but, how come you've been dressed like that since earlier? Eugene blushed while looking at my body. That gaze somehow felt suspicious. Is he, gay? I see. Everything matches when I think about it. It seemed that this punk is gay. And I'm sorry to say this, but I don't make friends with gays. There's no exception to this rule, even if I'm given an A-grade item. I deleted him from my heart. With the punk erased, I headed out of the venue. The senior counterterrorism investigator hasn't been able to take her eyes off the tablet for a while. Other investigators were also looking at the screen from behind her. D does this make sense? Who the hell is this kid? Investigators were clamoring around her and talking. Listening to their conversations, she recalled the boy she had just seen. This fellow. A young child who appeared to be only an elementary school student subdued the villains who appeared to be at least C-class or higher. And two villains at that. But it wasn't his overwhelming strength that truly shocked her. It was the boy's nature. He had cut off the heads of the villains with an expression like that of a young child tearing off the wings of an insect. Having raised a daughter, she was well aware. Children of that age could already understand the concepts of killing and death. So, why did he kill them without hesitation? She has experienced many horrific crime scenes, but somehow, she felt like she was going to be nauseous at this moment. 
Something's wrong with this. According to criminal psychology, there are cases where guilt disappears momentarily when your life is threatened. Nevertheless, the boy was too calm. She thought perhaps the boy didn't even realize that a great evil was being born in him. If, if that's really the case, what should I do? While Kim Taehee was thinking about the child, the boy suddenly moved. Where is he going in this situation? She looked at the screen nervously. He's not going to attack the citizens, is he? Then, as if answering her question, the child spoke. There are still terrorists left. What does it matter if there are still terrorists left? No way, was he going to solve the case himself? No, that's reckless. She unconsciously shouted even though it couldn't have been heard over the screen. No matter how talented a hero is, all it takes is a bullet from a blind spot to die. Damn, he's still young and drunk on his own strength. She has seen it countless times. Those who wield power without any experience because they had awakened a powerful ability. And their demise was always miserable. She thought the boy fit the profile. But soon, she felt like she was hit on the head with a hammer when the boy's next words were heard. It's something I naturally have to do. Something he naturally has to do. That's right. If someone is dying next to you, it's natural to save them. That was human instinct and the driving force behind humanity's development. It was the content that appeared in the first chapter of Hero Studies. She had seen it countless times while preparing for the hero test, but she has never thought about it on the field. However, a young child who wouldn't have even read the introduction to heroism was telling such a fact so naturally. This, why did I doubt this child? Guilt flooded in. Even though she has been in the field for so many years, it seems that she still doesn't have a good eye for people. She let out a sigh and lowered her head. At that moment, the deputy shouted, See Chief Kim, the barrier is disappearing. What? Kim Taehee quickly turned her head. Then, as the deputy had said, the barrier surrounding the hotel was blurring little by little. She jumped up and ran in front of the barrier. Looking closely, she could see that the thickness was significantly thinner than before. So she activated her ability and struck it. Then, a clear crack appeared on the robust barrier. If it's this much, Kim Taehee began hitting the barrier at a high speed. And in a little bit, crack. The barrier that was blocking them shattered and disappeared. Seeing that, she shouted loudly. We're revising the plan. Those who haven't awakened their abilities are to wait here and support. The rest of you follow me closely. Kim Taehee quickly rushed into the hotel. Ten investigators also followed after her. She ran straight to the venue where the boy was. Please don't do something reckless. This wasn't the time for a child to step up. It was something left up to the adults. Everyone has their role. I can't let a young child bear the responsibility alone. Boom. The door to the venue opened like it was going to break. Then, she saw the citizens standing in a solemn atmosphere with their heads down. She abruptly shouted. The kid. Where did the kid go? Everyone avoided her gaze and failed to give a proper answer. As such, it was a beautiful child with silver-blue hair who approached her. He has already gone upstairs. Fuck. At the same time as she said that, she kicked the door of the venue again and ran out. And in her mind, she desperately prayed for the child's safety. Wait a little bit, I'll be there to save you soon. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Ah. This. What had dropped from the terrorist I had just killed was an old wando. The attacks were strangely sharp for something without mana, so I thought there must have been a reason for it. I can't believe such a rare item dropped from a miscellaneous mob. Classification, sword. Grade, E, damaged, C. Description, wando grown in the hands of goblins. It's permanently damaged. Asterisk the more blood it soaks up, the more demonic energy is emitted from the sword. Effect, sharpness increases. Asterisk this effect was lost due to being damaged. Asterisk this effect was lost due to being damaged. It was a sword with a very good option. I preferred such intuitive weapons over ones with minor effects. Hmm, I like it, but the durability isn't that great. The sword itself was a wonderfully well-made wando. However, I don't know if it's because it's an old weapon, but there was serious damage here and there. I thought it was likely to break after a few uses. My only choice was to use it as a trump card. But, a perfect opportunity had just come. I took an item out of my inventory. Classification. Clothing. Grade. D. Description. Tough and sturdy socks. Asterisk can't get wet. Asterisk can't rip. Asterisk can't be soiled. It was finally time for this thing to shine. If I were to transfer the effect of can't rip from these socks to the weapon, a similar option will be attached. As expected, there were no bad items in this world. I activated the new synthesis menu. And then I put in and. There are up to five available option slots for. Please select the options you want. There are five slots for this? This sword seems to be a much better treasure than I had thought. However, I didn't have enough items to fill this treasure right now. So it would be a waste to just put in a few items and waste the precious slots. As soon as I was agonizing over it, a brilliant idea came to mind. Ah, 
why didn't I think of that? I took off the pendant hanging around my neck. I can't believe I had forgotten about this bad boy. I placed the pendant into the synthesis window. Do you wish to synthesize these items? The original items cannot be reverted once synthesized. Synthesize. I pressed the synthesis button without hesitation. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. Then, along with a dazzling light, a new item revealed itself. Hyuhu, good. And, seeing it, I couldn't hold back my laughter. Chapter 21. I took a moment to appreciate the item in my hand. The shabby wando from a moment ago has been transformed into a beautiful work of art after being synthesized. Its sheath was now dyed in a beautiful purple and red varnish, and inlaid elaborately around it were wolf patterns in an oriental style. I slowly drew the sword. Wang. An eerie cry resonated. The surface of the sword was smooth as if looking into a mirror. On the strangely clean blade, my face covered with blood was clearly reflected. I slightly cut my finger on the tip of the sword, but there was no pain or feeling. But soon after, drops of blood began to rise between the skin that I thought was fine. Good. This sword was very sharp. Rather than a sword made for fighting, it seemed to be more suited as a surgical tool. Before, if I had cut a person with such a weapon, I would have probably died of old age before I could even kill one person. But it was different now. Classification, Sword. Grade, A. Description, a sharp sword that emits an eerie cry and is sharp enough to put even its owner in danger. Asterisk indestructible. Asterisk the more blood it soaks up, the more demonic energy is emitted from the sword. Effect, sharpness increases. Asterisk, accelerates thinking and improves dexterity, 3 thirds, 24 hours recharge cycle. Asterisk, nullify any attack once, January 1st, 1 week recharge cycle. The effect that had blossomed at the expense of which had kept my feet dry for a while. Indestructible. Thanks to this, Red Velvet Curse will never dull, even if my arms break in the future. When I think about it again, it seems the option paired well with the sword. On top of that, the original sword and pendant effects were also successfully extracted even though they were slightly lowered. Anyway, the options that were removed from the sword were the damaged ones, so it didn't mean much now. The effects extracted from the pendant also had their charging time increased or the number of uses decreased, but the difference wasn't that significant. But if there's one thing that's lacking, despite synthesizing a weapon with five option slots at best, there were only four options. Nevertheless, since the options related to physical and mana were lost, I can cover it with vampiric touch. Anyway, in conclusion, I had gotten such a great item. This is why I can't give up the taste of synthesizing. As expected, there needs to be RNG in games. Perhaps because I've killed a lot of bad guys in this round so far, I thought I was really lucky whenever I played gotchas. But, what should I do now? I looked at the scraps left over from the synthesis. The socks, which had always been clean, became dirty like the feet of beggars. And the pendant which was given to me had lost its antique gloss and has somehow turned into something like a Chinese fake. Of course, it was still an elaborately crafted pendant, but honestly, the design looked like something a child with hero syndrome would make, so I didn't really want it. Hmm, I should just give it back to that punk. Although he was gay, he was still the one who had given me an A-grade item. It would be polite for me to show at least that much sincerity. Thinking about how happy he would be, I put the pendant into my inventory. And at that moment. T that bastard over there. The terrorist, who had ran away while I was looting the items, reappeared with his colleagues. Roughly counting, there were about 20 people. The bald masked man at the forefront of the group spoke. So, everyone was attacked by that naked punk? Yes, yes. That's right. So quickly, cook. The bald man suddenly hit the back of the subordinate's head. His face crumbled and he spoke. Hey, you punk. Are you kidding me in this situation? What kind of dangerous child would take off all of their clothes like it's some playground? Then the subordinate standing next to him hurriedly spoke. I I am telling the truth. There's no reason for me to joke around. T that guy is really crazy. I think he's at least as strong as Vera. This punk really wants to die. How dare you mention Vera? What if she hears you? P please believe me. If I'm lying, you can have all my share of the money this time. Hmm, are you really telling the truth? The bald man seemed to be agonizing for a while, and soon he began to approach me with his subordinates as if he had made a decision. I don't know if he really believed what his subordinate had said or if he's just cautious in the first place. They slowly built a siege by drawing their swords against a young child like me. I wanted to try this even if you guys hadn't. This is good. Asterisk when use has been deducted. Asterisk charges remaining, two-thirds. The effect from the newly acquired weapon was activated. And then the world turned red in an instant. My blood began to pump faster, and my heart felt as if it was beating out of control. And, except for me, the world began to move slowly like a broken clock. Hmm, so it was this kind of effect. It seems to be an acceleration buff similar to the one Fioria had used. I took a step forward in the world that had turned red. 
my body shot at a high speed like a spring that had been released. The terrorists were still out of their minds. In a blink of an eye, I was in front of them. Wung, along with an eerie cry, my sword was unsheathed. I cut the neck of the man who was closest without using mana. Swish. I couldn't feel any resistance as if I had cut down water. Because of this, the blade came out the other end at the same speed. Even though I had cut down one person, my world was still red. I took another step. Shocked expressions gradually spread across their faces. They twisted their bodies little by little to try and avoid my blade. But will it work? I, like a batter who had returned to the bench after hitting a home run, passed by while looking over the backs of these guys. Swish. The blade penetrated their backs and even the bones were neatly cut. However, far from becoming dulled, it was getting easier and easier to cut. Even when I took the life of the last guy in line, they couldn't even tell what had passed. Thus, I broke through their siege. At that moment, the scenery of the world regained its color, and the time that had slowed down returned to normal. Only then did screams belatedly come one step later. K. Cook. Ah, am my back. When I looked back, dismembered bodies were scattered everywhere. Only half seemed to have been taken care of. Passable? It was a very satisfactory result. And the red velvet curse that had cut them became colored with a subtle redness as it emits a demonic aura. The frightening aura made me feel as if my arm would be cut off just from holding it. It could be said that this would be okay to put it in the collection of famous swords that I had collected in the first round. There weren't many weapons that could cut people down so easily without using mana. However, the taste I felt holding it was slightly disappointing, so I think the score should be reduced a little. Well, if I meet a stronger guy later, I'll still get the taste of cutting one way or another. As soon as I thought that, the bald guy from a while ago shouted as if he was having a fit. Why you, W who are you? Are you from Namgung? He was twice as big as the rest, with thick muscles around the whole body, and even a large sword as big as his own body. I stared at him. I don't know if he'll be able to satisfy me, but. Lifting my sword again, the red velvet curse let out another roar. Then I slowly approached him. But the man stepped back and trembled pathetically. A answer me. Who are you? If you are a hero, I'll surrender right away. He threw his large sword on the floor and raised both arms. Then other terrorists next to him also threw their weapons and knelt on the floor. We made it clear that we are no longer willing to resist. So you must guarantee our right to life under the Anti-Oversuppression Act. T that's right. Frankly, this is oversuppression. You animal. I'll report you to the Human Rights Committee and have you stripped. The terrorists suddenly uttered strange words and began to act confident. Hmm? I had no choice but to tilt my head. I think they mistook me for a hero when they saw my righteous self. I'm naturally going to be a hero soon, but I'm undoubtedly not one yet, so I didn't want to intentionally mislead them. I honestly confessed what they were mistaken for. I'm not a hero yet. H huh? Then why are you? The bald man, who was moving back while on his knees, fell over after being caught against a dead body. Pointing my sword at him, I answered. What's the reason for playing games? Simply because it's fun. Swish. I split his body in half. Unfortunately, I couldn't feel the taste from my hands that I was hoping for. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. From now on, you guys will act in pairs. The goal is to secure the safety of the citizens and to find the child from earlier. No matter what happens, de-escalation before engagement. Understand? Yes sir. Kim tae and the investigators who had followed her spread out and searched the inside of the hotel. She even ran around the hotel with mana. However, everywhere were only the scattered bodies of dead guests, and no survivors were seen anywhere. Furthermore, the hotel was large, so there were more than a dozen areas in the lobby alone. If they were to include other auxiliary facilities and rooms, even a whole day wouldn't be enough to search it all. Damn. Fuck. What the hell? She cursed while running. Even now while they were searching, the criminals were slaughtering innocent people. Every second delayed was another loss of life. With that heavy responsibility, sweat flowed down to the point where her shirt was soaked. Then suddenly, an unfamiliar landscape came into view. Different from the dead guests she had seen so far, it was a dead body wearing a black mask. The profile was the same as the terrorist she had seen on the tablet earlier. She rushed to the body. It was neatly cut off at the neck. And she could feel it intuitively. This is, the child's work. Having experienced numerous villains using swords, she knew one fact. That it's rare to cut a person's neck during a battle like what is seen in movies and games. This wasn't a matter of morality or conscience. It was simply human anatomy. The human neck is surprisingly difficult to cut with a single stroke. Therefore, it was natural to attack a wider and easier to kill area rather than aim for such a narrow area during a desperate battle. Of course, there were cases where people with sadistic hobbies would cut off the victim's neck, but most of them were non-combat situations or something that happened in the process of unilateral slaughter. But it's different with the boy. He had aimed for the neck when he didn't have to. 
as if there's a great grudge against the terrorists. So in this hotel, the boy was the only one who would do this. I have to hurry. She hurried her steps. Soon after, a few more dead bodies appeared. As if they had died while running away from something, the bodies were split on their backs. It was a common wound that appeared frequently on victims of terrorist attacks. She left the corpses alone and kept running. Like the fairy tale Hansel and Gretel, the scattered bodies on the floor guided her. And the moment she finally turned a corner, she had no choice but to widen her eyes. What came into view was just the color red. Everywhere was dyed in red. There were as many as twenty scattered corpses, and all of which had died in an unrealistic way. Even including the days when she was a hero, she has never seen such a scene before. Uh, uh. She unknowingly blurted out nonsensical sounds as she looked at the terrible scene. As she was staring blankly at the scene, at that moment, at the end of her gaze, she could see the child she had been looking for. It was definitely a naked boy without a single piece of clothing, but at first glance it looked like he was dressed in bright red clothes. How much blood did he spill to make it look like that? She couldn't even begin to guess. At that moment, the child raised his arm. He had a long sword in his hand. And where the sword was headed, she could see a terrorist who was still alive and shaking. The moment she saw it, she rushed straight to the boy. W wait, stop. But as soon as she was about to grab the boy's arm, an alarm rang in her head. Whoosh. The blade that tried to hit the terrorist suddenly changed its direction and fell on her. A blow without giving her a chance to defend. However, with the instinct she had learned from her long experience, she was barely able to respond to the attack. Asterisk gauntlet. Thick carbon gloves were produced along her arm. Armor of the hardest material on earth which had made her a B-class hero in the past. The armor and the boy's blade collided. Boom. Cook. She spat out a small groan. A very light wound had formed in the place where the blade had struck. The power in the attack itself wasn't very strong, but the boy's sword was sharp enough to break through her absolute defense. Luckily, I fended it off. The moment she tried to persuade the boy again, the blade of the sword, which was blocked by her armor, turned straight and aimed at her waist. D dangerous. An unexpected attack that caught her off guard. She never imagined that he would attack again. She instinctively activated her mana and blocked the attack. Cook. And the boy, who couldn't overcome the backlash, flew back and rolled away. Ah, no. Realizing what she had done, she tried to run straight to the boy. But fortunately at that moment, the boy jumped to his feet and pointed the tip of his sword at her. It was a surprising amount of concentration that even ordinary heroes didn't have. Then the boy smiled and spoke. Ajuma, you're really robust. Instead of being intimidated by the attack, the boy was smiling as if he was having a lot of fun. As she had expected, the child wasn't normal. And, he tried to kill me with all his heart just now. It had been a really long time since she had felt such a blatant killing intent. For some reason, her spine chilled. However, it wasn't a matter to think about now. She hurriedly shouted at the boy who was about to charge at her. W wait a minute. I'm Kim Tae-hee, a senior investigator at the Hero Association. Tuck. At her words, the boy stopped moving. Then he asked with a suspicious look. How can I believe that? You could be lying to me. H hold on. I'll show you my ID. She hurriedly took out her ID card and threw it at the boy. And when he received it, he looked at the ID card and Kim Tae-hee alternately and spoke. This is a different person no matter how I look at it. T that. As expected, you were a terrorist. The boy lifted his sword again with a betrayed look. She blushed and said in a hurry. And no. In fact, it's because of filters and the angle. Hmm, how can I believe that? Then show me now. I'll judge based on that. W what are you talking about? Take a selfie and show it to me. The boy said and looked at her with his arms folded. Looking at his expression, he seemed to be serious. Why does she have to take a selfie at a bloody sight like this? She felt like she was losing her mind. D do I really have to do it? I'm really Kim Tae-hee. You can't tell by how it looks? I'm obviously Kim Tae-hee. And my subordinates can verify it once they come in a little while. As expected, a terrorist. No, I'm not. H hold on a second. Looking at the boy who had lifted up his sword again, she took out her smartphone. It's all for the safety of the citizens. She, who has reigned as a tyrant in the counter-terrorism investigation team, gave up thinking straight. Kim Tae-hee puffed up her cheeks and took a selfie at an angle. The boy who was covered in blood and the terrorist watched with a serious expression. Click. She quickly added a filter to her selfie and threw the smartphone at the boy. The boy looked back at her and the picture, showing it to the terrorist behind him and asking. What do you think? Do you think it's right? I I think it's right. My eyes for a person aren't great but, I think this is the same person. Kim Tae-hee, who was hearing all of this, couldn't help but shake at the feeling of being deeply humiliated. She just felt fortunate that none of her subordinates were here. After some time, the boy threw the smartphone back at her and spoke. Ah, so you were telling the truth. 
I'm sorry. I attacked you because I thought you were a terrorist. No, it's fine, I understand. The boy smiled brightly. Somehow, she felt like she was being teased, but she recalled her purpose for coming here. She was here to protect such a reckless boy from danger. But that's a relief. He understands my words. Perhaps he was a righteous boy at heart, even if he was just a little lacking in the head. Considering that the place where the boy was located was the venue where the nursery schools gathered, there must have been no opportunity to receive a proper education. It's important for a child to grow up in a proper environment. If something goes wrong, a boy with such a promising future may be corrupted and become a villain. Even though the guys that the boy had murdered today were criminals, they were also human lives. If the boy begins to take the weight of life lightly, he might commit another murder at the drop of a hat. On the contrary, if someone could take good care of such a gemstone, then it could become an important talent to protect the citizens in the future. But who in the world would do that? A child with such a personality might cause a big accident if they let their guard down for even a little. And it's probably hard to find parents with the will and ability to control it. Maybe I. As soon as she fell into thought, the villain who was kneeling on the floor shouted. I'll surrender. Under the Anti-Oversuppression Act, I hope there will be no more harm that comes to me. She clicked her tongue when she heard it. Awful human rights laws. These bastards always start bringing out human rights when their positions are at a disadvantage. Did they really deserve to talk about human rights? She recalled the bodies of countless civilians she had seen on her way here. There were young children, young couples, and bodies with traces of sexual assault. Did those people know that they were going to die today? And every moment such as this, she would feel skeptical about what she was doing. Trash like you should really be grateful for the law. Haha, <laughs> I'm always grateful for it. She took out handcuffs and approached the terrorist. At that moment. Swish. A red solid line formed on the terrorist's neck, and then he fell to the side. And next to it, she saw the boy putting his sword back in its sheath. W what the fuck? What the hell are you doing? She couldn't have imagined such an unexpected action from the boy, so she unknowingly cursed. But the boy spoke in a very calm and composed tone. I have to kill all the terrorists. It sounded as if killing them was his only reason for living. A blind sense of goal that doesn't waver no matter what anyone says. What had happened to this young child for him to hate terrorists so much? Then she realized. The reason why she couldn't take her eyes off the child. Ah, as expected, does he have the same pain as me? It was as if all the puzzle pieces were coming together one by one. Perhaps his family was a victim of terrorism. She looked at the child who was still smiling. The smile began to look different. I see, even now, he's crying. For him to not even be able to express it, how much pain has the boy been carrying? She managed to hold back the tears that were about to burst. At that moment, the boy suddenly turned around and began to walk toward the elevator. Wait, where are you going? The boy spoke. It's not over yet. There's more terrorists above. The boy calmly confessed that he would continue to kill. But she couldn't say anything about it. As an adult, and as a former hero responsible for the safety of the citizens, she had to stop the boy right now. But, at the same time, as a mother who had lost her daughter, she had no choice but to make a foolish decision. She wondered if her daughter would have looked like the boy now if she had died and her daughter had survived instead. If that's what it takes to save you, I'll protect you from the side. Before the boy could do so, she pressed the button on the elevator with a confident step. And then she looked straight into the boy's eyes and spoke firmly. This is originally my job. I won't say anything about you following me anymore, but I won't forgive you for spilling any more blood on your hands. As she spoke, the look in her eyes resembled that of the hero black tank that was active in the past. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. All of a sudden I was standing in front of an elevator with a woman who was trying to act cool. What's wrong with this auntie? Strangely, there seems to be a lot of people trying to stick to me these days. And regarding this, if I had to guess why. Asterisk favorability increases easily. As expected, isn't it because of this? Gaining popularity among the public was naturally very important if I want to be a hero. However, it could be annoying at times when people appear out of nowhere like now. Nevertheless, I can say that it was rather helpful this time. Considering that her defense had deflected my red velvet curse a moment ago, I thought she would be perfect to use as a meat shield. Well, it wouldn't hurt to take her along like this. I had heard from the terrorists earlier that their goal was Namgung Taisu. And the head of the terrorist group, a crossbreed between a troll and a human, was going to attack him. Apparently he was a terrifying powerhouse equivalent to a B-class hero. On the other hand, looking at my ability, it was around E and D class. Like hitting a rock with an egg, it was virtually impossible. But as I have various skills that others don't have, it wasn't right to simply consider the general hero level. Even when I was a villain in the past and was always on the run from the hero association, I always fought and won against heroes of higher grades. In addition, now that I have Red Velvet Curse, I am far beyond my grade in terms of offensive power. It was worth a try. Ding. 
the elevator arrived. The door opened and bullet marks could be seen embedded in several places. Looking at it, I felt as if I was just about to enter the boss room of a dungeon. Come to think of it, I had almost forgotten. I opened my status window without getting onto the elevator. It's a rule to set up the skill again before entering the boss room. I had gained three levels from the venue earlier, and then two more in the lobby. In all, I've reached level 24. The lobby had a lot more monsters, but that's a given when you kill weak monsters. Then again, it was thanks to them that my level rose this much. I invested the fragments of growth in body and mana. Body. 2.15-2.77, plus 0.62. Dexterity. 2.01. Mana. 1.67-2.17, plus 0.50. Spirit, 2.08. Asterisk zero fragment of growth. And then? All stats have exceeded two points. Physique has increased by one stage. Every stat has finally exceeded two. Because of that, my physique has grown one stage and my durability has increased. I can worry less about dying now. And next is skill. I used the skill selection I had gained after a long time. Used 1x skill selection, low, dot. One of the following skills can be obtained. 1. Classification, mortal. Grade, E. Description, Introductory Martial Art Method that is good for laying the foundation. 2. Classification, Magic. Grade, E. Description, Create a protective coating that defends against physical attacks. Perhaps because it's a level 20 skill selection, but it seems that there are quite a few useful skills now. But I scrolled down without paying attention to these skills. There was another list of skills that were shining. Special Selection. I was wondering if it was the case, but it's there as expected. The achievement I had gained this time was also a feat. Looking back on the previous case, I thought it would be difficult for these new achievements to give out useless skills. I carefully looked through the skill lists. A. Classification, General. Grade, C. Description, Additional damage against targets larger than yourself. Asterisk another additional damage against giant type. B. Classification, General. Grade, C. Description, You can hear the voices of plants. Level 25 skill selection will be forfeited if you select a special skill. In any case, I saw a trash skill. Even without that skill, I was already suffering from hearing the conversation of plant obscenities. Just because it's a special selection didn't necessarily mean all of them would be good. I chose one of the skills without hesitation. You've learned. In fact, it wasn't much of a choice. Considering that my body is that of a child now, I've acquired a very useful skill. And, wasn't there a saying that trolls are descendants of giants? I didn't think everything would fall into place like this. As expected, this world is a game of luck. A smile leaked out without me realizing it. And I guess because I've been standing still for a while, Kim tae quickly began to pour out words. What's wrong with you all of a sudden? Hmm? Are you scared? If you're scared, you can go back now. You've done enough. No, it can be said that going back now is true courage and revenge. Because. I ignored her, who was talking nonsense with a rather solemn look, and reopened the elevator door. Are you coming? Huh? Why yeah, L let's go. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. She had a surprised look on her face as she hurried into the elevator. As the door slowly closed, I had a thought. In the end, it seems to always come down to catching a troll to get your beginner license. After today, I'll graduate from being a newbie. A painful scream echoed in a splendidly decorated suite. Here, the tattered Namgung Taisu was groaning and bleeding profusely. It wouldn't be strange if he dies any second now. Looking at Namgung Taisu who was in such a state, Gaman asked in a cold tone. Namgung Taisu. Are you not going to change your mind? Kuhuk. Kill me. Even if I die, I won't tarnish the honor of the Namgung clan. I see, I'll see how long that'll last. Gaman said and picked up his sharp dagger again. Then Namgung Taisu glared at him and gave him a frivolous laugh. Kuku, isn't it your side that is running out of time? I can see that you have been restless since earlier, so what are you trying to hide? What are you talking about? You thought I wouldn't know? The barrier has disappeared after the death of your important friends a moment ago. At Namgung Taisu's words, Gaman had no choice but to frown. Damn it. He had seen it clearly. The scene of his friend's demise that was broadcasted live on the screen. At that moment, he had lost his reasons for a second and almost exploded into a rage. A strong impulse to immediately go down and eat the culprit had filled his mind. But he didn't go down. Because he still had something to do. Hey guys, even if someone dies during the operation, let's not think about revenge. Vera, why do you always say such negative things? You're always so pessimistic. I know. But this is also my resolution. If something goes wrong, each of us might get excited and ruin the operation. So promise me. Let's just focus on our plan. The promise he had made with his friends. 
having recalled it at that moment, he was able to suppress his anger. I have to endure it. He gritted his teeth. Such emotions would be rather detrimental to the success of the operation. And if he truly thought of them as friends, then it was the right choice to focus on completing the operation they couldn't finish. However, it could be said that the current situation was the worst case possible. Due to the death of his friends, the plan to secure the heavenly body has failed. So the means of threatening Namgung Taisu has disappeared. To make matters worse, the barrier that had been buying them time has also disappeared. And in a little while, heroes will storm this place. Before that, he had to finish this somehow. Damn, the preparation time was too short. In fact, this operation was planned suddenly only a few months ago. Originally, they were going to take revenge around next year after they had developed their strength a little more, but a great opportunity had come that was hard to pass up. Do you want to take revenge against the Namgun clan? A mysterious person had visited them one day. The being had told them of an opportunity to aim for Namgun Taisu and how to implement it. The identity of the being is still unknown, but thanks to him, they were able to advance the time for revenge even further. If we had a little more time, then they would have been able to kidnap more sacrifices and strengthen the barrier. He adjusted his mind. It's no use regretting the past. What I have to do now is somehow make him confess to his sins. He approached Namgung Taisu. I must hear the words of apology from your mouth today. Cuckoo, ridiculous. Why don't you give up now? Heroes will be here soon anyway. Namgung Taisu still looked relaxed. Was it because his torture skills were poor? Or was it because he had such a twisted personality? He wasn't an expert when it comes to torture, but now he wasn't in a position to make excuses. So he spoke in the most threatening tone he could muster. From now on, I'll pull out your teeth one by one whenever you don't give me what I want to hear. W. Wait, hup. Namgung Taisu forcibly covered his mouth. Like an earthquake, there was a turbulent fluctuation in his eyes. He, who hadn't budged even after having his skin and toes cut off, why had he suddenly become fretful? At that moment, a guess passed through Gaman's mind. Maybe. He immediately fumbled around Namgung Taisu's mouth. Namgung Taisu shook his body and began to violently rebel. Hyuk. Hook. And in a little bit, he felt a different sensation from one of the teeth on the tip of his finger. Like so, he pulled out the tooth. Kyuk. Namgung Taisu screamed. He looked at the tooth that had been extracted. It contained a small memory card inside. What the hell was his reason for trying to hide it in this manner? G give it back. Namgung Taisu said with a mouthful of blood. His expression looked like that of a very desperate person. Such an appearance had confirmed his guess. In the past, people from Murum would always carry martial arts manuals on their bodies. Has Namgung Taisu not given up such a habit from his times in the Murum? Haha, <laughs> this must be the monarch sword art. G give it back. It's an important treasure that'll bring our family back to life. You, weren't you once someone from the Namgung clan? Then you know what I want, right? If you're waiting for the heroes to come, you'd better give up. He slightly cut his palm and inserted the memory card inside. Then, with the regenerative ability of a troll, his skin began to heal completely. I'll hold on to this monarch sword art. If you run away from here, I'll destroy it. Cook. Gaman beamed a smile. It seems the plan will finish smoothly. As soon as Namgung Taisu was about to give in, suddenly, a large woman jumped into the area where they were. Don't move. Gaman quickly observed the woman. Muscular body that was strong enough to show through the thick clothes. Looking at the shape of the muscles, she appeared to be closer to a hand-to-hand -hand martial artist than a swordsman, but she didn't seem to have been trained in martial arts professionally either. But, what is that black thing? And his gaze fell to the red sword resting from the woman's waist. Was it a bluff? But to say that, the quality of the weapon seemed too good to be an ornament. Counterterrorism forces currently have this place surrounded. Quit the meaningless resistance and quietly surrender. The woman took out a pair of handcuffs and began to slowly approach him. He had to make a decision. Whether to push ahead with the plan as it was or run away with Namgung Taisu. Let's quickly clean this up. Fortunately, the woman seemed to be alone. If there were reinforcements, they would have come in together. He raised his hands and pretended to surrender. Then, the moment the woman entered his range, he pulled out his sword. A swift attack aimed at her abdomen. It was a quick and accurate stab. He was convinced of his success. But, boom, the sword bounced off with the sound of tapping dull iron. At the same time, he stepped back far away. Looking at the woman, she was suddenly wrapped in jagged black armor. The appearance was like looking at a sea urchin. A troublesome ability. He clicked his tongue. He wanted to clean this up before others arrived, but of all things, it had to be a defensive hero. In such a state, the woman began charging at him. Furniture around her broke like toys. Certainly, that level of power and defense couldn't be looked down on. But, if that's all. The flow of the woman's simple attack was clearly visible in his eyes. 
he slipped to the side and avoided her incoming attack. Boom. Unable to overcome the inertia, the woman stuck deeply into the hotel walls. With her like that, he raised his sword. If she's wearing armor, I just have to cut it down. With all the experience he has accumulated, a faint sword intent gathered on the blade of his sword. Even among those who have mastered the sword, it was a technique that only few can do. The moment he raised his sword, Wang, something like a red fog, came out of the woman's body, and suddenly her sword flew. He quickly turned his body to the side. However, due to the late response, a deep wound had appeared on his chest. Quick! He screamed loudly. This level of pain was enough to shake his mind. He didn't know why, but it was more painful than any other attacks he had ever experienced. Swike! The attack came again. He managed to hold on to his consciousness and quickly roll away. As he raised his head, he saw a naked boy covered in blood. South close. The boy smiled and looked at him. It was a face that he could never forget. Anger that seems to lose its reason rose again, but charging at the boy now would only lead to the worst outcome. Catching his breath, he carefully looked at the boy. He wasn't sure what the boy had done, but the attacks just now were very dangerous. Because his tough skin had been cut by a sword that didn't even carry mana. First, I have to stall until the wound on my chest heals. Thud. At that moment, the woman who had been stuck in the wall walked out, shaking off the cement powder. Like her thick armor, she looked fine without any wounds. Fuck. I'm going to lose face in front of a kid. The woman immediately rushed at him again. The boy followed closely behind her. However, he only ran away in a circle and didn't fight them. The wound on his chest was healing with tremendous difficulty. After a short time, the boy put the sword he was holding on the floor and asked. Is your name Gaman? He didn't know what the boy was trying to do, but it was rather advantageous to him if he could buy time to recover. So he decided to play along with the conversation. That's right. My name is Gaman. Where did you hear that? Anuna said it while dying. By chance, was Shi Hyung's friend? Again, the monster inside him was about to explode, but he calmly controlled his mind. The boy was probably trying to provoke him to make the first move. And as long as he had noticed that, he would never do so. Sure enough, the boy continued to provoke him. But Hyung, you're really ugly. That's a trifling provocation. He snorted. However, he had no choice but to frown at the boy's next words. Ah, is that so? The guys I had killed earlier looked especially ugly. Do birds of a feather flock together? They were people who had fought the gazes of hatred all their lives. So they've come across such insults more than greetings in their lives. However, he felt a rising anger when the person who had killed his friends insulted them. He didn't want to get drawn into the boy's words so he stopped talking. He ignored the boy's words and focused on recovering. But the boy spoke again. Ah, but Hyung, did you know? Vera, was it? The taste I felt from my hands was so soft and tender. Saying so, the boy pretended to cut the air. Scenes he had seen on the screen a while ago appeared in his mind. But it's too bad I couldn't enjoy it for long. Because I had killed her too quickly. Hyuhu. The boy was smiling brightly and teasing him. And in the end, his last string of reason was cut. I'm going to kill you. He roared as his eyes turned red. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The angered Gaman pulled out his sword and ran at me. Since our team's tank couldn't even provoke properly, I had no choice but to pull aggro myself. For now, I had grabbed aggro again. I hid myself behind Kim Taehee who had a distorted look on her face. Then a voice came over her thick armor that seemed to be extremely shocked. Why you, such wicked words. More than that a Jumma, look in front of you. Boom. Kohuk. The sword aimed at me struck her armor in the nick of time. I took advantage of the gap and slashed my sword at Gaman's arm. I'll kill you. I'm definitely going to kill you. However, perhaps because he was enraged, he didn't even react properly to the light wound. Boom. Boom. Cook. Gaman's sword struck Kim Taehee's armor non-stop. It seemed that he lacked the concentration to use sword intent like before. Nevertheless, perhaps because of muscle memory, his attacks naturally contained martial arts. Level of understanding has increased. You've reached a certain level of understanding. While the battle continues, you can imitate the skill based on your understanding. Thanks to this, it was easy to predict where his attacks would land. I informed Kim Taehee of Gaman's attack pattern. A Gemma, left. Boom. She raised her arm to block his blade. And with the gaps that occurred each time, I chipped at his body little by little. With the growing wounds on his body, Red Velvet Curse became sharper and sharper. His movements were gradually slowing down. And finally. Swish. I cut off his arm. The thick muscular arm spun and slid far away. Quiet. I tried to finish him off in such a state, but at that moment, he stepped back as if he had come back to his senses. Kuhuk. He stumbled, clutching his arm. This was our chance. Ajuma, now. Kim Taehee exploded her saved mana and shot straight at him. 
The way she banged and smashed all the objects around her was like a speeding train, but at that moment, W wait, no, you can't step on it. In a straight line toward Gaman, a wheelchair suddenly stormed in like an arrow. Namgung Taisu reached for Gaman's arm that had been cut off. What the fuck? As a result, Kim Taehee forcefully twisted her trajectory. And there, Gaman was waiting like a batter on a baseball team. He used the wide side of the sword like a blunt weapon and struck her head. Boom! Along with a huge explosive sound, Kim Taehee's head became bent. And then she collapsed on the spot. Her outer armor scattered, and a stream of blood was flowing from her head. Seeing her chest move, it seems that she was still alive. Our team tanker suddenly retires out of the blue. Against a boss who was in our grasp no less. I became dumbfounded by the sudden situation. But he's almost defeated anyway, so I'll be able to handle it by myself. At that moment, Gaman suddenly screamed. Groar. A voice closer to that of a monster than a person. And soon his body began to twist. He, who was around 2M, grew into a giant nearly 4M tall. His back became bent, and his arms grew long enough to touch the floor. His skin turned a darker emerald, and the black spots embedded in several places made him look like mint chocolate. Kuro, I'm full of energy. Looking at the body that had turned even more hideous, I saw a familiar ominous purple haze slowly rising. Wung. On top of that, the sword intent from his sword was surging. Even though it was still unstable, compared to before, it had a clear light. H. How, this level of harmony. Seeing such a scene, Namgung Taisu was shocked with his mouth open. I could see that he was having a hard time breathing under the pressure of Gaman. I'm in trouble. A class, the true breaking point in human capability. B and A were only one letter apart in terms of classification, but the difference was like that of a child and an adult. And now he was showing a power close to A class. This was unexpected. A sigh almost leaked out. The pressure I felt was close to what I had felt when the savage god possessed Yifrit's body. Hmm? Wait a minute. Somehow, I felt a sense of deja vu. The fact that this was also a challenge meant that this wasn't an impossible situation. I quickly thought of my skills and items. But, no matter how hard I thought about it, wasn't this impossible? Of course, it would be possible to kill him with the effect of and Red Velvet Curse's offensive power, but, there was absolutely no way to approach this guy who has such a long reach. It's over in an instant if I get cut by that sword. Perhaps this boss doesn't have a key item and it had to be caught before its awakening. Damn. He was already caught if that old man didn't screw things up. I stared at Namgung Taisu. He was begging Gaman. D don't kill him. I need him. That's the heavenly body. I'll chew that little bastard. And no. K kill me instead. And with a determined look, he opened his arms. It was an action as if to protect me. Then Gaman spoke. If you really want to die, I'll kill you after you issue an apology. Until then, obediently shut up. Hmm. And I, who was watching that, suddenly came up with a way. I see. The old man was the key item. As expected, there's no way the challenge would issue an impossible task. There's always a way if you look for it. I approached Namgung Taisu and stood behind his wheelchair. Then in a trembling voice, I spoke. D don't worry grandpa. T the heroes will come soon, so I'll stall for time until then. Are you trying to protect this old man? Why yes. Trust me. I looked around. There was no camera. Good. I held the handles of the wheelchair. My grandpa. Then, hold tight. Huh? What do you mean? I ignored his question and activated the skill attached to Red Velvet Curse. Asterisk one use has been deducted. Asterisk charges remaining, one third. The world turned red as my heart beats like crazy. I charged at Gaman while pushing the wheelchair in the slowed world. Aha. Namgung Tice's long scream was heard. Beyond that, I can also see Gaman's shocked face. The speeding wheelchair rammed into his body. And. P.U.K. Cook. My sword penetrated the wheelchair and Namgung Taisu before stabbing Gaman in the abdomen. Time then returned to normal. Grawar. How dare you. My plans. Recognizing the death of Namgung Taisu, he no longer hesitated and swung his sword at me. Ominous mana gathered around his blade. I could even see that he had squeezed out his own vitality. The surging light was thicker than ever before. Looking at the attack that was coming towards me like the wind, I used the last remaining. The world slowed. Nevertheless, his sword was still fast. I threw myself at the blade as it was. And right before the blade touched my body, the other skill attached to the item was activated. His attack was nullified, and the sword intent disappeared. His shocked expression was still slowed. Wung. An eerie cry was released from the red velvet curse. Thick blood could be seen scattered along the edge of the sword. And just like that, the blade slid across his neck and it was cut off. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Level has risen. Level has risen. You've reached level 25. Gained a fragment of growth. Completed challenge wipe out the terrorists. 
gained 3x skill selection, low, dot. You've eliminated an existence that meets the standard of evil. You've saved those who were in despair. Warrior's journey grade has increased. A new effect has been added. Countless messages appeared before my eyes. Only then did I breathe out a long sigh of relief. Who, a close finish. Gaman's severed head came into view. He had returned to his original form from the monster-like appearance a moment ago. The elf king and now this guy. What was that mysterious purple haze? Maybe there was a link between the two. And of course, the dead Namgung Taisu. I was a little disappointed because for a while I thought I would go to the Namgung clan at this sponsorship event. For his sacrifice, I approached him to express my gratitude. As if to protect me until the very end, his eyes were wide open. In fact, it was something that could have been completed earlier if it weren't for this old man. Hmm, come to think of it, why did this guy suddenly interfere? I lifted the cut arm that he had cherished. Near the palm of the hand I could see a protrusion. When I split the skin and took it out, I realized that it was a small memory card. It was even designated as an item. So I slowly read the description of the item. T this. And I had no choice but to widen my eyes. Classification, manual. Grade, S. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. Description, definitive monarch sword art manual .txt. Asterisk the interpretation of this martial is currently missing. In order to understand the content, you'll need the. In my hand was an S-grade martial art manual. Chapter 23. I inserted the memory card into the laptop that was lying on a table. On the screen, a file named Definitive Monarch Sword Art Manual.txt appeared. Monarch Sword Art. A legendary martial art I've heard about several times in the first round. Rumors are that if one can master this martial art, then they would be able to destroy mountains and cut the sea with a sword. I had never seen it in person, so I just thought it was a bluff by the people in Murum. But it actually exists. However, I wonder how great this martial art actually is, and how much was exaggerated. I clicked on the file. Then a lock-shaped warning message popped up on the screen. What's this? It seemed that Namgung Taisu had attached a password on the file. After a moment of contemplation, I entered a number that he could have used. 0000. A warning window appeared on the screen again. Incorrect password. Please retype the password. A total of five tries, for remaining. For an old man who came from the generation of elderly people who didn't even have calculators, it appears he understood how to password protect the file. It can't be helped. I'll just open it next time. Anyway, since was still sealed, I wouldn't have been able to interpret it even if I could open the file. I put the memory card in my inventory. Let's take a look at my stats now. Body, 2.77. Dexterity, 2.01. Mana, 2.17. Spirit, 2.08. Asterisk 4 Fragments of Growth. I've risen 4 levels thanks to the experience gained from Gaman and Namgung Taisu a moment ago. As a matter of fact, I didn't think I would level up because normally the growth rate was bound to slow down by this point. Unexpectedly, I gained 4 levels this time. I distributed the 4 fragments of growth evenly. Body, 2.77-3.00, plus 0.23. Dexterity, 2.01-2.29, plus 0.28. Mana, 2.17-2.35, plus 0.18. Spirit, 2.08-2.30, plus 0.22. Asterisk 0 fragment of growth. When body exceeded 3.0, I grew a little taller and my field of view increased. Even though it was still the body of a child, sleek muscles forked throughout the body. To test, I tried bending a thick metal stand nearby. And like a thin wire, it was bent. I was certainly strong. From the moment a stat exceeds 3.0, it was no longer proper to simply call it strong, rather, it fell into a category that should be called superhuman. My current stat was equivalent to the days when I was a D-class villain in the past. Since that was around the third year, it can be said that my growth rate in this round was abnormally fast. Next was my skill. Unfortunately, I didn't get a skill selection for reaching level 25. I've been mentally prepared since I chose a special skill in the elevator a while ago, but I still felt sad because I came away empty-handed. But I'm glad that I got this instead. With the completion of the challenge this time, the grade of has risen again. It appears to be growing more often than expected. Was it because it's an easy skill to level up? Or was it because of something related to the purple haze? Classification, General. Grade, C, Grade D-C. Description, A warrior grows through hardships. Grade Effect. Grade F, Favorability increases easily. Grade E, Awaken at the moment of crisis. Grade D, you become stronger when you are with your colleagues. Grade C, move to a specified milestone. Asterisk new asterisk. After friendship was road. Does it mean to travel with the warrior's companion? I somewhat understood the naming pattern. 
The newly added effect this time was a spatial movement skill. When I selected, a list of areas that I could move to appeared in front of my eyes. Asterisk Guangcheng District. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, House of Flowers. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, Elf Garden. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, Lake Town. Asterisk can be used together with your companions. There seemed to be a restriction on where I could move. Only places I visited or places of completed events showed, but nonetheless, it was a very good skill. If I remember correctly, wasn't the lowest spatial movement skill C grade? I gave a satisfied smile. For me to have gained a new weapon and skills, today was a very lucky day. And on days like this it was perfect for gotcha. I took out a random box, low, that I had received as a reward. Then I opened it without hesitation. Used 1x random box, low, dot. The box rose into the air and a bright light began to burst out. Strangely, since a little while ago, I've been feeling that something good was going to happen. I think today was definitely my lucky day. My gut feeling was telling me so. Anne. You've gained perfect socks. Fucking socks. Classification. Clothes. Grade. E. Description. Socks with cute wolf patterns on them. Asterisk prevent foot odor and athlete's foot. Asterisk transforms to fit the body. Why do socks always plague me? In addition, the options were much worse than the last one. Right, it's too early to give up. I still have two boxes left. This amount of damage can still be fully recovered. Anyway, I got an A-class skill after the socks last time, so let's think of it as a sacrifice for the jackpot. I took a deep breath and reached out to the next box. Please, come on. Along with bright lights, the box opened. Then, I stared blankly at the result in my hand. It was underwear. Not only that, a character was stitched on it. Classification, clothes. Grade, E. Description, underwear with a cute wolf on it. Asterisk grow up strong and brave. Asterisk transforms to fit the body. I looked at the character stitched on the back of the underwear. It was a wolf winking at me with its thumb raised. It's the same bastard from before. The one on the socks. I threw the underwear on the floor. Fuck. Why? Wasn't today supposed to be a lucky day? How come only trash came out? I've already blown away two boxes. My hands were trembling as I thought about the loss I've incurred so far. What should I do, should I stop here? No. Losing two is the same as three. Since that was the case, wouldn't it be better to go all in on the last chance? I stared at the last box with a determined mind. Let's go. Used 1x random box, low, dot. And in a little bit, light began to burst out of the box. But the light coming out this time was bright blue. That means it's at least a degrade item. As expected, this is it. I gulped and watched the box. And finally, the reward was paid. Classification, clothes, grade, D. Description, sportswear with a cute wolf on it. Asterisk improves exercising productivity. Asterisk will return to its original state even if torn. Asterisk transforms to fit the body. I sat down on the floor as if I had collapsed. I was so speechless that I think I'm going to cry. I, what did I do so wrong? Dirty luck ruined my gotcha. Why the hell was my faith being tested? Why is the world unfair only to me? Why, can't I be happy? I grabbed the underwear that was on the floor and yelled. But at that moment, a new message appeared in front of me. You've collected all items of a set. Set effect active. Asterisk set effect. Can transform into a dire wolf. As expected, this world is a game of luck. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Through Kim Taehee's faint consciousness, the sad voice of a child was heard from somewhere. I, what did I do so wrong? She slowly opened her eyes. Her head still felt dizzy. Looking sideways with a blurry view, she saw the boy from a moment ago suffering as he hit the floor. Why? Can't I be happy? The boy's scream dug deep into her heart. He was always smiling on the outside. She didn't know he was in such a great deal of pain inside. Move, Kim Taehee. As an adult and as a former hero, she couldn't just stand and watch as a child cried. She forced her body that didn't listen up. Then she staggered toward the boy. Ah, Ajuma, you're up? The child who had suddenly changed his expression asked her with a bright smile. It's as if something great had happened. When she saw such passionate acting, her heart seemed to have collapsed again. You don't have to pretend to be strong. You're a child, so you can cry like a child. She lowered herself as she opened her arms. The boy simply stared at her. Ajuma, did you hurt your head? I see, right. It's going to be hard to open your heart since it's our first meeting. I understand. Kim Taehee looked at the boy with a pitiful look for a moment. Then, the thought of Namgung Taisu and the terrorist belatedly came to her. She couldn't believe that she had forgotten such a thing. She hurriedly looked around. The terrorist's decapitated head was on the floor, and the president of Changchun Group was dead. This, what happened? I killed him. The boy said calmly. But, was that really possible? 
The power she had seen from the terrorist was close to A-class before she lost consciousness. No matter how frightening of a talent the boy had for his age, it shouldn't be possible for him to deal with Gaman. Maybe, did he burn his life force? Then it would make sense. Villains who came over from the Murim sometimes did that. They would burn their life force and fight to the death the moment they are backed into a corner. Perhaps Gaman was already about to die. Then, why was Namgung Taisa dead? Do you happen to know what happened to him? He sacrificed himself to protect me. She looked at the body of Namgung Taisu. It looked like a frontal charge at the terrorist. Is that so, did he actually have a change of heart at the last second? She had doubted him because of the rumors, so she thought it was inconceivable that he would sacrifice himself to protect a child. She felt ashamed of herself for having doubted him. The fact that he's dead, means the Namgung clan is finished now. The Changchun group was actually maintained by relying on the total control of Namgung Taisu. Soon, there will be a divide among his children and the group will walk on the path of destruction. It's going to be noisy for a while. She couldn't believe the end of such a righteous man had been so vain. She quietly clasped her hands and prayed. And then she looked at the boy that the righteous person had protected. A child who she strangely couldn't help but pay attention to despite his horrific actions. Looking at the boy, she spoke. If you don't have a place to go, why don't you come live with me? Are you saying you're going to adopt me, Ajumma? You don't have to call me mom. You can continue to call me Ajumma. It's just that I want to help you. The child seemed to be deep in thought. Hmm, it's uncertain. What was uncertain about it? He's not saying that she's not enough to be his guardian, was he? Also, I think I like being alone. Looking at the boy's expression, she realized that she had made a mistake. She was too hasty. The boy definitely had his own scars. As expected, was it way too early for him to open up his heart? However, it was too heartbreaking looking at the boy, so she took out a hotline messenger that could connect to her. Then, please at least let me help you. Hmm, okay. Fortunately, the boy didn't refuse her help. With the boy's ability, she was certain that they would meet one day at the Hero Association. When such a day comes, I need to lead this boy down the right path. As such, she made a commitment to herself. And soon, the heroes arrived. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. A crowd had formed around the hotel as more than dozens of ambulances could be seen. Officials who appeared to be from broadcasting stations were filming the scene from afar. We're live from the scene of the terrorist attack in Lake City. All terrorists have been subdued, and now comes the task of rescuing the people inside the hotel. All of the victims who were kidnapped at the venue were able to leave the hotel safely. Have you seen a boy with black hair and purple eyes? Eugene asked the rescuer who was covering him with blankets. The rescuer gave him a gentle smile and reassured him. Were you separated from your family? Don't worry too much. If we find him, we'll definitely bring him here. Then because the rescue task was still ongoing, she rushed back into the hotel. Why isn't he coming out yet? He continued to closely watch the entrance of the hotel. Countless survivors and bodies covered with a white cloth were carried out. However, as the hotel guests were rescued one by one, the appearance of the boy he was looking for was nowhere to be found. No way, he didn't die, did he? He suddenly felt anxious. But he shook his head and shook away the thought. It can't be. The moment the boy killed the terrorists and saved him, he could feel it instinctively. That he was of the same kind as himself. Someone who was blessed by the sword. A martial genius born once in a thousand year. It was clear that he had the same cursed talent as himself. In this world where there are only idiots, he was the only one who could understand him. He'll definitely survive and help him with his great mission. That's why he even lent him the pendant. At that moment, he saw a boy walking out with a big woman. As expected, there's no way he'll die that easily. Eugene forced himself to hold back his smile and approached the boy. You were alive. Oh, Eugene. As if there was a very fierce battle, the boy's face was stained with blood. Fortunately, at least, the boy wasn't dressed as shamelessly as before. He didn't know where he had gotten it, but he was now wearing sportswear with a cute wolf character on it. Huhu, you kept your promise. I knew you would come back safely. All right, give me back the pendant. Okay. Here. The boy obediently returned the pendant to him. Eugene widened his eyes at the appearance of the pendant. As expected, this guy. Their eyes met. Even with such a treasure in the boy's hands, he didn't think of running away with it. He was the right person to be his first knight. Eugene hung the pendant on his neck, which had felt empty for a while. And, unknowingly, he sensed something amiss. Hmm? Eugene looked closely at the pendant around his neck. This, was the color normally this dark? He shouldn't be saying this to his family heirloom, but why does it look so cheap? Looking closely at the pendant, Eugene suddenly shouted. Hey, why are you giving me a fake? H huh? He suddenly began to get angry. I almost died while fighting because I trusted what you said. And no, T this can't be. Obviously, his mother had said that it has the function to prevent attacks in moments of crisis. His eyes shook as if there was an earthquake. 
What do you mean no? Are you saying that I'm lying right now? I I am sorry. If the boy's words are true, then it was the same as blaming something out of his control. He truly felt ashamed of himself. However, the boy generously forgave him for his mistake. Hugh, never mind. I'll put up with it this time. T thank you. Such a fact made him feel very shameful. His face turned red and he lowered his head. But, didn't you say you had something to say to me? Ah. In fact, after getting the pendant back, he wanted to create a better image of himself, but he thought that was out of the question now. Eugene hesitated for a while before straightening his posture. Then he spoke in a dignified and elegant manner. I'm Eugene Crowhart, the one who has inherited the blood of the royal family of the Crowhart Empire. And, someday, I'll return to the Crowhart Empire and take back my place. Despite Eugene's words, the boy didn't look very surprised. He continued. I think highly of you. So be my knight and help me. Once I ascend to the throne again, I promise you wealth and honor. After finishing his speech, Eugene looked at the boy. He was just frowning without saying anything. Then after a while, the boy spoke firmly. Sorry. I think that's going to be a little difficult. Ah? Eugene endured the loss of strength in his legs and forced himself to stand. Well, what kind of knight would want to devote his loyalty to a monarch like himself who had nothing? Thinking of his situation again made him depressed. I is that so? It can't be helped. In fact, I just asked out of courtesy, so don't worry too much. If he had been in the boy's shoes, he might have given the same answer. Eugene's straight shoulders drooped. At that moment, the boy spoke again. Well, I'm not saying I won't do it. I'll try to help you someday when the time comes. I'm a little weak right now. Is that so? Was it something like that? How could the boy think that he still wasn't good enough to serve the monarch? The boy was indeed worthy of being his knight. The corners of his mouth kept twitching shamelessly. Oh. And make sure to keep that promise. And this is a sign of our promise, so always carry it around. Eugene took off the magic bracelet he was wearing. It was his family treasure that he had decided would be given to his first knight someday. The boy looked here and there at the bracelet, then he soon smiled brightly and grabbed Eugene's hand. As expected. You were a good friend. Thank you, I'll use it well. Huh? Huh? And after taking the bracelet, the boy disappeared somewhere. Eugene stared blankly at the boy's back and reflected on what he had said. Friend. Somehow it didn't sound so bad. He was already starting to look forward to the day they met again. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. I checked the effect of the bracelet I had received from Eugene. Classification, accessories. Grade, B. Description, a bracelet made by the court wizard of the Crowheart Empire for a large knight. If you have this bracelet, you can do escort missions. Asterisk transforms to fit the body. Asterisk noise from movements reduced. Asterisk, assimilate into the surrounding for up to 10 minutes, January 1st, 24 hours recharge cycle. It was a bracelet specialized for infiltration. Without this, I was thinking that I wanted to have a skill related to hiding, but a perfect thing just came into my hands. As expected, the punk was a good person. So what if he's gay? It's not good to discriminate against people. I should add that punk back to my list of friends in my heart. I wore the bracelet he had given me. Items and rewards were coming in smoothly. Strangely, I was really lucky today. By the way, I didn't know this kind of challenge would pop up. Challenge, the emperor's illegitimate child, chain quest, dot. Condition, save the emperor's illegitimate child Eugene Crowhart. Period, 20 years. Reward, 1x random box, unique, x1 unknown. The moment he was talking nonsense, a message suddenly appeared in front of me. A challenge that gave as much as a unique box and an unknown reward. How high was the difficulty level that the time limit was 20 years? If I compare it to the challenge last time that was related to Elizabeth, even though it was only a 3-month time limit, didn't I almost die? In addition, this challenge was the fucking save type. Honestly, I didn't even want to look at it. Well, it's out of my league anyway, so let's think about it later. As soon as I thought that, I heard someone's very nervous voice. And Noah? Do you have a moment? Looking back, it was the nursery teacher who had escorted me today. What does she want? What? Then she asked me in a very polite tone. As since today's sponsorship became like this, I'm thinking of going back to the nursery, what about you? Ah. Come to think of it, today's sponsorship event had been ruined. What should I do now? I wanted to wash my identity this time, but since this has happened, should I just go back to House of Flowers again? We'll provide the best sponsorship for Noah soon, so why don't you hang out with your friends and wait a few weeks? Haha, ha, I'll move your room to the best place. The teacher bent down and rubbed her hands. Certainly, as the teacher had said, there was no particular way now. But it was annoying to go back. Hmm, what should I do? After standing here and thinking for a while, an old man suddenly approached me. Choi Noah, thank you so much, because of the situation earlier you had to see my ugly side, I owe you my life. I looked at the old man. 
before, when I was trying to do the challenge, he had asked me to stay and protect him. Hmm seeing that you're here, it seems you were here to find a sponsor, if you don't mind, how about becoming my son? I'm this kind of person. At the same time, he handed over his business card. He was a big shot who runs an art gallery in downtown Pyongyang. And he had a first-class citizenship card. Oh? The highest grade ordinary citizens can rise to was first class, so it was a very good offer. I spent my whole life alone without any family, but I guess this was all to meet Choi Noah. Ho ho. He doesn't have a family? Grandpa, how old are you? I'm 96 years old this year. He looks vigorous for his age, but he must be near his end. I guess it'll be okay? As soon as I was about to make my decision, again, someone began to hurry toward me. She was dressed like a medieval maid of a noble. I didn't see her at the venue earlier. It seemed to be one of the scouts who were monitoring the venue elsewhere. I saw Choi Noah's righteous performance. Why don't you come to our family? There are many children of the same age as Choi Noah. Wouldn't it be better to have siblings than to spend time alone? What the woman said to me was similar to what the old man had said. The woman who introduced herself as a nanny of a prestigious family quickly poured out words. Then the old man next to her began to speak over her. And after that, several people appeared around me and began to talk. Hello. I'm a member of Neo Pyongyang's Institute for the Gifted. Let me tell you about my family's 100 years of history and tradition. Hee <laughs> hee, what a beautiful child. Do you want to come with Mr. First class citizens, prestigious families, and public institutions all spoke over one another. And I can see Kim Tae standing from afar beyond the crowd. She had the face of a large dog abandoned by its owner. In the midst of the commotion, after much consideration, I made a decision. As expected, the old man from earlier would be good. It was unlikely that I would get a status above the first-class citizenship card anyway, and if I can hold out, I may be able to pocket all the assets. There were some other big shots too, but since I didn't have the inheritance rights, it would be more advantageous to lay the foundation here. I grabbed the old man's arm and spoke. As expected, I want to live with this grandpa. Grandpa, I'll be a good son from now on, so let's get along well together. T thank you. Let's have a wonderful life together. The old man's wrinkled eyes became red and tears welled up. Grabbing the old man, I tried to escape the crowd. At that moment, along with a powerful man a wave, a girl's voice was heard from the sky. Wait. When I raised my head, a girl who looked like a middle school student was flying this way on a broom. The people who saw it began to speak noisily. I isn't she the A-class hero kid witch? Why is Lady Fortune here of all places? I heard she was in seclusion. As Lady Fortune landed on the ground, people moved out of the way and a path was made between the crowds. She followed the path and slowly walked toward me. That, what was it? Sponsorship? Anyway, I'll participate in it too. I slowly observed the girl. She didn't really look great to me. As others have said, she was an A-class hero and she definitely felt strong, but I didn't understand why people were bending backwards like this. Finally standing in front of me, she fixed her big cone hat and spoke. I was watching you on my way here, to sum up, you're looking for a sponsor to raise you? Yes. I roughly understand your personality. So I'll be straightforward. If you come with me, you'll be able to enjoy the position and rights of a noble from now on. Ah, this girl was a noble. Only then did I understand the people's attitudes. Noble. Top privileged class that substantially dominated the world. It was nothing like the Namgung clan who ran a company. It was an incomparable real giant. She continued. And if one day I die, I'll hand over all the assets I have now to you. And then she gave me her bank account. I accepted it. I secretly looked at it, but there were too many zeros to read. While I admired it, the old man next to me bravely protested. And no, how can this be possible? Even if you're a noble, we have already decided to become a family. Don't try to deceive him with money. I told my grandpa. Grandpa, I'm sorry. Thinking it over, I think this side is better. Can you move aside so that we can talk for a moment? W what? The old man left with a look full of betrayal. Then I asked the witch in front of me. But, Nuna, what will I have to do once I'm your son? It can't be that there are no strings attached. Then the witch covered her mouth and smiled quietly. As expected, you were that kind of person. I'm liking you more and more. She summoned an old piece of paper into the air with magic. It was a magic contract. And the contract contained the part of handing over the property she had mentioned earlier, as well as other benefits. You don't really have anything to do. All you have to do is live in the same house as me for the next 10 years, and basically, I won't interfere with what you do. So, will you accept my offer? Hmm. I read the contract carefully. There was no poisonous clause. Rather, a contract that is unilaterally advantageous to me. There's really nothing to lose? Become a noble, take all the money, and on top of that, if we live together for ten years, everything will come into my hands. I don't know what this girl's intentions are, but I'm grateful. I looked at her and spoke. 
Okay, I look forward to your kind cooperation. Stepmom, read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. Huhu. <laughs> I like that blunt attitude. I look forward to your kind cooperation. Son, after signing the contract, we shook hands. Like that, I gained a second mother in my life. But, I'm not sure how long I can go with a mother this time. Chapter 24 Lady Fortune was an honorary noble, a person who was granted various privileges by the world government. Although nobles naturally weren't above the law like those found in medieval RPG games, given their status, it could be said that it was the same as standing above ordinary citizens. The decisive reason for my rise to the black grade and in becoming a wanted person worldwide in the first round was for the hunting of such nobles. They were like monsters bound together when it came to aggro, so if you touch just one, more would follow one after another and attack the player. Because of this, even violent villains don't normally commit crimes against nobles. And, now I belong to this class of privileged people. Here, take it. Lady Fortune handed me freshly prepared documents. When I looked inside, there was a family register certificate and an ID card confirming my identity as a noble. With this, you and I are now family. What do you think? Sounds good. As the son of an illegal immigrant, I can't believe I had shot up the pyramid and obtained the invincible status. This rise could be said to be the first in human history. Unless I wanted to break out of the social system like in the last round, the higher my status was, the better. At that moment, a message window popped up in front of me. Gained achievement title Honorary Noble. Tendency, none. Description, congratulations. You've succeeded in life. This was also recognized as an achievement? Come to think of it, there was an achievement for killing noble families, so the opposite was probable. Then do I become Lady Noah now? Or Fortune Noah? Either way, it sounds strange. Originally, I didn't like my last name that much, but I think it would be much better than Lady Noah. I reviewed the family register certificate again. Choi Boki's son, Choi Noah. Choi Baki? Lady Fortune's real name is Choi Baki? Looking at her face, she blushed and spoke. T that's, a fake name. God gave me the name Lady Fortune. Don't get confused. Anyway, that's what she says. With her emphasizing her name over and over again, we headed to Choi Boki's house. A quiet forest about an hour away from Pyongyang. Arriving here, she spoke. This is where you'll live from now on. Here? Where she pointed, there was a small, old cabin that was on the verge of collapsing. Was the status of a noble so insignificant? Should I have chosen the grandpa from earlier instead? Seeing me like that, she giggled and spoke. Just wait and see. She took out an old key and opened the door of the cabin. Then beyond that, I could see the appearance of an old dreary castle. She puffed out her chest and proudly spoke. Welcome to my castle. Son. It was a huge and elaborate camouflage barrier where no trace of mana could be felt. I followed her over the threshold of the cabin. Now that I'm inside, I could see that it was a structure with a clear view of the outside. It certainly seemed to be the case that you begin to show aspects of transcendence beyond human understanding starting from A-class. I wouldn't feel it very much in the past, but now that my body was nerfed, the difference was clearly felt. While I was looking at the barrier, something from the castle began to walk out with the sound of grating metal. Rattle, rattle. It was a knight wearing full plate armor that covered the whole body. The movements were awkward as if it was wearing clothes that didn't fit. Handing over her broom, she asked the knight. Was everything fine while I was gone? The knight nodded instead of answering. Somehow, the sight of it not even answering the master's question seemed very suspicious. Like so, we entered the castle under the escort of the knight. And unlike how it looked, the interior had a very modern and clean appearance. Choi Baki looked at me and spoke in a dignified tone. Don't feel awkward and relax like it's your own home. If you're bored, you can look around the castle. I'm tired and need to rest a bit, so let's talk about the details at dinner. Okay. Right, the room you'll stay in is, no, you can follow that night. After saying that, she wandered away somewhere. And then I followed the knight who silently beckoned me to follow it and we headed to a room. It was a neatly decorated room. I felt as if I had entered a luxurious hotel room. Inside the room, there was a separate toilet and bathroom, and next to it is a portrait of someone who looks somewhat unpleasant. For the first time in my life I had my very own room. It didn't feel as bad as I thought. With this as my foothold, I'll start my career as a hero here and gradually expand the scope in the future. Anyway, I gained a spatial movement skill this time, so the distance limitation wasn't a big problem. Come to think of it, can I use that skill here? Recalling the barrier I saw a moment ago, I opened my status window. Asterisk Guangcheng District. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, House of Flowers. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, Elf Garden. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, Lake Town. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang Outskirts, Witch's Castle, Asterisk New Asterisk. Fortunately, there seemed to be no problem using the skill. Everything is going smoothly. To become a hero, my plan was to take it step by step. 
I've rapidly assembled my skills and items while carrying out various challenges, and I was able to lay the foundation for my career as a hero after going through a nursery as planned. Ah, come to think of it, my useless party member who'll help me someday was training alone. It would be nice if she could power up as soon as possible, but honestly, I'm not sure when it'll be. So I guess all that remains is to slowly level up and wait. In a few months I'll be 13 years old, the age at which I can obtain a hero license. From there, I'll officially be able to hunt down villains and play as much as I want. That would also mark the end of the tutorial. My body was already starting to itch at the thought of the contents I'll be able to do in the future. Well anyway, there was an idea that has lingered in my head since I entered this place. This castle map, there must be at least one hidden treasure, right? My gamer sense was telling me. There must be something useful here somewhere. I don't have anything to do before dinner. That's perfect. I started searching the drawers in the room. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Lady Fortune, who had returned to her room, hurriedly grabbed her tarot cards. Casting a spell, the cards rose in the air before three were pulled out. Death. Devil. Fool. The same card she had seen a while ago. But this time, the arrangement was different. It's as if the, fool, card was blocking the gap between the other two cards. Destiny has changed. As long as that card was in between, she herself will be able to avoid death. It was definitely effective. She gave a sigh of relief. From the moment she opened her eyes to the mysteries of the astral world, she has never been wrong in her fortune telling. And the fortune was saying, as long as she's with the boy, there will be a path out. Thinking so, she thought it was a cheap deal to hand over her property after death. In any case, there was so much money that it was overflowing and she had no family to inherit it. The problem was easily solved. Anyway, it felt very strange. Has there ever been anything other than dolls in her castle? And not only that, even though it was someone like her, why did the boy readily accept her proposal? Although it was clearly stated in the mana contract, wasn't it still a new family? The boy was too calm. She felt it at the terrorist scene a while ago, but he had a different aspect from other children. A computer-like principle that doesn't value trivial emotions and just thinks about what is most beneficial. It was similar to playing chess against an AI. Does it mean that he had experienced a lot of things since a young age? Well, thanks to him, I got rid of a troublesome thing, but... Nevertheless, she thought the boy was the self-interest type of person, so she didn't think he'd cause any problems during this time. If he had really whined like a child or expected a parent's love from her, she might have had a headache. She didn't have the talent to take care of someone. I thought I would die while living alone for the rest of my life, but I suddenly became a mother. Even so, it was this kind of arrangement for the next ten years. Since awakening as a witch, time hasn't meant much. She'll be able to go back to her comfortable past life once she endures this short period. And she was confident that she would be able to stay in complete control of at least one such child. She had already prepared to control the child to some extent. Should I take a look at what he's doing right now? She breathed mana into a crystal ball. Then, through the eyes of the portrait hanging in a room, the child's appearance began to appear. Hmm? What is he doing? Unlike how she had thought that the boy would just sit still, he was eagerly looking around the room. He searched through the drawers, opened the door of the closet, and even looked into the space under the bed. Was he excited because it's his first time having his own room? There was an unexpectedly cute side to the child. And soon the boy left the room. Where was he going? He probably doesn't even know the structure of this place yet. He was snooping around the interior of the castle. He checked the closed doors and looked into the empty rooms. Is he playing an exploration game? For a while, she watched the actions of the boy. He gradually headed to the lower floors. Then, eventually, he entered a warehouse where she collected things that she didn't use often. There were empty oak barrels left side by side from making wine. There's not much to see there. The moment she thought about whether she should go down and guide him, he suddenly took out a sword from somewhere. Wung. Along with an eerie cry, he swung his sword recklessly at the oak barrels. And then the boy who broke all the oak barrels in the room muttered to himself. Strange. Usually, it's hidden in places like this. Then he went out of the room and checked another empty room. W what the hell is he doing? At the sudden eccentric actions of the boy, she couldn't help but stare blankly at the crystal ball. As such, he gradually headed down. And finally, he arrived at the entrance to the basement. He pulled the door. Clank, clank. Oh my god. At that moment, she felt her heart jolt as it pounded. But luckily, whether it was because of her prayers or because she had locked it well, it didn't open. Hmm? Is it a place where I need a key? Looking at the boy's reflection in the crystal ball, she breathed a sigh of relief. But right then. Crunch. The boy cut down the locked door. Then the neatly cut lock split and dropped on the floor. As expected, this place is suspicious. Ah, no. The boy puts his hand on the doorknob. The moment she saw it, she immediately teleported to the entrance of the basement. Then, looking at the boy who looked puzzled at her sudden appearance, she spoke. 
even if you can go everywhere else, you should never go in here. Why? Here, this is a cursed place. That's why I sealed it myself, so don't even look around here again. Hmm, I see. All right. The boy nodded calmly, and then wandered up the stairs again. She stood blocking the entrance for a long time until she couldn't see his back. Her back was already wet from his sudden actions. And for the first time in her life, she doubted her fortune. Is it really going to be okay living with him? Her fortune couldn't have been wrong. No, now she simply wanted to believe it. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Meanwhile, at the same time, the Hero Association's Pyongyang branch. In a spacious conference room, the voice of a young female anchor echoed. I'm at the scene of the shocking hotel terrorist attack in Lake Town. Dozens of ambulances and hero teams are on standby around the hotel, and the search for survivors is still ongoing. While the death toll in the hotel incident is estimated to be triple X, there's strong criticism against the Hero Association in this regard. Moreover, as it was revealed that on-site reports related to the terrorist attacks were received in advance, the Hero Association's complacent response is emerging again. Meanwhile, there are testimonies that among the rescued survivors, the one who solved the terrorist incident was an elementary school student, not a hero dispatched. Let's take a look at the interviews. Hyuk, if it weren't for that kid, my family wouldn't have survived. That child is a savior to our family. A savior. When the citizens are in danger, where did all of our money go it's all lip service. Something needs to change for us taxpaying citizens. The privileged rich. The privileged rich. If you're a noble, you can take away someone else's new family, Hyuk. With the testimonies from these survivors known, the Hero Association's incompetence is spreading rapidly in the internet community. If they neglect citizens who are in danger, who does the Hero Association exist for? This has been MPA News, Cho Era. The screen turned off. There was only heavy silence in the conference room. Suffocating silence. In that atmosphere, the branch manager in charge of the meeting spoke. What are we going to do now? When asked, the other attending people quietly turned their heads. Then the branch manager banged the table and shouted. Cat got your tongue? I'm asking who'll be responsible for this situation. Where were you, chief of counterterrorism? I it wasn't my fault. The case was updated as soon as I was told it was a terrorist attack. And speaking on that, the strategy to delay judgment is the issue. What? Are you done talking? Who is to blame for our performance last time when we were dispatched too early? Our members can't even eat properly in restaurants because they can't show their faces. Do you know that? Let me finish it's just a figure of speech. When did I say the strategy was the sole problem? Not all of us are responsible. The security department and the information department, which didn't find out the signs of the incident in the first place, are at fault. Why are you pulling us into your bullshit? The protectors respected by its citizens rambled and cursed indiscriminately. If someone were to post a video of this video on the internet, the public opinion of them would plunge into the abyss immediately. At that time, someone spoke. Everyone, can I have your attention for a second? A clear and pure voice that calmed the cloudy mind. Everyone's eyes gathered in one place. Standing there was a woman dressed in something resembling a nun's uniform. Saint of Samaria. A personnel dispatched directly from the headquarters of the Hero Association, and a rare A-class hero in Pyongyang. At her words, the people in the hall let go of each other's collars and sat back down. After confirming that everyone was seated, she moved in front of the screen and spoke. There's a video I want to show you. She played the video on the screen. Then, the scenery inside the hotel was reflected. It was a CCTV recording of the terrorist incident. At a lobby where the bodies of the victims are scattered, masked terrorists can be seen running across. But somehow their behaviors were suspicious. As if being chased by something, they constantly glanced behind them as they gasped for breath. Saintess, what is this? At the incomprehensible video, the branch manager asked curiously. The saintess replied with a bright smile. Watch it until the end. And in a little bit, another person appeared in the video. A naked child covered in blood. The child was chasing the terrorists with a sword in one hand. T that boy. His running speed was faster than the terrorists. The distance between them gradually narrowed. And. Quick. P please spare me. It was my fault. He brutally cut down the terrorists. Without any hesitation as if slaughtering meat. And he was smiling brightly. As soon as they saw his expression, those in the hall felt goosebumps all over their bodies. The video continued. The contents of the video that followed were brutal and unilateral massacre that even those who went through all sorts of hardships couldn't help but frown. And the video ended with the death of the terrorists who had surrendered as a group. Silence came again. Soon, however, as if he had realized something, the branch manager spoke with a smile on his face. I see. Now I understand the meaning of Saintus. So, you want us to reveal the boy's actions to the media? Then others in the hall shouted one after another. Really? Isn't that a violation of the law? No. 
If we have to consider it, isn't it a bigger problem that the general public, not even a hero, had intervened in the case in the first place? Ha ha, that's right. If we distribute the video to the media now, public opinion will be completely reversed. From then on, the conference hall began to passionately discuss what punishment to impose on the boy. While doing so, some even suggested to blame the barbarian investigator who was at the scene. As if they had forgotten everything about grabbing each other's collars a moment ago, they were united in a more friendly atmosphere than ever. The saintess, who was watching, spoke. Everyone, that's not it. You're missing the point. Hmm? What do you mean? Isn't this the best way right now? No. That's the worst plan. That's not why I showed you the video. Then do you have a better idea? I think it's better to proceed like this and not admit fault. The branch manager looked at her stubbornly. Seeing his expression, she sighed briefly and spoke. Do you know who that boy's guardian is? How would I know that? A while ago, that child entered the registrar as the adopted son of the A-class hero, Kid Witch. Kid Witch, you mean Lady Fortune? W-Y would she? It's none of our business. The important thing is that the child is now a noble. Do you get it now? Then, the conference hall seemed to have become speechless as a group, and their mouths opened and nothing came out. It was like night and day when they compared themselves to ordinary citizens, but even for them it was hard to provoke nobles. They were giants that dominated the order of earth and an absolute powerhouse in this world. To come together and attack such a privileged class, it was the same as a mantis standing in front of a carriage. In other words, they had to do their job well and not dump their problems on the landlord. W what should we do now? The branch manager desperately asked the saintess as if he was looking at his last hope. Then she gave a meaningful smile. The boy is 12 years old this year. What does that have to do with anything? In the next few months, he'll be 13 years old. Can't that boy get an official hero license? You mean, on the day he becomes a hero, wouldn't all the problems be solved if he belonged to the hero association? Everyone who was listening carefully clapped their hands and exclaimed. T that's right. That's the best option. As expected of the saintess, your wisdom is second to none. Their credibility will immediately recover if the boy gets a hero license and becomes a member of the hero association. In addition, nothing could be better for them if a hero from a noble family belonged to the hero association. It was simply killing two birds with one stone. Then suddenly, the branch manager anxiously asked. W what should we do if the boy doesn't want to join the hero association? Wait. He doesn't have to become a hero in the first place since he's now a noble. For Kid Witch and others it's more of a hobby. Don't worry about that. He definitely seems to have great talent, but, I'm confident that I can handle a rookie who runs wild with that kind of power. The saint has smiled sadistically. And when he saw the smile, the branch manager smiled and nodded. Well, I'm very aware of your skills. I shouldn't have worried about this. I have a peace of mind now knowing the saintess is coming forward herself. So, now it's better to take advantage of the opportunity and spread the boy's heroic tale. I think that would be good. If the flower grows well, all we have to do is move it to our Pyongyang branch someday and plant it. Ho ho. Ho ho, I'm looking forward to a few months later. They looked at each other and laughed. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Late at night. I opened my eyes in the dark. It should be now. I slowly got out of bed and my feet touched the cold floor. It was quiet everywhere. Like I thought, there's something underground. I was convinced when I heard Choi Baki earlier. There must be something useful hidden in this castle. Originally, even when playing games, the more NPCs didn't allow a player to enter something, the more the player needed to enter it. Wait a minute, before that. I stared at the portrait hanging next to the bathroom. Strangely, the gaze of this painting has been unpleasant since earlier. Chic. The area around the eyes was cleanly cut. Then it turned into something like a mosaic of a criminal shown on TV. Hmm, this is much better. I left the room with a refreshed mind. Anne. The skill from the newly obtained bracelet was activated. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. My body melted into the landscape and the surrounding noise disappeared. The feeling of hiding was simply the best. I covertly headed to the basement. Chapter 25. An interior surrounded by darkness greeted me once I came out of my room. Wax was slowly dripping down from the candlesticks on the walls as the flames fluttered and the shadows fluctuated. Outside the windows, the bleak sounds of wind can be heard tapping against the windows as it shook loudly each time like it was going to break. The scenery was completely different from what I saw during the day. It was like a scene from a horror game. I walked down the hallway amidst the gloomy atmosphere. There was no sound even though I was stepping on the floor, so I felt like I was a ghost. Whenever I took a step forward like that, I felt as if I was being watched from somewhere. Was I just being paranoid? It was a strange chill different from a cold. Rattle, rattle. At that moment, I felt a presence around the corner of the corridor. It was just supposed to be me and Choi Baki in this castle. 
So what the hell was she doing this late? I carefully approached step by step and looked around the corner. Then there, two cute-looking teddy bears were dusting off the decorations with a brush. poo poo singing. What's this? I didn't see them during the day. They seem to be one of Choi Boki's creations. Fortunately, they didn't notice me. I got as close to the wall as possible and passed them. There were many more dolls cleaning the castle as I went further down. Sweep, wipe, shake off. It was eerie seeing them bustling around in the dark. I found a gap and went down the stairs again. Soon after, I saw the entrance to the basement. There were no presences of the dolls like earlier. Instead, a giant teddy bear stood in front of it. It was enough to be twice my height. I see. Is that the one in the armor during the day? It was looking around with its eyes bulged out. The door to the basement was the same as I had cut it. There was no need to make a fuss. I activated my skill. Asterisk gas. As such, I passed through its body in my transparent state. Poo? It looked around for a moment, but it couldn't find me. I continued down the stairs to the basement but this time without a single speck of light. The stairs spiraled without end. The chill grew stronger and stronger the lower I went. As if someone was watching me in the dark, it felt as if a pair of eyes were sticking to my whole body. Finally, I reached the end of the stairs. I felt the walls and turned on a switch. Then an old light bulb lit up, and the view of the basement appeared. This. The basement was full of dolls. Fortunately, they weren't moving like the ones earlier. As if someone had cleaned it up in a hurry, the dolls were found on the floor packed like luggage. There was still a strange chill, but it wasn't coming from any of the teddy bears. They appeared to be really innocent toys. Choi Baki had this kind of taste. Considering her age, it could be said to be quite a childish hobby. There's probably something else besides these. I slowly looked around the basement under the dim light. Then, among the stacked teddy bears, I found a book that looked very suspicious. The book was bound in smooth leather made from an unknown animal. Was this the cause for the chills? The bloody warning on the cover caught my eyes. Anyone who reads this book will not be able to avoid the anger of the endless night. An ominous warning that chills the spine. Was it a cursed magic book? I checked my status window. However, considering that there was no item information, it didn't appear to have any special effect. Then it's not a big problem. I squatted down on a doll lying on the floor and opened the book. I'm, Lord, the ruler of the darkness, dark, who oversees the death, Sabbath, of all things. The queen of the night, the queen of night. To keep the pledge of divine blood, providence of God, I've, Lord, sealed, sacrifice, my own power. This book, Black Codex, is a record of my past, future. Erm, what is this? I'm merely reading the sentences, but why does it feel painful? Can it really be a magic book? I continued to read it. And to summarize the contents, it was as follows. The owner of this book called herself the Queen of Vampires. And she says that her power was so powerful that the balance of the world had collapsed, so she chose to seal her power and live in the darkness. Hmm. The identity of this magic book began to feel more and more suspicious. I endured the painful feeling and turned to the last page. Then my doubts turned into conviction. As such, I'm, Lord, an absolute existence, super king god, that cannot be matched. Anyone who irritates me, the old seal, sacrifice, will be released and the world will be plunged in darkness. Next to it was a picture. A middle school girl wearing a cape Dracula would use, and posing in a strange manner. It was my stepmother, Choi Baki. I quietly closed the book and put it back on the bookshelf. I didn't know she had this kind of hobby. Well, that's possible. I had wondered why she felt the need to dress up the way she did when I thought about the clothes she usually wore. Anyway, it's polite to respect other people's taste. Hmm, does that mean there's nothing here? Unlike what she had said, there seemed to be no sealed curse here. No, maybe she meant this sealed dark past? The moment I sighed like that. Suddenly, a foreign object caught the corner of my eyes. Beyond the dim light, I can see the edge of the basement. And there was a small door there that was hard to notice unless you looked closely. I approached it with a feeling of uncertainty. As I approached the door more and more, the chill from a while ago began to feel stronger. Slowly putting my hand on the door, a message appeared in front of my eyes. This. At that moment, as if someone was pulling me from behind, my body suddenly began to be sucked across the room and to the basement stairs. I grabbed the floor and tried to resist, but I quickly returned to the path I came from. And at the end, my new mother stood watching me with a cold look. Poo. Poo. I was caught and was buried by a fluffy teddy bear. And in front of me, Choi Baki approached and spoke. I'm sure I had warned you not to go down here. Overflowing energy that resembles a human face rose around her body. She was indeed A-class. The energy was so tremendous to the point where I even felt nervous breathing. But she can't hurt me. For the next decade she won't be able to escape the shackles she had put on herself, and the same goes for me. She probably hadn't expected me to do this. I don't know why she wanted to adopt me, 
but I had nothing to lose as long as my safety was guaranteed. However, in order to continue our cooperation for the foreseeable future, there was no need to sour the relationship. To show some self-reflection, I bowed my head. I'm sorry, I was so curious about the basement that I couldn't help it. Hugh, tell me. What did you see downstairs? A lot of dolls. By the way, does stepmom cherish those things? T that's. It's just a catalyst to create familiars. Don't change the subject and tell me. What else did you see down there? She briefly stuttered before exuding her power. I pretended to think for a while and spoke. Ah, come to think of it, I saw something a little suspicious. What? Um, what was it? The Queen of Night? I think it was roughly that name, but anyway, it was a very childish book. Her power disappeared in an instant and her facial muscles twitched as if they were broken. I is that so? I don't know anything about that. I can't believe such a book was in my house. I'll have to clean it up after I see it later. But I think there was a picture of stepmom in the book. You really don't remember? Anyone who irritates me. S stop. I got it. Okay, let's stop talking about this today. She shouted with a bright red face. Then, after a moment. Hugh, how did it end up like this? She sighed while kneading her temple. At the same time, I was released from the binding of the teddy bear. Then can I go up now? Okay, it's late, so hurry up and go to sleep. Yes. I obediently answered and turned my back. Then I recalled the identity of the door I saw in the basement a moment ago. I can't believe she was hiding something like this inside her house. If I'm not wrong, it was clearly a dimensional gateway. Such a thing was like an airport that connected Earth to other worlds. It was unimaginable for an individual to own a dimensional gateway. This was an incredible fact. My judgment cannot be wrong. Even if I was mistaken, the status window wouldn't have. Challenge, dimensional traveler. Condition, visit more than three dimensions other than the Earth. Period, unlimited. Reward, 1x random box, advance, 1x unknown. It's become fun. For some reason, I felt my gamer instinct wriggling. In the basement of her house, a quest to open new content was waiting. Knowing this now, I can understand why she had tried to keep me from entering the basement. Crossing dimensions without permission is a serious crime that would never be tolerated even if you're a noble. Rather, it would be right to think that nobles were at the helm in controlling the movement of Earth's people to other dimensions. I didn't like their policy in the last round, so I broke all the dimensional gateways on Earth, and as a result, even someone like me has never been to another dimension. If I had left at least one, I wouldn't have suffered from a lack of content. But the most important thing is that she was unlikely to open the dimensional gateway to me. She has no choice but to be conservative since it relates to her life. Perhaps she may try to remove me at the expense of the contract's penalty the moment I mention the dimensional gateway. Hmm. As soon as I thought about it, I recalled the fact that I knew another witch. Yes, there was finally a use for that girl. A witch who will never betray me. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Sitting in front of a monitor, Elizabeth scrolled down the screen with her chin propped up on one hand. Countless search results related to Noah were displayed on the screen. The young hero Choi Noah who stopped the terrorist attack. Who is he? The miracle of Lake Town that surprised the world. Scouting report, Choi Noah is a genius who is already above D-class. Her expression was gloomy as she looked at the screen. This is because they were all articles that she had already seen several times. So she kept scrolling down. And then suddenly, her eyes began to sparkle. Exclusive interview, shocking remark by the young hero it was the surest way. It was her first time seeing the article. And on top of that, an exclusive report? She moved the mouse cursor with a possessed look. Click. Choi Noah who was active in the recent terrorist incident. It was a big event that almost led to a terrible disaster, but thanks to the spirit of the young hero, we were able to overcome the crisis safely. Noah was humble about his actions, saying that he did something natural. Meanwhile, there are varying opinions on his excessive suppression against the villains. Pyongyang Citizen A, do I need to say anything else? It's very refreshing. Heroes these days need to learn from this. Pyongyang Citizen B, how can anyone dare say that? Don't they know how to thank their benefactor? Are you telling me all the people who were there should have died? Rescuer C, honestly, I don't know. His actions certainly deserve praise, but the scene was more devastating than any other incident I've been in charge of. Profiler D, I'm seriously concerned. His thinking is the same as those of extreme villains. According to an exclusive phone interview with this newspaper, Noah dismissed the controversy, saying, it was the surest way. What kind of person is he? Whether a new hero will be born or another villain will appear. His every move from now on will draw attention. s 2 docjanimes 2 apnewscon After reading all the articles, she trembled in her seat for a while. And in a little bit, she began sending death threats to the reporters at a stormy pace. How dare they? They don't even know how to appreciate his grace. 
By the time she sent more than 20 emails in a row, for some reason, the articles were suddenly deleted. In addition to these, articles with critical views on NOAA were pushed back or naturally lowered. It was as if someone was controlling the public opinion. However, she gave a pleased smile. What does it matter? The fake reporters were wrong in the first place. Huhu, people are finally discovering the true value of Noah. She turned off the monitor and stretched happily. Then she looked at the clock and it was 3 p.m. She didn't even eat lunch because she was surfing the internet. She suddenly looked at her face that was reflected on the monitor screen. A dirty t-shirt and clotted hair. There was no telling her apart from a beggar. When she saw it, she suddenly began to feel a sense of shame that was forgotten. What the hell am I doing? While she was pitifully wasting her time, Noah was already in the spotlight of many people. I thought it would change after that. After changing her fate with Noah's help, she felt confident that she could do anything. However, isn't she still the same incompetent person as before? She raised her knees and buried her head. Her long ears drooped down. I'm no help at all, so where did the confidence come from that time? She was naturally still trying to develop her ability by doing the homework Noah had assigned. According to Noah, she was a genius with tremendous talent. But she couldn't get the hang of it. If there had been someone teaching her, she wouldn't have wandered this much. I'm a useless person. Like that, she fell into an endless self-deprecation. Suddenly, something popped up and blinked on one side of her view. It was Noah's ability to message her. He had never contacted her before. What's going on? Her heart started pounding. But even before that thought was over, her body was already running toward the bathroom. After washing her face and hair in less than 30 seconds, she hurriedly accepted the message. Then Noah's face appeared in front of her eyes. W what's the occasion? I I was just taking a shower. Noah simply spoke. Do you want to live with me at my house? That night. She couldn't fall asleep at all. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. H hello, mother. It's a pleasure to meet you. And my name is Elizabeth. I look forward to your kind cooperation. Dressed up in neat clothes, Elizabeth lowered her head like a newly recruited soldier. Lady Fortune, who had received the greeting, looked at her with a dumbfounded look. Black, straight hair and long pointed ears. And, the red eyes that symbolized a witch. She was the same witch as herself. Her gaze naturally fell on Noah. Even in this situation, he was smiling brightly. Seeing that, she felt like her head was pounding again. This boy. Events from the past two weeks replayed in her mind. Not only did he cause a big problem on the first day he arrived, these days, he would bother her familiars or take her magic supplies. And it was all because of him that she had gotten a phone call from a fearless reporter not too long ago. I definitely made a mistake. Her peaceful daily life was being destroyed little by little since the boy arrived. She had even abandoned the idea of controlling Noah a long time ago. He was out of control. There was nothing that she wished for more than for things to stay quiet for the next ten years. But now, he's going to bring a girl home too. Lady Fortune looked at Elizabeth. The way she twisted her body in front of her was obviously like that of a new bride. Considering the lifespan of the elf race, she should be at least 30 years old. How can she set her eyes on such a young kid? This woman isn't normal either. Lady Fortune was sure. The woman in front of her, like the boy, is twisted somewhere. Although she wasn't exactly sure what the dynamic of their relationship was, she had no desire to bring such a deviant into her home. She spoke firmly. No. It's actually the first time I've had an outside guest in this castle. I won't make any more concessions. Elizabeth's ears drooped pitifully. Noah, who was watching, spoke. Stepmom, did you forget the contract? Again, again, what about the contract? Lady Fortune trembled and shouted. Now even hearing the word contract was enough to wake her up in her sleep. She thought she just wrote down what was generally used between parents and children, but the boy has been viciously harassing her based on the contract terms. If she could go back to the past, she would never have offered such a contract. It's specified in the contract. Stepmom spares no support for my education. What does that have to do with her? Nuna has decided to tutor me. Right, Nuna? H ha? Huh? Ah, uh, ah, uh, right, right. Lady Fortune rubbed her temple as she watched the situation unfold like a skit. In return, Stepmom should tutor Nuna too. I gave her my word a few days ago. I remember I definitely said I didn't like to do such things. But since the boy had asked, Lady Fortune had no reason to refuse. Of course, she's not sure if the contract would take effect even in these areas, but she didn't want to take risks as she was always focused on stability. Ha! Huh. Lady Fortune sighed for a long time. And then she pointed at Elizabeth with one finger and spoke. Even if I allow her to live here, it's a separate matter for me to teach the child. A witch's ability isn't something you just want but a talent. And I have no talent to teach those who have no potential. Then the boy smiled confidently and spoke. Stepmom should check it out herself. What if she has no potential as a witch? 
I'll give up without saying anything. I trust that you'll keep your word. Lady Fortune connected to the astral world and opened up her spirituality. Her eyes began to shine like a red star. Then she silently stared at Elizabeth. Upon receiving her gaze, Elizabeth's whole body twisted for some unknown reason. Soon, Lady Fortune opened her mouth. Interesting, right? Lady Fortune didn't want to admit it, but the boy was right this time. The potential she saw from the child called Elizabeth was terrifying. If there was a witch queen from the old legends, then perhaps she would be it. Even for her, she couldn't count how many stars Elizabeth was loved by. Where in the world did a child like this come from? Maybe, this may also be related to my death. It was clearly stated in her fortune telling. If she's with this boy, her fate will change. Then, wouldn't that include this affair? After organizing her thoughts in her mind for a while, she looked at Elizabeth and spoke. I'll show you to your room that'll you'll be staying from now on. Follow me. Yes, I understand. Mother, don't call me mother, just, call me teacher. Yes, yes, teacher. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. I looked at Elizabeth's twitching back that was chasing after Choi Baki for a while. Now, the girl will do her part in earnest. Although it may not be an abnormal speed like when she had absorbed the city-level energy under Rastus in the past, I believe that if she has talent, she'll be able to grow at a sufficiently rapid pace. In other words, the time to use the dimensional gateway will advance. Well, Elizabeth's problem was something that Choi Baki would solve on her own anyway, so I didn't have to pay much attention to it. More than that right now, it was time to pay attention to my own growth. Status window. Asterisk Guangcheng District. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, House of Flowers. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, Elf Garden. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang, Lake Town. Asterisk Neo Pyongyang Outskirts, Witch's Castle. Places that I can move to were displayed in order in front of my eyes. But anyway, the place I have to go has already been decided. Do you want to move to Guangcheng District? Anyhow, there's no better hunting ground than here. And, with my current items and abilities, I'll be able to target that guy. I took out Red Velvet Curse, wore it on my waist, and activated my skill. Move. Then, along with a bright light, the surrounding landscape quickly turned into a dirty back alley. The peculiar stale smell of Guangcheng District penetrated into my nose. I took a deep breath and then exhaled. It's a warm smell. It's only been a few months, but somehow I even felt glad. While I was immersed in such thoughts, someone shouted harshly at me from behind. Hey, the little punk in the sportswear. You over there. When I turned my head, a man with a tattoo on his head was walking toward me. From the man's chest, he took out something. It was a switchblade. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. And I, ended up laughing without realizing it. Haha, <laughs> as expected, this is my hometown. Guangcheng District, which I haven't visited in a long time, was welcoming my return home. Chapter 26. Take one more step if you want to die. The man threatened me by elaborately flicking his knife. I glanced at his appearance. Untrained body with protruding belly fat. In addition, his eyes were wavering as if he was drunk. After confirming his identity, I sighed briefly. It was just a normal miscellaneous mob. This kind of thief was one of the most common mobs in Guangcheng District. They usually respawn quickly and have the characteristic of acting in groups, but unfortunately, due to the level difference, I wouldn't get much experience even if I killed him. At that moment, someone's grumbling voice came from the entrance of the alley. Fuck. Where did that bastard suddenly disappear? Then the guy in front of me shouted and called his colleagues. Hey, everyone, come here. We hit it big. Hit it big? What nonsense are you talking about? A group of guys similar to the thief wandered into the alley. And soon, they checked my appearance. They smiled broadly and exclaimed. Or did we really hit it big this time? It's already the season these days, so kids are becoming scarce. What brings him here? Haha, <laughs> I don't know either. I just came in to pee, and he was just standing there like a rice cake. Oh, my. You screwed us over in the gambling game earlier. But you still held up your part before you went home. They talked to one another as they surrounded me. It seemed like they thought they had caught a fish. While looking at them, I had a thought. HM, they won't give much experience, but this will be okay as warm up. It was also a good opportunity. I should feed Red Velvet Curse some buffs before arriving at the hunting ground. I slowly put my hand on the handle of the sword. One of the mob who saw it frowned. Hey, but doesn't the punk have a sword in his hand? Do you think we can catch him without our weapons? I was going to make it up to you today. Then you should go home and sleep calmly. Cuckoo. The man approached me while making a ridiculous joke. The distance gradually narrowed. And the moment he finally came within my range. Swish. The heads of the gangsters all rose into the air. Then in a little bit, they collapsed on the spot and blood sprayed from their necks. I blankly stared at it. Huh? What just happened wasn't my doing. The moment I was about to pull out my sword, an unidentified attack from somewhere had quickly cut the necks of the gangsters. 
Raising my senses, I became wary of my surroundings. Then, at the entrance of the alley, a man in a black coat appeared. He was much taller than ordinary people and had a unique physique. Mysterious silver blue hair and two ears that resembled an animal rising sharply above it. Have I met this guy somewhere before? Although it was definitely my first time, he was someone who strangely caught my attention. The man approached me slowly and asked, Are you okay? Boy. A cold and dry voice. In his blunt voice, I could feel the unique relaxation that only the strong has. Given the attack that flew a moment, he was at least B-class or higher. If he had surprised me in the same way, honestly, even I wasn't confident I would be able to respond properly. Where did this guy suddenly come from? He certainly wasn't at the level to be hanging around in the back alley of a slum. Did he come out for a walk from the upper hunting ground? It won't be easy. Since I don't even know his exact method of attack. It would be too premature of me to rush head first. I simply stood still with my hand on the handle of my sword and watched his actions. After some time, the man opened his mouth. Hmm, I guess I misunderstood again. It doesn't seem like you're hurt, so I'll get going. After saying that, the man turned his back without a second thought. But I didn't let go of my hand from the handle of the sword until the image of the man completely disappeared from my line of sight. I was aiming for an opportunity to attack, but somehow I had a bad feeling, so stop that thought. With his skills, he should be playing in another hunting ground. I don't know why he was still playing in the beginner zone. Hugh, my mood was ruined right from the start. I sigh without realizing it. Looking at the sky, the sun was setting over the horizon. It took a lot more time than I had expected. From now on, I think I should ignore the small mobs. I forced myself to control my irritation before moving to my originally planned destination. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. People often think of Guangxing District as a place with no hope or joy. However, even here, there was a festival celebrated by the residents, albeit in a unique sense. The festival was called Night of the Dead. This special memorial event, which lasts for three days starting on the last day of October every year, was of great significance to the residents of this place. They believed that at this time of year the dead would wake up again and wander the world of the living. So during these three days, the war stopped, and everyone returned to the arms of their families to commemorate those who had left first. They would dress up their faces like the deceased and share red-colored foods. In this place where death was more familiar than life, a festival was just another memorial service. And at present, with all the members gathered again after a long time, Fernando and his family were preparing a memorial service for his father. Wah! I'm a ghost. Oh my, so scary. There's already a ghost in our home? Fernando's younger sister surprised their uncles with paint on her face that resembled a skull. Fernando frowned while watching the scene. At an age of slowly realizing the world, he no longer believed in ghosts or demons. Humph, what ghost? His father, the former cartel boss, died two years ago in a struggle between organizations. The uncles of the organization spoke nonsense, saying it was an honorable death, but he knew. No matter how you mince words and hold an event like this, it won't reach his dead father. Otherwise, his father would have appeared in front of them last year. Idiots. Fernando scowled at his uncles who laughed and joked while looking at each other's makeup. At that moment, his sister asked. Appa, why haven't you painted your face? Uncle said that if we don't do this, ghosts will eat you. I don't need it. No, dad is going to come today. This won't do. At the sight of such an immature sister, Fernando shouted angrily. Hey, idiot. Dad is already dead, so how is he going to come here? No, Hyuk. You're wrong. Dad is coming today. If Appa keeps lying, I'm going to tell on you. His sister ran to the organization's uncles in tears. Then they tried to reason with him. I can understand how you feel. Don't you think we don't miss him? But if he's watching us, don't you think he would want to see everyone a little more harmonious? I'm sure you understand what I mean. Now, since it's getting dark, let's get started. Fernando reluctantly painted his face and gathered in front of the table. There were red foods and skull-shaped cookies. They turned off the lights and lit the candles. The sister who saw it asked. But uncle. I can't see the ghosts now. How would I know that my dad is here? If the candles go out it means that a ghost is here. But if you do a lot of bad things, evil ghosts will come and catch you, so you have to be nice, right? Yes. I got it. Okay. Then, shall we all say something while remembering the older brother who has left us? I'll go first. When the memorial service was about to begin. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door of the house. While other members were speaking in memory of the deceased, the youngest uncle headed to the front door to open the door. Who is it? Was there an uncle who arrived late? The youngest uncle disappeared into the dark shadow. And then everyone heard the door opening. Crunch. Thud. Soon after, there was a sound as if something was rolling on the floor. Fernando clearly heard the discreet sound. W what? But the other uncles hadn't noticed. And because of the wind blowing from somewhere, the candles suddenly went out. Wah! Did the ghosts really come? 
No, not yet. We're supposed to blow out the candles at the end. Let's light it again. Someone give me a match, so I can light the candles. Pack. At that moment. Something hot covered Fernando's face. The sensation felt by his fingertips was sticky. And, he couldn't hear the voice of his uncle anymore. This. A fishy smell pricked the tip of his nose. Fernando moved his body first before judging the situation. He covered his sister's mouth who was next to him, and then squatted down on the floor. His sister struggled, but the more she did, the tighter he hugged her. At the same time, screams began to circulate in the dark. Quiet. A an enemy. Everyone, be careful. Bang. Bang. The gang members took out their handguns and fired them. Flashes of light flickered each time, but their screams disappeared one by one. And in a little bit, there was silence in the house. Soon after, someone turned on the light. Click. The brightly lit interior was full of dismembered bodies. Fernando hurriedly covered his younger sister's eyes. Did an evil ghost really come? Something invisible was now in this room. He held his breath hoping that the being would not find them. However, as soon as he took off his hand that was covering his sister's mouth, she suddenly shouted loudly. Appa, you're suffocating me, why are you doing this all of a sudden? Sh, sh, be quiet. Looking at the floor in front of him, someone's feet came down and came into view. A dark shadow appeared above his head. He looked up slowly. It was a large man with silver-blue hair in a black coat. His uncle's blood was still dripping from the man's body. W.Y. Fernando couldn't believe the current situation. Who is this person who had attacked their house? The man said with a bitter look. I'm sorry. I don't have any ill feelings towards you guys. This is just my job. W. Who are you? My name is Honger. Remember my name well and resent me even in death. After saying that, the man raised his arm. His hands began to turn thicker and thicker. A sharp claw flashed like a giant wolf's foot. Fernando closed his eyes, hugging his sister tightly. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. A dried wooden house was engulfed in flames. Honger was looking at it with an expressionless face. After some time, behind him, there was a voice of someone in awe. Why you've already finished this. When he turned his head, an old man with a short height and a face resembling a toad came into his view. He was an information dealer in Guanching District, and was someone who had commissioned this mission. The information dealer spoke in an exaggerated tone. Really? The reputation of werewolf didn't disappoint. As expected, you're incredible. At the information dealer's attitude, Honger frowned. I'm sure I warned you that I don't like that nickname. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Maybe because I'm old, my memory isn't so good these days. Ha ha. The information dealer apologized to him with no sign of being sorry. He soon changed his expression and asked Honger in a serious tone. By the way, I can assume that you've taken care of all the humans inside, right? The information dealer's thinly closed eyes shone sharply. Honger asked back in annoyance. Don't tell me you're doubting my work? Oh my, no, no. I'm not saying that, but I'm also obligated to report to the client clearly, so I'm just making sure. Hee <laughs> hee. The information dealer smiled at Honger in a servile manner. Looking at the smile, Honger sighed briefly. Tell the client not to worry because I've taken care of it thoroughly. Ha <laughs> ha, I see. That's a relief. Well, I don't have to check it out personally then. All right, now that the request is over, hand over the information as promised. Oh, of course. The information dealer said and took something out of his arms. Haha, ha, here it is. It was a really hard item to get. Honger accepted the item handed over by the information dealer. It was a camera with scratches everywhere. Some beggar picked it up from a pile of dead bodies and sold it, so it was hard to track down the buyer. So, are you saying the information is on here? That's right. Well, it would be faster if you watch it directly. Honger turned on the camera. Fortunately, it was well charged. There was a large video file that was over 20 hours long, and when the video was played, a warehouse was reflected on the screen. q -wake. S stop. Stop it. A man was screaming painfully while being tied to a chair. And there were rough-looking men surrounding him and giggling. What do you think, Hyung? It's very electrifying, isn't it? Punk. Did you think we would sit still while you sell out us brothers? Do we look easy because we called you Hyung? Huh? You dirty traitor. It was a simple torture video. Honger looked at the information dealer with a frown. What the hell kind of information is this? Oh, keep watching. You don't have to watch it until the end. Anyway, the latter part was just filmed until the camera turned off. He decided to be a little more patient and watch the video. The boring torture video continued for a while. As soon as he was about to ask the information dealer again, a new person appeared in the video. A boy wearing a long coat who looks about 12 years old. His face couldn't be seen clearly because of the shaggy hair. And the scene that followed was shocking. The boy began killing the gang members by converting his body into liquid. The camera fell to the floor, and the slaughter scene that took place afterwards was reproduced on the screen. 
I you're just as surprised as I was, right? I didn't think it would be only a kid who had destroyed the Turbak Brotherhood. He's young but doesn't show any hesitation when it comes to murder. Honger said plainly, but at that moment, the boy was seen sweeping his blood-soaked hair back. Honger's expression hardened. T this kid, hmm, do you know him? He recalled the child he had saved in the alley earlier. A child who was wary of him and had his hand on the handle of his sword. How could things be connected like this? This, don't tell me it's fate? While he was lost in thought, the information dealer next to him asked in a subtle tone. Erm, by the way, why did you come all the way here to Pyongyang? Are you chasing the culprit of this case? Yes, you can say that. Then, may I ask what's your relation to the dead Yifrit? He he. Yifrit is my. Honger couldn't answer easily. And after hesitating for a while, he struggled to spit out his words. He's my, Hyung. It was contradictory to his appearance which resembled a human rather than a beast man. Looking at his appearance, the information dealer smiled with an understanding. Oh, my. That's a surprise. This old man was tactless. I think I've touched on a complicated family history. No. It's nothing to care about. Hee hee, then I'm glad to hear that. Ah, it's already time. Well, I'll have to go now. If you need anything next time, please feel free to contact me. Sure. The information dealer magically disappeared after saying that. Left alone, Honger thought while looking at the burning flames. The boy he had run into, the fact that he was the one who had killed his brother. In addition, the Night of the Dead festival commemorating the dead, the timing was too coincidental. It was as if this was a sign from Turbak. Before this night ends, I'll kill you. A fierce wind swirled from his body. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Who, I'm finally here. The surrounding area had already turned dark when I arrived at my destination. Because the location was far away from where I had appeared, I had to waste more time than I thought. But anyway, it's a relief that it's not too late. I was in a large vacant lot, currently located on the outskirts of Guangxing District. Oh, almighty ruler. Please, please accept this memorial service dedicated to you. Please accept our offering. And there, a suspicious event was being held by dozens of men and women surrounding a huge campfire. These were my grateful friends who will be my experience today. I watched them for a while before taking off my clothes and putting them into my inventory. Perhaps because I had gone around naked for a while, I felt familiar with this appearance. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. Was the effect of the wolf underwear working? I felt a little brave and strong. All right, shall we go? I secretly permeated into the gathering of fanatics that was heating up. Chapter 27. Pumpkin hated weekdays. This is because his father would always come back drunk after work. I'm trying to feed a bastard like you, yet I'm being ignored on the job, how dare you talk back. I I am sorry. Father. Pack. However, Pumpkin liked Saturdays. This is because every Saturday, a pretty and sweet nun would come to Guangxing District for volunteer work. A warm-hearted nun who would even come to such a dangerous place. Pumpkin had a crush on her. So he was beyond thrilled when she called him out separately. He even applied his father's hair gel before going out and meeting up with her. But, what happened after that? Why does his head hurt so much? Boom, boom. The sound of drums resonated in his head. And a language that was difficult to understand came through the primitive rhythm. Ro, CKs, Cac. Pumpkin slowly opened his eyes. His head was still dizzy, but what was happening around him gradually came into view. He saw a huge fire burning in front of him. Around the fire, people without a single piece of clothing were spinning and dancing strangely. Ro CKs. CHS. Cac. Surprised, Pumpkin tried to stand up. But his body didn't move. When he looked down, he saw that his hands and feet were bound. W what's going on? How did this happen? Pumpkin looked back on his last memory. He certainly met up with the nun and had a good time. He ate the cookies she had baked for him, they chatted, and he shed tears saying it was hard to live. Then should sister relieve you of your pain? And then definitely. The nun led his hand into a gloomy alley, but he couldn't remember anything after that. Are you awake? At that moment, he heard the voice of the nun. He reflexively turned his head. Yes, yes. Where his head turned, he saw the nun standing naked. The naked body of a woman which he had never seen before. He quickly lowered his head. S sister, what the heck? Hoo hoo. There's no need to panic so much. She spoke in a sweet voice. Didn't I tell you? I said I can relieve you of your pain. T that and this. She lifted his head. He hurriedly closed his eyes. Then she spoke in a soft voice. Open your eyes. And look at it clearly. Pumpkin, feeling very nervous, opened his eyes slowly. He could see the fanatics still dancing in front of the bonfire. Prepare the offering. A little away from the flame. There stood a priest dressed in a colorful mask that native Africans would wear. At his command, a girl was dragged out. T that Nuna. An awful older girl who lived near his house. 
he recalled being caught peeping at her taking a bath in the past and being beaten for days and days. And it was the girl's mother who took the lead in dragging her out. Ah, mom, let go of me, release me, this is all for you, don't you want to see your dad again? And mom, are you crazy? Please don't do this. And no, the girl's mother pushed her through the crowd, then dozens of fanatics surrounded her and attacked her. Countless hands, like a flock of piranhas, pulled at her. In an instant, her clothes were torn apart and she was left naked. Next, she was hurled like a luggage bag next to the flame. The fanatic circled the bonfire while spinning and reciting a chant. Rosie Kays, CHS, CAC, hey, you son of bitches, do you know who my boyfriend is? Why you're all dead. The girl suddenly came to her senses and rebelled by throwing stones that were on the ground. When the priest saw it, he shouted, the devil has possessed our offering, we must kick out the devil. The fanatics surrounded the girl and struck her with a long thin rod. Ah, ah, stop, P please stop. At first, the girl shrank and blocked, but at some point she sagged on the ground like a lifeless doll. She would twitch from time to time, but there were no other movements. Her mother dragged her head and went in front of the priest. Priest Nim, please bless my daughter and revive my husband. Pero, the great ruler, will fulfill everything. Thank you, thank you. The mother bowed her head several times to express her gratitude. The priest raised his arms and shouted, Oh, almighty ruler, please accept our offering, please accept our offering. Then something walked out from behind the priest. It was a giant with bandages all over its body. When the giant appeared, a terrible rotten smell carried by the wind stabbed the tip of Pumpkin's nose. The giant picked up the shriveled girl with one hand. Rosie Kays, CHS, CAC. The sound of drumming became louder and louder as the fanatics circled the bonfire. And then Pumpkin saw it. The giant's jaw tore apart and its big deformed mouth opened. At that moment, he closed his eyes. Crack. A creepy sound, as if chewing bones and meat, penetrated his ears. His chin trembled and his crotch became wet. Crunch, crunch. The sound lasted for a long time. He tried not to imagine it. He closed his eyes and hoped that this terrible time would go by quickly. After some time passed, the priest exclaimed again. Prepare the next offering. The nun who was next to Pumpkin reminded him. Pumpkin, Pero will save you from hell. And no. He didn't want to go, so he tried to drag his feet, but the nun's thin arms didn't budge. Just like the girl before him, Pumpkin's clothes were roughly torn. Soon, he was also thrown next to the bonfire. The fanatics holding a long rod stood guard. He couldn't even rebel because he had seen what had happened to the girl earlier. The primitive sound of drumming continued as the fanatics danced strangely around the bonfire. Praise be to Pero. Rosy Kays. CHS. CAC. A sour smell stung Pumpkin's nose as the priest sprinkled powder into the air. Then the madness became even stronger. Rosy Kays. CHS. CAC. After a few more circling from the fanatics, Pumpkin will also face a terrible death. He trembled with fear. But then. He saw something white moving in the dark. It was a naked child who looked about two or three years younger than him. The boy approached here slowly without fear. And after watching the atmosphere, he sneakily joined the ranks and started to naturally circle the bonfire. Row CKs. CHS. CAC. Re-level up. Quest. God game. The boy seemed to be trying hard to imitate in his own way, but it was obviously a different movement. Even worse, the chant was subtly wrong. But people around Pumpkin didn't notice. Rather, their eyes were turned upside down as if they were more and more absorbed in the chant. The boy was following the ranks as he got closer and closer to the priest. Louder. All together. Row CKs. CHS. CAC. Hang on, what's that? At that moment, the priest had noticed the existence of the boy. The fanatic stopped moving and looked at the boy in unison. However, the boy, who didn't understand the situation, shouted enthusiastically alone. Re-level up. Quest. God game, hmm? The boy looked around with a puzzled expression. Cold eyes were drawn to him. Then there was complete silence. Only the crackling sound that came from the bonfire could be heard. He soon grasped the situation and bashfully spoke. South close. Kill him. There's an evil devil that has interfered with our ritual. The priest shouted. At the same time, dozens of fanatics began to rush at the boy. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. How did I get caught? Weird. My acting was flawlessly perfect. It seemed that there was a person among them who had the ability to detect lies. If I had known that in advance, I would have chosen a different method. My meticulous plan was ruined. But that's fine. I took red velvet curse out of my inventory. Wung. An eerie cry spread out. The first thing I did was cut off the neck of the guy running towards me. Swish. The fanatic's neck fell to the ground and rolled away. The others who saw it faltered and stopped in an instant. Then the priest who was watching from behind shouted. Everyone, don't be afraid. 
Lord Pero will give you strength. The priest uttered a spell. Then the eyes of the fanatics turned white, and light green smoke began to flow out of their mouths. Grayer. Screams that resembled a beast's rather than a human echoed. They rushed at me with movements that ignored the anatomy of the human body. Swish. The two arms extending at the same time were cut. Then the stomachs of the cut bastards began to swell up. Damn it. I quickly backed away and widened the distance. Soon after, they burst like balloons, scattering sharp debris everywhere. This was why I tried to kill the priest first. Abilities along the line of black magic and controlling people were troublesome. Depending on the number of troops prepared in advance, they were able to exert a force above their grade at any time. It tends to take a lot of effort compared to the experience gained. It was wrong of me to relax. The fanatics rushed at me again. It seems that they don't want to give me time to rest. The bastards continued to blow themselves up whenever they had the chance, and I was gradually pushed into a corner. Watching it happening, I clicked my tongue. I was going to save this for later. It was a waste to use it for small mobs who don't even give experience, but it couldn't be helped now that it's like this. One use has been deducted. Charges remaining, two-thirds. The world turned red, and everything moved slowly except me. And the obstacles of humans with no gaps now look like a torn net with holes. I lowered my body and slid between their legs. Swish. The bright red red velvet curse cut through the legs of the fanatics. I ran straight to the priest in that state. The distance was narrowed in an instant. The reddened world regained its original color, and a shocked cry burst out from the priest. S stop him. At that moment, a giant bandaged bastard standing next to the priest blocked me. Swish. I immediately cut his thick waist. The feeling was like cutting a stiff log. And then the sword slid by and I aimed for the priest's neck. However, I couldn't achieve my goal. Pack. A big hand was holding my ankle. Looking down at the ground, the guy I split in half a moment ago was grabbing me. The bandages on his face slowly slipped down. Looking through the gap, I could see the face of a beast, which was half rotten and decomposed. Hmm? This guy's face looked familiar. There was an amulet dangling from his neck. Looking at it, I felt puzzled as to why I couldn't remember where I had seen it for some reason. In the meantime, the priest shouted vigorously. Haha, it's a ghoul made by Pero himself. Starting now, this guy's real power. Swish. I chopped up the ghoul that was holding my ankle. As a bonus, I also cut the priest's neck. Ruru. The priest's head rolled to the ground. Then the ghoul's body, which was slowly regenerating, quickly decayed, giving off a rotten odor. Saying the same lines over and over, it's like all the mobs read from the same book. I kicked the priest's head. Then, the fanatics who were attacking me earlier grabbed their heads as their eyes slowly returned to normal. Cook, this is. W what have I done? The fanatics who were brainwashed became confused when they realized what they had done. I approached them. Whether it's because the priest's buff had disappeared or whatever, but I didn't sense any particular threat from them. T thank you so much for saving me. A beautiful looking woman approached me and lowered her head. It was the woman who had dragged the boy earlier. I'll never forget this grace even when I die. T thank you. Thank you for saving my life. Behind her, fanatics gathered and thanked me as a group. Excuse me, if you don't mind, can you take me to my town? The first woman asked carefully. Please, please accept this request. Hmm. She slowly approached me and begged. I watched it for a moment and fell into trouble. However, no matter how long I waited, the development I wanted didn't come true. A challenge didn't appear. I took some grenades out of my inventory and threw them at the fanatics. Boom. Along with the huge explosion, the fanatics turned into experience. Fortunately, the priest's buff has disappeared, so it was easy to remove them with a bomb. Ding. Level has risen. Gained a fragment of growth. Ah. I leveled up here. In fact, I thought I wouldn't be able to level up this time, but the experience was unexpectedly good. It seems that the ghoul who was controlled by the priest earlier was a little high level. Come to think of it, didn't the priest say the ghoul was created by Pero? The necromancer, who came from another dimension, could be said to be an event-type monster that only appears around this time. The reason why I came here at this time was also related to him. In the last round, when I was still wandering the streets of Pyongyang, I once heard a rumor. Which is that Pero has a legendary object that can further develop one's ability. I don't know if the rumor is true or false, but in fact, there was a case in which a B-class villain who visited him after hearing the rumor in the first round became an A-class villain a few years later. In short, the rumor isn't baseless. And if I'm going to grind levels, it's natural to choose a hunting ground where I can farm items as well. In the past, I was too weak to attend the event, but this time it's worth a try. Even if he's B-class, I think I'll have a pretty good chance of winning as long as I fight in an advantageous environment. To do this, I must reduce his strength by killing the priests, who can be said to be his hands and feet. There are a total of five places where the ceremonies are held every year. 
The altars, drawing a pentagon shape, were widely placed around Guangqing district, which means there are four places left. Considering the remaining time for the festival, I felt a little short on time. I should break one more place before heading back today. When I was organizing my thoughts, someone's voice was heard. E excuse me? Looking back, I saw the boy who was dragged by the woman earlier. He approached me as his whole body trembled. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about him. Nevertheless, I have no intention of killing him. As someone who was a latecomer to this game, I was naturally quite generous to newbies. Looking at newbies sometimes reminds me of myself in the past. In any case, games with only old players left and no new users would be ruined someday. I I am really sorry but, can you take me home? I I think I'll be caught by someone else like this. However, newbies who took me for a bus were always discarded. Wung, I drew red velvet curse. An eerie cry resonated and the boy fell down in surprise. I could smell the stench of urine from him. At that moment, a message appeared in front of my eyes. Challenge, guide the lamb, chain quest, dot. Condition, bring pumpkin to a safe place. Period, three days. Reward, 1x random box, intermediate. I I am sorry. Please spare me. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. I looked at the boy. And then I smiled so that he could feel at ease. Leave it to me. Hyung. If it's a newbie who shares a quest, then there was no reason to refuse. Chapter 28 At a public bathhouse that has been closed for more than 20 years and one where even the residents have forgotten about its existence, an unfamiliar guest can be seen walking in. Creek. The tight sliding door opened with difficulty and made a shrill noise. The noise reverberated in the empty interior. Then a person appeared through the open door. It was an old man of short stature with a bent back like a hunchback. Hugh. The old man took a moment to catch his breath, wiping off the sweat on his forehead. Soon after, he pulled a large vinyl bag inside before entering the bathhouse himself. Following the footprints on the dusty floor, he headed to the women's bath. The vinyl bag rattled up and down whenever it passed over a broken tile. Then, at some point, suddenly, the vinyl bag began to wriggle, and a stuffy moan leaked out. Hmph. The old man stopped walking and looked around. Coincidentally, a wooden surgical hammer came into view. He picked up the hammer and struck the vinyl bag. After repeating it several times, the vinyl bag quieted down again. Clink. The old man lifted the vinyl bag using a pulley that was installed on the ceiling at some point. As he pulled the zipper on the vinyl bag down, a woman bleeding from her head came into view. Nevertheless, there was still a thin breath coming from her mouth. After observing the woman's condition for a moment, he wheeled an iron cart from somewhere. On top of the cart, a glass tube resembling an incubator for newborn babies was placed. He carefully opened the lid. Then, along with white smoke, a cold air that seemed to freeze one's hands spread in all directions. Oh my baby. You must have been hungry, right? Grandpa will cook for you soon, so please wait a little longer. The old man looked at the incubator lovingly. At the end of his gaze was a corpse of a dog that was well preserved as if it was still alive. However, it had passed away ten years ago. Its name was Pero, and it was his only family. Ugh. At this time, the woman, who was hanging upside down, slowly opened her eyes with a light groan. The woman and the old man's eyes met. After staring vacantly at him for a moment, she widened her eyes and began to struggle hard. Humph. H.M. Hmm. You're already awake. The old man came to the hammer he used a while ago and knocked out the woman who was struggling. Then, after taking off all of her clothes, he naturally drew magical patterns over her immaculate skin as if it was something he had done countless times. Ro Pero C.K.'s CAC. A low, ghastly voice resonated. The woman's skin that was fresh in its twenties quickly began to shrivel. Her hair turned white and black liver spots bloomed across her face. After some time, she turned into a completely dried-up mummy. And contrary to her, the fur on Pero had a more vivid glow than before. I'm so proud of you for enduring it so bravely, you'll be able to play with Grandpa again soon, so hang in there a little more, Pero. The old man stroked Pero with a sad look. His name was Jang Wick. He was a four-circle-level necromancer who stole a treasure and fled to Earth a long time ago. And his current goal was to revive his only family, Pero, by turning it into a living dead and have its heart beat again. He had put in a lot of effort over the last ten years with only this goal in mind. Every year, during this period when the Ean energy was the strongest, he has been using the stolen treasure to revitalize the corpse of Pero little by little so it wouldn't decay. He looked at the ominous-looking mask emitting Ean energy next to the incubator. The cold air of the dead was flowing out from it. There's not much time left. He recalled the ongoing rituals. He could already feel his heart beating faster, thinking of the day he'll be able to hear Pero's voice once again. But at that moment, Cook, Wick sat down, grabbing his chest. The sudden pain made his eyes spin. W what's this? He soon realized that the ghoul, who had been connected to him, had died. 
and the place where the ghoul was currently located was none other than the place where one of the rituals was taking place. Wick hurriedly checked the mask next to the incubator. The Ean energy he felt from it was noticeably reduced. Pero, who was affected by the Ean energy, also had its fur discolored. In addition, it gave off a slight but murky smell as if it was decaying. And no, the pure Ean energy that was absorbed during this period was the most important force in making a living dead. He wasn't sure what the problem was, but if this continues, Pero may decay. His face distorted horribly. The hell, who is it? But now, rather than anger, he was thinking of a way to solve this problem. He bit his lip. Soon, he made a decision. Anyway, there won't be a promise of next year at this rate. Originally, in order to avoid the trackers chasing the stolen treasure, he has been saving this method as a last resort. But now he wasn't in a position to hide it. He grabbed the mask and exerted force in his hands. Then, the forces he had arranged throughout Guangxing District began to emerge. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. I took the sportswear out of my inventory, put them on, and headed to Pumpkin's house. Perhaps because it'll be winter soon, the weather was quite cold. H hero, if you don't mind, can you lend me some clothes? Even just a shirt. Of course, I was the only one wearing clothes. Thugs appeared several times on the way, but each time, I was able to finish it without difficulty. After walking for about two hours, we were finally able to arrive in front of Pumpkin's house. T there's my house. The boy smiled brightly with an expression of someone who had survived a tough ordeal. I smiled along with him and spoke. Then hurry inside. Hyung. To break another altar today, I had to finish this challenge as soon as possible. But for some reason, the boy didn't go straight home. Instead, he stayed next to me and bowed his head. Um, thank you so much. Really, I don't know how to pay back this favor, if Hiro hadn't saved me, I would have. The boy suddenly started crying with snot running down his face. Then, as if he had come to his senses, he approached me. I if you don't mind, please come inside for some tea. No, that's not necessary, so hurry up and go home. You did such a good deed, but you don't want anything in return, as expected, you're truly. The boy began to drag his words with tears in his eyes again. He kept talking nonsense without proceeding. I frowned and pushed the boy right towards the fence. But even until the end, he looked back and bowed his head. T thank you. Really, I'll pay back this favor one day. And if you come here next time. Only after the boy repeated the same words endlessly did he open the door and entered his house. Why are side quests cutscenes so long? I watched the boy from behind until the end and waited for the challenge to update. After some time. No matter how long I waited, the challenge didn't update. What's going on? Was there a part that I had missed? I opened my status window to check the condition of the task again. Challenge, guide the lamb, chain quest, dot. Condition, bring pumpkin to a safe place. Period, three days. Reward, 1x random box, medium. Bring pumpkin to a safe place. I thought it would definitely be his house. Was this not the place for the quest? As soon as I thought that, a frightened scream came from inside the house. Arg! It looks like something has happened. My reward was in danger. I ran to the boy's house faster than I've ever ran before. When I kicked the door like I was breaking it down, a man with a ruddy face holding a kitchen knife caught my eyes. I'm sure I told you to obey the curfew. Are you making fun of me too? Just going around with the money I worked so hard to earn. D dad, don't do this. Actually, what happened was. You rude punk. Talking back to your father who is as high as the heavens? This won't do. I'm going to kill you today if it's the last thing I do. Stand there. The man threatened harshly with a kitchen knife and approached the boy. I've seen enough to understand the situation. I think I just need to kill him. I approached the father and son pair who were having an altercation. Then the boy looked at me in surprise. H hero. Who are you? I see. I thought Pumpkin was acting weird these days, so it was you who gave him false hope. You son of a bitch. The man walked towards me while waving his knife as if to threaten me. He reeks of alcohol. Wung. I pulled out my sword. An eerie cry resonated in the house. H huh? Then the man, surprised to see my sword, stopped in his tracks and faltered. As soon as I tried to cut off his neck. S stop. Hero. Huh? At the sound of the quest object shouting, I changed my trajectory at the last second and hit the man's head with my grip. Boom. But my body was three. The man who was attacked by me fainted on the spot with his head bent. In fact, I could have stopped if I wanted to, but I just turned it around because it was cumbersome. Uh, uh. The boy looked at his father's figure with a bewildered expression, then he hurriedly ran to him. And after confirming that he was breathing safely, the boy looked back at me with a sigh of relief. Thank you so much for saving me once again, Hyuk, not once, but twice like this. Actually, my father wasn't like this before, but after my mother left the house. There were signs of the boy talking nonsense again. He was unnecessarily talkative. Cutting off the boy's words, I asked. 
By any chance, is there a safe place around here, Hyung? What? A safe place? Hmm. The boy frowned as if he was facing a very difficult math problem. Everything about this boy was frustrating. By the time I ran out of patience, all of a sudden, the boy made an ah sound and spoke. A short walk from here, there's a person who takes care of children in difficult family circumstances. Are you sure that's the place? In a place such as Guangcheng District, there was someone who took care of children? I looked at him suspiciously. I didn't want to waste my time if it can be helped. Then the boy nodded with a very trustworthy look. Yes, yes. He's a trustworthy person. Everyone calls him Harry because he has a full beard on his face, and he runs a butcher shop in the next neighborhood. Harry? A familiar name came out. Somehow, I felt like I knew who he was talking about. Well, if it's that old man, then the condition should be right. I sighed briefly and told the boy, then I'll take Hyung there for now, so let's go. I can't stay here forever. Oh, oh, thank you, hero. How can I repay this grace? As soon as my head was about to hurt again, suddenly, the man who was lying on the floor staggered to his feet. Thinking about it, I put my hand on the handle of my sword, ready to kill. Since the condition of the task doesn't say I couldn't forcefully take the boy away, I can just throw him to Mr. Harry's house somehow. The father of the boy who woke up looked this way while grabbing his head. And he, like a child, blew air into his cheeks and spoke. Why do only adults get to play? F father? The man suddenly hung on Pumpkin's arm with a childish tone, as if he had regressed to an infant. I want to play too. Play. Play. H huh? What's wrong, dad? Huh? Play. Play. Or I won't eat. A middle-aged man with protruding belly fat was whining. I had a thought while looking at the disastrous scene. As expected, I should have hit his neck earlier. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Ko Chang Su, Harry, has been cut off from the rest of the world for some time and has been like an abandoned man. Not only did he risk his life to avenge his son and only for it to be taken away by an unidentified villain, but he also couldn't protect the child who resembled his son. It's all because I was foolish. After his son's death, he wasted away each day, drinking alcohol that he had never touched before. And then, one day, he found a little girl, crying in front of his butcher shop. Although he didn't want to care about the world anymore, with the cry that lasted all night, he eventually took action and opened the door. Why are you crying here? It's noisy. Why don't you go home right now? Hyuk, Hyuk. And my mom. The girl hugged Ko chang -soo's leg while shedding tears mournfully. Huh? Hey, what are you doing? Wah! Thus, Ko chang -soo found the meaning of life again. Since then, he has lived with the mission of helping children in need. He thought that was the only way to atone for the two children he couldn't protect. My body is still intact, so what have I been doing so far? There was still something he could do. He used all the money he had saved for his revenge and bought a building next to the butcher shop for the children to stay in. The children, who were alienated in Guangcheng district, heard the rumor one by one and began to knock on his door. As a result, before he knew it, more than ten children were living with him. I, I guess I've survived until now for these children. Strangely enough, he thought he had done this for the children, but it was them who ended up saving him. He felt each day was worth living again. To him, these children were like irreplaceable precious treasures. But, now in front of his house, those who seek such treasures have come. Grawar. Cook. Keek. Quiak. Dozens of people flocked in front of his butcher shop. No, it wasn't people. Their eyes were white, and their joints were bent in irreversible directions. They banged on his home. Each time it happened, the children's cries would grow louder. Wah! Ajiasi, I'm scared. These monsters banged on the door whether their bodies broke or not. The door's hinge continued to shake. Creak. It's okay, don't you trust mister? This old man won't let a single one of those bastards inside. He took out a handgun and held it in his hands to reassure the children. But inside, he had lost all hope. It won't hold out much longer at this rate, at least the children. The moment he had such thoughts. Creak. Finally, the flimsy hinge fell off. Groar. Curake. Through the gap, the monsters tried to push each other's bodies in. He intuitively aimed his pistol. Bang. Bang. He fired his pistol at the monsters trying to climb the stairs. Sparks flew in the dark interior. Fortunately, it was effective and the monsters in front of him fell. But more continued to flood in, and as a result. Click. Click. All the bullets eventually ran out. His face became colored with despair. Ah. Then these kids. He prayed to God. Don't take these kids again. Otherwise, he'll really curse God even in death. What did these children do wrong? Fuck. Isn't this too much? His voice, full of resentment, spread through the night air. At that moment, Wang, an eerie cry came from somewhere. And, swish, a smooth cut whistled but no wind could be felt. At the same time, something fell to the floor. Then the sound immediately resumed without stopping. Swish, swish, 
After some time, all the voices from the monsters surrounding the area disappeared. What the hell happened? He slowly went down the stairs in a very nervous state. One step after another. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. And when he finally came out of the building, a voice he had longed to hear came into his ears. It's been a while, hasn't it, Ajiasi? He slowly looked around. Then, a child with a big smile who he couldn't protect a long time ago came into view. Chapter 29. Ko Chongsu looked around with a puzzled look. Everywhere he saw were dismembered bodies of the monsters. The blood from the corpses drenched the asphalt, and the sour smell of rot stung his nose. It's been a while, hasn't it, Ajiasi? And in the middle of the terrible scene, stood a child that was thought to be dead. Blood dripped from the sword the boy was holding in his hand. H. How? Ko Chongsu could only stare at Noah with a stiff mouth. Compared to when the monsters first appeared earlier, he was even more confused now. How the hell was this child still alive? No, more than that, did he kill all these monsters? He slowly approached Noah with a stiff expression. Noah, hmm? What's the matter? Shaking off the blood on the sword, Noah looked at Ko Chongsu. For a moment, Ko Chongsu felt frightened by the boy's strangely calm appearance. Ko Chongsu's body instinctively stiffened due to what he had experienced today. There was a strange feeling that if he got closer, his body would be cut into pieces. However, after hesitating for a moment, he took one more step and stood facing the boy like the past. Well, that's. There were countless words that came to mind, but Ko Chongsu found it difficult to put it into words. So, with the first thought that came to mind, he asked the boy what he wanted to ask the most. These days, are you eating well? Are you hurt anywhere? After thinking for a long time, what he wanted to say was just a normal greeting. Then the boy replied with a light smile. Yes, I'm doing well in my own way. Is that right? That's a relief haha. Ko Chongsu felt relieved when he saw the boy smiling. Whatever it was, if he was doing well and was healthy, then that was enough. Like so, his tension eased and he began to organize what he wanted to ask. Ah, right. When I went to your home before, it was all burned down. What happened? Did you move to another neighborhood? No. Then, it's pretty cold these days, are you homeless? Where are you staying? You're not working in a weird place, are you? If that's the case, Mr. Ko Chongsu looked at Noah with a worried look and made a fuss. His imagination ran wild. With the destruction of the Turbak Brotherhood, did their problem follow the boys home? Or maybe he was suffering in a place where people were using children as slaves. If that was the case, he thought it wouldn't hurt to have him come live with the other children who were currently living in his home. Then, I'll be able to fulfill my promise and show this child happiness. With an apathetic expression, Noah replied. I'm doing well at my stepmother's house these days. Stepmother. Did that scumbag get remarried? If so, such a woman wouldn't be a proper human being either. What kind of person is your stepmother? Is she nice to you? She's not starving you or anything? Until now, Ko Chongsu had ignored it because it was someone else's family, but he had resolved to not live cowardly anymore. If he's being abused there, this time, I'll definitely. Ko Chongsu's eyes turned cold. Noah looked at Ko Chongsu for a moment before taking something out in front of him. This is my stepmother. Okay, let me see. What the boy showed was an ID card indicating that he was a citizen of Pyongyang. And on it. And noble? Yes. My stepmother is an honorary noble. Her name is Choi Ba Ki, no, it's Lady Fortune. He checked the ID again several times with a dumbfounded look. The equivalent of being invincible, was it so easy to obtain? Let alone a noble, becoming a citizen of Pyongyang was surprising enough. It was such an unrealistic story. However, it didn't seem fake no matter how long he looked at it. With his years of experience as a police officer, he was sure of it. W what's going on? H how on earth did you? She said she needed me and asked me to live with her. What? What about your father? D did he remarry this new stepmother? No. He died a couple of months ago? At that moment, a thought flashed in Ko Chongsu's head. The Turbak Brotherhood that suddenly perished a few months ago, and an absolute powerhouse who appeared there. If there was a noble behind the incident. Oh, that's what happened. All the pieces were coming together. Noah's overwhelming ability that doesn't fit his age. Having recognized his outstanding talent, Lady Fortune adopted the boy. She must have cleaned up the Turbak Brotherhood and the boy's father, who could someday be a stain to his status as a noble. It was indeed something a noble was capable of doing. They ended up dying because of this kid, in a way, Noah has taken revenge for me. With that thought, although he couldn't arrest them directly, he felt lighter to some extent. Ko Chongsu opened his mouth and laughed at the top of his lungs. Ha ha ha. I knew it. I've always thought you weren't ordinary since you were young. Congratulations. Thank you. The boy replied with a smile. An untainted expression without wrinkles. It seemed that the noble was treating him well. In the past, he always had a gloomy atmosphere as if he's going to die at any moment. 
To get him to smile, how much work did his stepmother put in? For some reason, Ko chang was overcome with emotions when he saw how the boy had changed. Perhaps because he was older, but he seems to have cried a lot recently. He secretly wiped the corner of his eye. And at that moment, Noah spoke. By the way, Ajiasi, what are all the monsters over there? Ah, that's. Ko chang explained the situation he had just experienced with a gloomy look. On the way back with the children, he suddenly witnessed a clump of smoke coming up from a local well. Because of an ominous feeling, he immediately evacuated the children, but unfortunately, the other residents around him inhaled the smoke. And what happened afterwards was a nightmare. The residents exposed to the smoke screamed and rolled on the ground, and at some point they turned into monsters and began attacking people. So we came home right away, locked the door, and hid. Somehow, these guys followed us all the way here. Hmm. Noah's expression darkened at Ko chang -soo's explanation. He spoke loudly to reassure him. Well, don't worry too much. I'll protect you with my life. Then Noah spoke. Hmm, Ajiasi? From what I saw earlier, I think you're weaker than me. H huh? He was taken aback by the sudden remark. Then he slowly looked around. Once again, the bodies of the monsters came into view. It was all taken care of by Noah. Do you even have a superpower? T that, normally I can handle a spirit a little bit. Where is it? Blackie is sulking at the moment. Blackie? It's the name of the spirit of darkness I have. Ko chang -soo blushed and said vaguely. It was the spirit that was raised by his son who had left this world first. For his son's revenge, it signed a contract with him, who has a little affinity with spirits. Eventually, however, when his revenge failed, it hid itself somewhere and hasn't answered since. Since it wasn't my ability from the start, if I think about it, I can't blame it. The more he thought about it, he realized that the only thing he had done was put on air and tell the children to leave it up to the adults, but his power was even more insignificant than the small child in front of him. He was of no help a while ago when the other children were in danger. His shoulders, which had always stood tall, drooped down. At that time, Noah spoke. When you said Blackie, do you mean this guy? When he looked up, he saw the missing spirit floating in front of his eyes. Why you came back? Blackie! Ko chang -soo reached out to welcome it. However, as if avoiding his touch, the spirit flew behind Noah. It was also rubbing its body here and there as if to act playful. Be Blackie? What's going on here? Why is the spirit known for being picky so close to a person who isn't even its contractor? Not me, go to that Ajiasi. The spirit hesitated for a while before flying to Ko chang -soo. Seeing the spirit swaying its body, it didn't seem very happy, but it didn't resist Noah's command. H how can this be? This buddy is a good listener. Noah smiled brightly at Ko chang -soo. At such a sight, Ko chang -soo recalled his son who could control spirits in the past. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. I watched Harry as he struggled to appease the spirit. Anyway, so it was this kind of skill. The A-grade special skill. It seemed the power of the elves gained from this skill wasn't just the ability to listen to the voices of plants. The spirit of darkness obeys me even though we haven't signed a contract. I'm not sure what the limit to this is, so after this is over, I need to find out more about spirits. In the last round, spirits only avoided me whenever I encountered them. It wasn't that bad of a feeling. In any case, how should I deal with this? I checked the message that came to mind a while ago after I killed all the monsters. Condition for the challenge, guide the lamb, chain quest, has been met. Challenge has been updated. Challenge, guide the lamb. Condition, protect the children until, night of the dead is over. Period, 3 days. Reward, 1x random box, medium. Guard the target for a fixed time, it was a typical escort mission in RPG games. Usually, in the case of escort quests in games, positions are divided into attackers and defenders. If that's the case with this challenge, then the one who plays the role of attackers are these monsters here. According to Harry, it seems like they're appearing simultaneously in Guangcheng District, so for this challenge, the task seemed to be to stop these monsters. Who, I don't really like such tasks. Frankly, I never thought the necromancer would move this fast. I've only interfered with one of the rituals, yet I can't believe he's already making such a big move. Thanks to this, the situation has become very awkward. If I drop out of here now, the incompetent Harry and children will die in all likelihood. However, on the contrary, giving up the necromancer and guarding this place didn't guarantee that a good item would come out of the reward. What should I do? It's been a while, but I felt as if a headache was coming. I sighed briefly. And then, the children, who had been locked up in Harry's house, began to come down the stairs one by one. Everyone was younger or the same age as me. There were twelve when I counted the number of children. The children opened their eyes wide and looked around. Some were disgusted by the terrible tragedy, while others were curiously poking the bodies with their toes. Hey, you punks! Don't look at things like this, hurry back up! When Harry roared, the children rushed back up the stairs. 
then, they peeped out their heads over the window and looked this way. This was driving me crazy. I can't believe I have to be tied up here because of these guys. Should I just give up on this challenge and go get the necromancer? That side has a definite higher reward. That might be the better choice. As soon as I thought that, a voice came from behind my back. You um, hmm? Looking back, I saw Pumpkin standing with an awkward look. He hesitated for a moment and spoke. By any chance, is there anything I can do to help Hero? Help? I looked at him for a moment. Then I suddenly thought of an idea. Ah, why didn't I think of that? I immediately took a bag of candy out of my inventory. It was a very luxurious candy selected by the sweets-loving Choi Bak Hee. I held the bag in my hand and shook it. Is there anyone here who wants candy? Then the children, who were watching the situation from afar, came out one by one. I handed out the candy to them one by one. Those who received the candy glanced toward Harry. You can eat it because Noah is giving it to you. When permission was granted, the children bit the candy in their mouths. Their whole body trembled as if they had experienced a new world. The children, who had finished the candy in an instant, stared at me again. Looking at the children, I spoke. If you help me with something, I can give you more candy. Then they gathered like puppies standing in front of a treat. I took a few guns out of my inventory and handed it over to them. Hmm, you're tall, so this suits you. Since you have small hands. I picked out guns that best suited each of them. W what are you doing? Harry shouted from behind. But I ignored it. All I have to do is guard them for three days anyway. If so, I'll take these guys to catch the necromancer. At that moment, Pumpkin's father, who was standing next to him, spoke. Give me two. Me too. I want one too. He whined like a child again and made a fuss. It was likely that he would accidentally shoot my troop if I gave him a gun. But it seems like he'll keep pestering me if I ignore him. Maybe I should have killed him. As soon as I thought that, I recalled a weapon that fits him perfectly. I pulled a weapon out of my inventory. Then he screamed again. Don't give me that. Why is mine the only one that isn't cool? No. This is the strongest one. Really? Yes. This is the strongest. Much stronger than all the other children combined. Then I want it. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. I handed the item to Pumpkin's father. Then he excitedly wore the bomb vest. Haha, <laughs> this may end more easily than I thought. As expected, against bastards who push with numbers, the answer was to push with your own numbers. Chapter 30 Hunger followed after the traces left behind by Noah. Without fail, bodies were found scattered along the path that he passed, and because of this, it wasn't difficult at all to find where to look. As expected, he's not an ordinary guy. He had examined the wounds left on the corpses. Every corpse seemed to have been cut neatly by one attack. Perhaps these people didn't even notice their death as their neck fell to the ground. It's terribly clean. It wasn't murder because of a grudge. If it had been, there would have been more traces left on the bodies. However, it was ambiguous to say that the boy was simply a murderer who enjoyed murder. If he was that kind of human, he would have chosen a different method to savor the kills a little more. I see, we're the same. Looking at the traces left by the boy, he felt a strange sense of kinship. A business-like slaughtering. The boy simply killed people by quick and efficient means. Perhaps he was the kind of human who kills people at the request of someone, just like himself. He followed the traces which led him to the outskirts of Guangcheng District. A vacant lot where a big flame was burning. A battle must have taken place here, as corpses can be seen scattered everywhere. He carefully examined the traces and tried to measure the boy's strength. What was most prevalent here were bodies that were shattered into pieces as if it had been bombed. This, must have come from an armory. It seems that he'll have to be mindful of these firearms when dealing with the boy. As he turned his head, he saw a decapitated head wearing a strange-looking mask rolling on one side of the vacant lot. And next to it, there was a beast man covered in bandages. The body was already very decayed, so it was difficult to recognize what it originally looked like. The moment he saw it, he stood up and frowned. Damn, is it the work of a necromancer? The Turbak tribe traditionally has a belief in resurrection. It was believed that the great Turbak would give new life to the brave warriors on the promised day. For this reason, from the time they lived in their hometowns, they have hated and feared necromancers who played tricks on corpses. On a closer look, he noticed a familiar talisman dangling from the neck of the undead. It was the same object he saw in the video of the boy a while ago. This beast man seemed to have been killed twice by the boy. What a terrible fate. Perhaps this beast man was of mixed blood like himself, but for some reason, he felt a sense of familiarity with it. In any case, there were tombstones at the Turbak Brotherhood's grave site, but in fact, there was a possibility that there was nobody under it. Although he didn't have many good memories of the Turbak tribe. Nevertheless, it was hard to bear the fact that warriors who have taken rest were being played with by a necromancer. Now there's one more reason to chase the boy. He didn't know why, but the boy was also aiming for the necromancer. 
If so, as long as he follows the boy's traces, he'll eventually meet the necromancer at some point. I'll take care of it all at once. After taking a moment to express his condolences for the dead here, he began to follow the traces left by the boy again. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. After giving each child a gun, I also wanted to show them how to use it. But at that moment, Harry who was watching from the side suddenly began to interrupt me. No, what are you doing giving guns to kids? Hurry and get rid of these dangerous things. In the meantime, he began to take the guns from the children. I frowned and told him. Then do you have another way, Ajiasi? I'm sure there are only monsters around here. They need to be able to protect themselves. That, I can do it instead. Ajiasi, you're weak. In any case, no, it's better to hide somewhere quietly and hold out. I don't want them shooting people with guns. From Harry's firm expression, it seemed that there would be no compromise. This won't do. My plan will be disrupted. I'll have to clean up this obstacle first before I can use these children. After staring blankly at Harry, I called the floating spirit that was next to him. Blackie. It flew straight to me like an obedient puppy. The shadow swayed as if it was wagging its tails. Looking at the spirit, I asked. Please stop that Ajiasi over there. W what? Noah, what are you saying? Harry looked at me in surprise. Then Blackie slowly turned toward him. Although I don't know how to distinguish a spirit's facial expressions, somehow I felt that Blackie was smiling. Stepping back little by little from Blackie, Harry spoke. H huh? Blackie, you rascal. What are you trying to do right now? No. Get off me. Remember you signed a contract with Ko Chang Su, Cook. I don't know what the spirit did, but Harry lost consciousness on the spot. Next, Harry was tied by a rope made of shadow and was hung in the air like a dried fish. After completing the work, Blackie floated in front of my eyes as if hoping for praise. This ability was a lot more useful than I had thought. I'm not sure about the exact mechanism, but I seem to have command priority over contractors with low spirit affinity. I should ask Choi Baki about spirits later when I get home. Now that the obstacle is gone, I'm going to have to teach these children how to shoot. Looking at the children, they were all standing with a lost look on their faces. Watching them, I realized something else. As expected, newbies need to be tempted with rewards. I took out a bag of candy and shook it in front of their eyes. The eyes of those who tasted this candy a moment ago sparkled and shone. You want to eat this, don't you? Then their heads nodded at a fierce speed. Looking at them, I spoke. I'll give you guys a chance. From now on, I'm only going to give this candy to the person who shoots the corpse over there with a gun. But the children just looked at each other. No one was willing to step up. When I thought the silence would continue, someone hidden among the children awkwardly raised one of their hands. Can I try? Then the children opened the way and a little girl walked out. Black hair and bright yellow eyes. And ears that resembled a cat rising above. It was a girl who seemed to be of mixed race between a beast man and a human. Okay, give it a try. All you have to do is hit the head over there. Erm, so I just have to do that. I handed over the gun without much expectation. The girl pulled the trigger with a curious look. And, bang, blood bursts out of the corpse that was scattered on the ground. Wow, I did it. The girl ran to me with joy. I didn't expect her to get it right away. It was unbelievable that she had done it without a scope. She was more talented than I thought. I handed over the candy as promised. She put the candy right in her mouth and rolled it on her tongue. Her tail lightly shook. It seems she's really happy. It was a much more positive result than I had expected. What do you think? Easy, right? Hee <laughs> hee, I want to do it again because it's fun. I feel like I'm playing a game at home. How long has it been since I met a proper human being like this? Her words were so touching that I couldn't help but smile. What's your name? It's Pi. Okay, Pi. From now on, you're the captain. Do you want chocolate instead of candy? It's delicious. I love it. I handed over the chocolate to this commendable newbie. Then Pumpkin, who was watching the scene, spoke with a determined look. Hero, I want to try too. Then he immediately took a gun and after three shots was able to hit the head. This punk also had good skills. Then Hyung, you'll be the commander. Thank you. I'll do my best. I thought he would be a useless bum, so this was surprising. After receiving candy from me, he went back to his spot with an unnecessary bravado. But since then, no other guys have stepped up. Everyone was just reading the situation, and from the way their shoulders shrunk, I didn't think they had any intention of moving. Hmm, this is going to be difficult. The plan wasn't going as I expected. To get candy and shoot a gun, wasn't it twice as enticing? It was something you can do with just your fingers, so I don't know why they were refusing such an easy job. I couldn't understand it at all, but from the look on their faces, I thought no progress would be made no matter how long I waited. Should I just give up on the reward for this challenge? As soon as I thought that, suddenly, Pumpkin, who was standing between the children, shouted. How long are you going to live like that? When he said that, the children who had their heads lowered all raised their heads at once. Hmm? 
I'm not sure what Pumpkin was trying to do, but I decided to observe him for now. Anyway, I've already cleaned up this place, so it was enough to just give up the challenge and leave. Pumpkin shouted with an angry look. Do you guys really have no conscience? Right now, Hero, Noanim is working so hard to protect us, but why don't you have the courage? Be but, the sound of gunshots is scary. We should leave this to the adults. Who saved you when you were about to die? Did an adult save you? T that's. Adults can't be trusted. You guys know it well. Suddenly, Pumpkin began shedding tears. The children's expressions became agitated when they saw him crying. I almost died today to the person I trusted the most in the world. If it weren't for him over there, I wouldn't be alive now. But, I managed to get home safely after that, and guess what? Pumpkin pointed to his father who was standing next to him and spoke. My father over there tried to kill me again, just because I broke the curfew. At that time, if Noah hadn't saved me, I wouldn't be standing here now. Pointing to one of the children, Pumpkin angrily asked. You there, why are you living here? I I, my mom hits me when she sees me. And you, tall girl over there. I I, every night my uncle, Hyuk. After that, Pumpkin continued to point out each child and asked why they were living here. And every time he did that, the children would burst into tears. The whole place turned into a sea of tears. Wah! Don't cry, brothers and sisters. Pumpkin's father, who was standing next to him, cried along with the children without knowing what was happening. In this situation, Pumpkin shouted with confidence. We have to protect our own bodies. Adults won't help us. Then the children, who had been crying so far, shouted with anger. Right. I'll protect myself. I'm going to have my revenge at all cost. Wah! The children scrambled to pick up their guns. I watched the series of events blankly. What's this? In fact, I was determined to give up on the challenge. I can't believe the punk had turned the children's heart around with just a few words. Coincidentally, I made eye contact with Pumpkin. As if he had never cried, he looked at me as if hoping for praise. Did he purposely create this situation for me? Perhaps because of, he seemed to have done what I didn't even ask him to do. In fact, I thought he was just a useless bum, so for him to have this kind of talent was surprising. Well, anyway, it's a good thing for me. I stood in front of the children with guns. Then the children clumsily formed a line. This is fun. Looking at it, I felt as if I was leading a unit in an FPS battle. Reciting a line I had heard from a game in the past, I told the children. From now on, everyone must answer with a yeah, in unison. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, then, let's go save this town on behalf of the useless adults. Yeah. Unlike a while ago, their eyes were full of malice. If they're in this state, they may be much more helpful than I thought. Like so, I led them as the war against the necromancer began. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Ko chong -su felt dizzy as if he had drunk all night. What time was it now? Kill, kill. The faint voices of children were heard from somewhere. Were they playing a game? He grabbed his throbbing head and opened his eyes. Ugh. Unknowingly, a painful groan came out. What the hell happened? He tried to get up, but his body didn't move. What's going on? Looking down, he saw a rope made of shadow wrapped around his body. He was currently floating in the air with his body tied up. Upon confirming his situation, the images before he lost consciousness began to replay in his mind one by one. T the children. He widened his eyes and shouted. What caught his eyes was the bodies of monsters all over the place. A pool of blood was flowing wherever his eyes landed. To the point where the word Night of the Dead fits well. Uh, uh, W what's all this? Who in the world killed all of these monsters? Was Noah hunting the monsters by himself? At that moment, the same sound from earlier rang in his ears. Kill, kill, kill. Turning his head, he could see children holding up guns and shouting. And in front of the children who were gathered like that were the bodies of monsters piled high and a girl on top of it. Pee pie. It was the girl who was crying in front of his house one day. A small, gentle child that started his mission to help children. But the girl right now, she was holding a monster's head in one hand and shooting a gun in the other. Bang. Bang. Kayaha. I killed the most this time. Kill. 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 Why on earth were the children doing such a terrible thing? This was a nightmare. A nightmare that can't be happening in real life. He felt his soul leaving his body. I I have to stop them before they go any further. He tried to break the rope by force, but at that moment. Ajiasi woke up again. Please do the same thing as before. Noah's voice was heard from somewhere. Then he saw the spirit of darkness flying in front of him. Be blacky? Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. As if it was having fun, the shadow swelled up. W wait. S stay away. Blackie. No. For fuck's sake, cook. As such, against the backdrop of children shouting, Ko Chang Su fainted once again.